Hey everyone. Welcome back for another video. The other day, I put up a poll on the community tab, asking which story you would like to see next, and this was the winner. Here is the first part of what if Naruto was trained by Itachi. Summary, after Naruto ran away from Jiraiya, he ended up meeting with Uchiha Itachi. The meeting leads to the emergence of a new student and teacher. Much more skilled and mature Naruto, his dream is no longer to be Hokage, but to lead the shinobi world into peace. As always, I want to give a huge thanks to all of my Patreons, making these videos would be impossible without you guys' support, especially given the limitations and restrictions YouTube imposes on my type of content. As always, the full story is already out over there for you guys along with about 20 other stories you can enjoy. Also feel free to send me any messages over there if you have any questions or even if you just want to chat. Link to all of that will be in the description. Anyways, everyone, enjoy the video. Chapter 1, The Notion for a Change what was a friend, a brother? Was it someone you trusted with your life? Then if a friend was someone you trusted with your life, how is it that he or she could try to take away that? A life you trusted them to protect. The fact that Sasuke tried to take Naruto's life baffled him. He could not possibly conclude how his life had become in danger of fading away in the hands of Sasuke. Death could have claimed him in the hands of a person he proudly called his best friend, rival and a brother if you might add. It was quite difficult to understand as to why Sasuke would try to kill him. True, he was trying to force the Uchiha back to Konoha, but that was his mission and something sort of a personal goal for him. Sasuke might not have been able to understand it then, but forcing him back to Konoha was good for him. Was revenge enough to kill your best friend? If Naruto was asked the question, he would have given a resounding no. Never in his wildest imaginations had he ever thought of killing his best friend for any reason, even if that friend tried to kill him. He would never dare to take someone's life, even the life of an enemy. Well, he had that mentality before the attempt to his life by Sasuke. Now, he did not know what to think, which notion was best to believe, which path to take. All his life, Naruto had endured pain, hatred and loneliness, things that could break any man. His endurance and kind heart showed just how strong he was, mentally. There is a breaking point that all people have. This was his breaking point, a point of impasse. His mind was nothing but a crumbling skyscraper. Negative and positive had joined and become one, each lost to their path. Limit a border that he had never thought that he would ever reach at his young age. However, here he was, his limit reached. His mind could not function to its level best, the best way to program it so it could compute better was rebooting. Perhaps if he reboots, he could see what the world offered him. He certainly could not continue on the path that he had been taking after it had nearly cost him his valuable life only a fool would continue on such path. Naruto lay inside the hospital bed, his entire body wrapped up with bandages. This was the first time that Naruto was been admitted to the hospital and not think of running away. Mostly his attempts to run away had proven to be a success. Today, he had no thoughts of an escape plan, he had no sudden notion to escape. It was better for him to just lie down and dwell on his thoughts. There was nothing or anyone that would be waiting for him when he returned to his apartment. His thoughts mattered the most than anything else now. He could care less about anything, for now he just wanted to solve the puzzle inside of his head. His eyes stared at the cold white ceiling unblinking. His injuries were healed, yet he felt no need to leave the hospital. It was almost like he was chained to his bed yet he felt no discomfort. He had been lying on the bed ever since Kakashi brought him back to the village. After his battle with Sasuke, he had multiple wounds and had used more of the Kyuubi's chakra than his body could handle. Though his body had become familiar with using the Kyuubi's chakra, there was still a limit to what it could tolerate. During his battle with Sasuke, he had used more than his body could handle. Perhaps it had been because he had been angry with Sasuke for trying to kill him. Perhaps he did because he just wanted to prove to Sasuke that he was more than just a loudmouth knucklehead. Regardless of his thinking then, the results had been what brought him to the hospital. When Kakashi brought him to the hospital, he had been unconscious at the time. After the battle with Sasuke that ended up with him defeating Sasuke, he had lost consciousness. He had used three tails worth of the Kyuubi's chakra. Kakashi arrived at the valley of the end where the battle had taken place after the battle. Sasuke lost consciousness before Naruto. Neither of their health was at risk though. Their wounds were nothing that Tsunade could not heal. The mission to retrieve Sasuke had been a success but he felt as though something a part of him was missing. Naruto felt as though he had lost a part of it at the valley of the end. That something he had lost was something that had made him smile every day. The doors to his room opened. Naruto did shift eyes to see who it was. He did not care. Senju Tsunade, the god I'm Hokage walked into the room. You are very lucky brat, 
Tsunade said, had it not been for your friend, you would have died from one of those wounds you received to your chest, she continued without taking note of Naruto's expression or the fact that he was not listening to her. However, using the Kyuubi's chakra as you did was very irresponsible for you. Who knows what could have happened. I know you wanted to bring Sasuke back, but using that much of the Kyuubi's chakra when your body is not accustomed to it might have proved to be hazardous to your health. The Kyuubi might have even tried to take over your body. Moreover, that Uchiha brat is not it. Tsunade ranted out. No comment. Tsunade thought he was just at a loss of words, thus she spoke again, you should be happy that you completed your mission though. She said with a small smile, but if you do something so reckless again I will put you in here for a month and after that I will make you do D rank missions for a year. Do you understand me Naruto? Tsunade threatened in a seriously. She knew how well Naruto hated the hospital. He hated even just to step inside the building itself. He also hated doing D rank missions as he was too cool and awesome for it. Someone of his skills and greatness is overranked to do D ranked missions. Yeah, right Tsunade thought with a snort. No comment. Naruto's eyes continued to stare at the white cold ceiling. He was not listening to what Tsunade was saying. He did not care. He had a lot to deal with in his thoughts. He had a puzzle to solve. A tick mark formed on Tsunade's forehead, are you listening to me brat? Tsunade asked just a second away from losing her temper. She hated it when Naruto did not listen to her when she spoke. It made her feel like an idiot because she was speaking to herself. Still, Naruto said nothing making Tsunade lose her calm as another tick grew on her forehead. She clenched her fists and began to take giant footsteps towards Naruto. She was going to beat some sense into him. Even if she had to break a few bones, she would do it as long as it got her the results she needed. She could always heal him any time she wanted. She was the best medic in all the elemental nations after all. Tsunade came into a complete halt as soon as she saw the look on Naruto. She had never seen him like this before. He was not even looking at her. She could conclude that by his look, he had yet to acknowledge her presence. His eyes that used to be full of life and happiness had none of that. They did not show much in terms of emotions but she could see that deep inside those deep blues. She could perfectly see, a child who has seen more than he should at his age, a child who has carried a yoke too heavy for him. Tsunade could see a child that was tired, tired of everything, a confused child. Never had she seen Naruto like this. Nevertheless, she supposes it was understandable considering what he has gone through in his young life. If being hated by all the villagers for something he had no control over was not enough, Sasuke added to his woes by piercing his chest twice with an a rank jutsu, designed for the sole purpose of killing. Even she could never be the same if someone she considered as a brother tried to kill her, not once but twice. Given the situation at hand, Tsunade had no way of helping Naruto. He was close to her as her son. However, even with their relationship, she could not help him. She had no way of coping with difficult situations. When her heart was burdened with issues, her way of coping was getting drunk. Getting drunk was not something she could advise Naruto to do. Something that involved Seik was out of the question and unfortunately, Seik was her stress reliever. You are free to go. All your injuries have been healed, there is no need to keep you here. Tsunade said in a low tone. She spun around slowly and left Naruto alone. She just hoped that Jiraiya who had been listening could be of help to Naruto. Naruto said nothing as a sign that he acknowledged her words. In truth, he did hear her. He just had many thoughts that disarmed him of the ability to speak. Jiraiya appeared out of nowhere and sat comfortably at the window just as Tsunade had left Naruto alone. Still Naruto did not react to Jiraiya's presence. His eyes just continued competing in a stare contest with the ceiling. Status of the competition so far has been a stalemate. Jiraiya looked at Naruto sadly. It pained the self-proclaimed super pervert to see Naruto in a way he was. Ever since he had come to know the boy, he had always seen him smiling despite everything that he faced daily. Naruto was just a child, like any child, he needed love and comfort from family. To get through the hard times he needed his parents to be there for him for emotional support. Like Tsunade, Jiraiya had no way of trying to make Naruto smile. If he was burdened by problems, he went away to do his research, to be more precise, peeping. It was his way to cope with the hardships of the life as a shinobi. When one is a ninja he or she experiences a lot of pain, most commonly because of the loss of loved ones. Being a shinobi was a lot more burdening than most people thought. People take it lightly, but the decisions that shinobi have to make may drive a non-shinobi insane due to their weight. Even some shinobi lose their sanity because of the weight of the choices they have to make. Nevertheless, unlike Tsunade, Jiraiya was willing to try something. 
he might not be best suited for this kind of situations, but he had lived many years and experienced many things to learn a few things or two. He had a way with words given his age. If you want to talk to someone you know I am here for you Naruto. Jiraiya said after a long deliberation in his head. Naruto remained as he was, his eyes never leaving the ceiling. Jiraiya sighed, that was not the way to start the conversation. He had been listening when Tsunade spoke to Naruto. Tsunade had spoken, but Naruto did not respond. He just stared at the ceiling like a cold frozen lifeless corpse. If he did not respond to Tsunade, what made me think that he would speak to me? Jiraiya thought with a sigh. Naruto, I know it must be hard for you accepting that Sasuke tried to kill you, Jiraiya said his eyes leaving the blonde, but you have to accept it. Sasuke tried to kill you and it was not because he was not thinking straight or under the influence of the curse seal like some people might say. He said being honest with Naruto. It might be harsh but it was the truth and for Naruto to move on, he had to accept it. Sasuke was never your friend to begin with. Someone like him did not even deserve your friendship. You should just forget about him and focus on your own life. Jiraiya advised Naruto calmly. Naruto remained as he was. He heard Jiraiya. Nothing Jiraiya had said had yet to come across his mind. Jiraiya knew that Naruto was hearing despite his lack of answers, do not make the same mistake twice and let Sasuke in again. He will surely try to kill you again, and next time he might succeed. Jiraiya warned looking back at Naruto, do not let this get to you though. You still have many friends and your entire life ahead of you. After a few seconds of silence, Jiraiya spoke again, no matter what Sasuke says to you. Do not listen to him, you did the right thing forcing back to the village and it was your mission to do so. Jiraiya really hoped that Naruto was taking his words to heart. Sasuke was not a mentally stable person. He was out of control and needed real help to deal with some major issues that run rampant within his head. If Naruto did try to befriend Sasuke again, the Uchiha was surely going to try to kill Naruto again given the chance. Jiraiya smiled proudly as a thought sneaked into his head, I am proud of you as my apprentice for beating the Uchiha. It does not matter if you use the Kyuubi's chakra or not, what matters is that you. Jiraiya trailed off upon seeing Naruto move. Naruto slowly made his way out of the bed. Jiraiya just watched him curiously. Naruto walked out of the room without even sparing Jiraiya a glance. Jiraiya stared at the door with a single thought running through his head, did he just use the door? He thought to himself. From what he had seen so far and what he heard, Naruto had never, not even once used the two to leave the hospital. Perhaps it was because he usually ran away. Nevertheless, even when he was given permission to go, he never used the door. It was always the window for Naruto. This is serious, I must go see Haim. Jiraiya thought disappearing in a puff of smoke. Naruto stepped out of the hospital room. Jiraiya spoke, he heard him. It did not change his train of thoughts. His thoughts had been continuing as they had been before Jiraiya showed up. Nothing Jiraiya had said made any difference to his train of thoughts. It was as if the Sani never spoke to begin with. Perhaps it was just because he just wanted to listen to his thoughts alone. Maybe it was because he was tired of doing what people always told him to do and he just wanted to try things his own way. He just wanted to compute things on his own, without anyone influencing him. Over the past few years, he always had the Sandaime, Iruka and Kakashi Sensei to help him deal with some issues. The Sandaime and Iruka were a big part of his decision making. The life-changing decisions he to make were under the influence of what the Sandaime or Iruka have had to say to him. Now he just wanted to deal with things himself. Naruto's footsteps came into a complete halt. His eyes narrowed at the door on his right. It was open and he could clearly see the occupant of the room. Uchiha Sasuke. Sasuke glared at Naruto murderously. If looks could kill, Naruto would have been on the floor dead by the fierce glare Sasuke went him. The glare was fierce enough to send chills on anyone's spine it was directed. Unlucky for Sasuke, Naruto just did not care. Sasuke was radiating a murderous aura upon seeing Naruto. He had never so much hatred towards a person. He had always hated Itachi more than anything. He devoted his life to kill Itachi, because he hated what his brother had done. He hated Itachi for killing their parents. Even the mention of the man's name was enough to put him on the edge. His hatred towards Itachi burned inside his heart, it was alive and fed on his emotions. However, the hatred he felt for Naruto did not compare with the hatred he felt for Itachi. It was most infuriating because he could not move a muscle to do something to the blonde. His body was wounded, and his chakra was sealed, if that was not enough, he was chained to his bed. Anger boiled within him creating illusionary steam blowing out of his nose and ears. Sasuke was beyond angry. Naruto was the reason his chakra was sealed, 
He was the reason he was chained to the bed, he was the reason there were Anbus guarding him. The Anbu did not even blink while they watched him. They did not want the Uchiha to escape. Given the chance, Sasuke would surely try to defect again. He had done it once he could do it again. Naruto had stood in his way for power, his way for revenge. It was unforgivable in the eyes of Uchiha Sasuke. He could not forgive Naruto for standing in the way of the one thing that meant life and death to him. He had thought Naruto would be able to understand since he knew loneliness. In some sense Naruto was like to him, so he thought Naruto would be able to understand what revenge meant to him. However, he was wrong. The Dobi did not understand him at all. Sasuke had cursed himself for thinking that Naruto would understand him. Naruto never had any parents to begin with, he never had anyone taken away from him. Naruto did not have his brother kill their parents just because he wanted to test his strength. Naruto was unlike him, they could never be alike. He was not stark within Konoha, hawks watching him 24-7. Naruto was to blame for all this. Sasuke felt his pride damned, degraded by the fact that Naruto had achieved the feat of stopping him from defecting by defeating him. Naruto, the dead last of their academy class had defeated him, Uchiha Sasuke, brother to Uchiha Itachi and a genius on his own right. Naruto had achieved that feat even when he was using the power Orochimaru gave him. Even his Sharingan had fully matured and yet he was unable to defeat Naruto. Naruto had used some orange-reddish chakra to defeat him, but that did not matter. A defeat was a defeat regardless of how it came. Naruto had done something never in his life had he thought the idiot would be able to do. It baffled him how an idiot, loudmouth knucklehead like Naruto could defeat him, an Uchiha. He was more skilled than the idiot, he was special, and he had a bloodline superior to any. Naruto had none, he was not even skilled and yet he defeated him. The fact that Naruto defeated him was unacceptable. Bubbles of anger danced in the inside of his mouth, disarming of the ability to utter words of hatred. He wanted to yell at the blonde, rip him to shreds with his bare heads. The fact that the blonde was standing in the passageway, eyes narrowed at him without care enticed him to murder the blonde with his eyes and thoughts. Naruto engaged the gears and began to move forward. He did not say a word to Sasuke as he felt. The fact made Sasuke angrier than he had been. Sakura walked out of Sasuke's room seeing that Sasuke was glaring at someone. She saw Naruto walking away, Naruto wait up. She called out. Naruto did not stop to listen to what she had to say. Sakura increased her pace and walked up to Naruto. Naruto was walking at a rather comfortable pace. I heard from Tsunade-sama that Sasuke-kun tried to kill you. Sakura said walking beside Naruto. I am sure he did not mean to. Sasuke-kun would never do something like that if he were thinking straight. He was not thinking straight, Sakura said believing in her own words. She did not believe that Sasuke could try to kill Naruto when he was thinking straight. Naruto was his teammate they were like family. Family did not try to kill each other. Although she could never admit it to anyone, Naruto was close to Sasuke than she was. Well anyway I just wanted to thank you for keeping your promise to bring Sasuke-kun. Sakura said with a genuine smile as she came to a halt. Naruto just walked away without saying a thing, not a damn thing. Sakura stood still watching Naruto with a confused look spreading across her face. Hokaye's office. Like any other day, Jiraiya burst through Tsunade's office through the window. Tsunade was used to Jiraiya's unique way of entering her office, but sometimes it just annoyed her. She could not understand why he would choose to use the window when the door existed. No matter how many times she has told the perverted Sanin to use the door, he continues to use the window. Even if she closes the window, he breaks it just so he could enter. It was often disturbing because normally she would be taking a nap. When Jiraiya budges in the office through the window, he disturbs her nap time. She could also be doing something private, that she does not want anybody to see. Even if she locks the door, she cannot keep Jiraiya out given that he never uses the door. Tsunade sighed tiredly. Despite being annoyed by Jiraiya's behavior, there was an important issue they had to deal with, how did it go? She asked leaning back to her chair. She would need to be leaning on something due to the weight of the subject at hand. Jiraiya looked at the village of Kanahagakura no Sato through the window. His eyes went to Tsunade, still the same as you left him. He replied with a frown. He did not like the mental state of his student. Tsunade nodded, how bad do you think it is? She asked in a low tone. Sasuke's attempt on his life hit him hard. I never thought I would see him like this. Sasuke must have meant a lot to him and Naruto must have trusted him. With Sasuke's attempt on his life, he betrayed his trust. Jiraiya replied his eyes going back to the streets of Konoha. Having someone, 
you trusted betray you was one thing that was heartbreaking, even for him. However, he was experienced and it would not affect him as much it would to Naruto given that he was still just a child. Do you think he will be okay Jiraiya? I can't bear to see him like that. Tsunade said sadly. As any mother, she could not handle seeing Naruto in the condition he was. She wanted to see him smile and laugh, call her Buchan, do all the annoying things he did. She could contend with that, but what had become of Naruto due to Sasuke's actions, she could not contend with. Don't worry Haim he will be fine, he just needs time to deal with all the issues and he will be back to his happy self again. Jiraiya said trying to soothe Tsunade's worries. Despite saying it like he believed Naruto would return to normal, something inside of him was telling him otherwise. I hope he does go back to his usual self soon. Tsunade stated with a worried look on her face. Jiraiya nodded, we have to do something about Naruto and Sasuke. They can't be allowed to be near each other or another battle might be ignited and if that happens someone might die given both their current mindset. Jiraiya said looking at Tsunade. If they two were not separated and Sasuke was outside the hospital, he would surely try to get back at Naruto for standing in his way of revenge. Given what had happened, Naruto would certainly not wait for Sasuke try to kill him again. The mention of Sasuke's name made the god I'm Hokaye's blood boil. She never did like the Uchiha brat. Moreover, for him to attempt to kill Naruto was pushing her buttons, that brat, Tsunade said under her breath, if it went for the damn council fools I would have ripped his body to pieces the moment Kakashi brought him back along with Naruto. Tsunade said with clenched fists. He really wishes she could go into the hospital and beat up the Uchiha until he was nothing but a bag of meat. Don't think of things like that Haim, you might end up doing it and you know that it won't end well. Jiraiya stated. He knew from experience about Tsunade's temper. If she kept herself in the company of such thoughts and Sasuke were to come in her office, she would certainly break every bone in his body. Tsunade sent Jiraiya a narrowed look. She knew he was right and she hated it when the pervert was right. Thinking those thoughts about the Uchiha brat was surely not going to do her any good or Naruto. The council to be precise the elders would certainly be pissed if she did something to their precious Uchiha. She was certain that the elders did not actually care for the boy but rather his bloodline, the Sharingan. That was what made them tolerate the Uchiha's spoiled behavior. Sasuke was needed for the restoration of the Uchiha clan, which was now near extinct. I guess you are right, Tsunade conceded with a tired voice. I have thought of something that will help Naruto clear his thoughts and make him stronger. The moment those words left Jiraiya's mouth, Tsunade had already given the perverted Sanin her full attention. You are aware that the Akatsuki is after Naruto for the QB. Naruto can be captured at any time if he does not have someone capable of fighting off S rank criminals. Jiraiya paused for a moment. Tsunade nodded in understanding of Jiraiya's words. Naruto also needs to train so that he can be able to protect himself against the Akatsuki. What are you suggesting Jiraiya? Tsunade asked. She did have a guess as to what her former teammate was trying to say. I want to take Naruto on a three-year training trip. I will train him so that he can be able to protect himself against his enemies, whist also protecting him the Akatsuki, Jiraiya said, and fresh air from outside of the village will be good for Naruto given his current state of mind. Going into a place that he is not familiar with will give him the best atmosphere to think clearly. Jiraiya added selling the idea to Tsunade. Tsunade took a thoughtful look on her face as she dissected Jiraiya's words. She could trust Jiraiya with Naruto's safety. The pervert was the strongest in the village, he could handle s rank criminals on his own. Naruto needed the training, his current skills were quite pathetic if she were to be honest. Without the Rasengan and the Cage Bunshine, Naruto had nothing. Kakashi never trained the boy, something she needed to discuss with the Jounin when she does see him. Getting out of the village would definitely be the best option for Naruto. New faces and environment will certainly give the blonde new experiences different from the village. However, there was another thing that could put all that into jeopardy. Jiraiya was often irresponsible. He could not be trusted to always keep an eye on Naruto. He was prone to leave the blonde and go away to do his research. You have to promise me first that you won't leave Naruto alone to peep. Tsunade stated looking at Jiraiya with a serious expression on her face. Haim, I have told you many times that it's not peeping, it is called doing research. Jiraiya said correcting Tsunade on her error for calling his precious research peeping. If you can't promise me that, then you can't take Naruto. I can always have Kakashi and some trusted Anbu train him here inside the village. Tsunade said with a hidden smirk. That was always an option, but Kakashi had to be forced to do it given that he had been Naruto's sensei for months and he never taught him anything other than tree walking exercise. Fine, I won't leave him alone to do my research. Jiraiya said in a defeated tone. Tsunade smiled 
though she knew Jiraiya would never stop peeping. He had been doing it as far as she could remember her younger days. When do you plan on leaving? Two days. Jiraiya replied. I will get the paperwork signed. I just hope that you don't plan to turn him into a pervert like you. Tsunade finished with a glare leveled at the Sanin. Jiraiya smiled nervously. It had crossed his mind and he would never miss the chance if it came. Before Jiraiya could replay, the doors to the office opened. Shizun walked into the office carrying a load of papers. Tsunade immediately glared at the stack on papers Shizun was holding. Tsunade-sama, the elders are calling for you at the council chambers for a council meeting. Shizun said placing the heavy load on top of Tsunade's desk. Who called the meeting? Tsunade asked taking her eyes off the paperwork. I think it was the elders. The clan heads are already present at the chambers. You should head there now. Tsunade sighed getting up from her chair, let's go Jiraiya and see what those old fools want. Tsunade commanded. Council chambers. Who called this meeting? The god I'm Hokage demanded as she burst into the chambers where the shinobi council and the elders waited for her. Hyashi Hayuga, head clan of the Hayuga clan, Nara Shikaku, head clan of the Nara clan and the Jounin commander, Inuzuka Tsume, matriarch of the Inuzuka clan, Inoiki Yamanaka, head clan of the Yamanaka clan, Kuza Akimichi, head clan of the Akimichi clan, Abarame Shibi, head clan of the Abarame clan, Homura Mitokato, Koharu Yudatane and Shimura Dansu were there the retired shinobi. This entire people including the Hokage formed the shinobi council. Civilian council members were not invited given that they had no say in shinobi matters. Tsunade took her steps and sat at her seat with Jiraiya closely behind her. Nobody would tell him to leave the council chambers even when he was not a member. He was the strongest in the village, and most important Asanin. That gave him privileges that other shinobi did not have. So? Tsunade barked narrowing her eyes around the table to look at each council member. The clan heads shifted their eyes towards the elders prompting Koharu to speak up. Tsunade, it was us who called this meeting. She said. How many times have I told you to address me with proper respect? Tsunade asked rhetorically while glaring daggers at the retired ninja. I am the god I'm Hokage, and you will address me Tsunade-sama or Hokage-sama or I will have you thrown out of the council, is that understood? Tsunade said leaking a bit of her killing intent directed at Koharu to get her point through. You can't do that. Koharu stated in defiance. Not even the hailed Yondame Hokage could get them out of the council no matter how many times he wished he could. Tsunade was not smart as Minato Namikaze, thus where Minato failed she was bound to fail. Yes I can and I will if you continue to show me that blatant lack of respect. Tsunade stated in a firm tone making it clear and believable that she could get rid of the elder from the council. Very well, Hokage-sama. Koharu said not directly looking at Tsunade. The younger generation has lost respect to their elders Koharu thought. Tsunade was inexperienced and needed guidance from her and the other elders to lead the village to success, well that was according to her own belief. Good, so why did you call us here? Tsunade asked pleased that she got the foolish old council member under control. Dansu narrowed his eye slightly without anyone noticing. If one could look at him on the outside one would think that the old war walk was not even thinking of anything. His expression was blank, as always, body language showing nothing, as always. Deep inside, he was thinking and plotting for his next move, but first thing first. Tsunade was developing a backbone, with the way she was handling things now it would not be easy to manipulate her. Nevertheless, Tsunade was Tsunade, she is bound to make careless mistakes due to her short temper and the emotions that hinder her from doing her job Dansu thought with an inward smirk. We call this meeting to discuss Uchiha Sasuke and Uzumaki Naruto. Homura stated looking at everyone within the chambers. Tsunade sighed with a grim expression spreading across her face. She could not be cheerful about the subject of the meeting. The meeting was bound give her more work to do and more matters to solve. As you are all aware Uchiha Sasuke, has recently attempted to flee from the village, but, thankfully he was brought back to the village. Homura continued. Our children almost died trying to bring back and I heard he almost succeeded in killing his best friend. Sume commented. She could care less about the Uchiha. Her son, Kiba was at the hospital in a critical condition because of him. Her words earned a few nods from clan heads, which were blissfully ignored by Homura as he continued, we must do something about him or he will try to leave the village again given the chance. As you all know we cannot afford to lose the Sharingan. He said making it clear that what was important in Sasuke was not the boy himself but his dujutsu and the fact that he was the only one present that could produce more Sharingans. I suggest we lock him up in a cell. 
A prison sentence is what he deserves for trying to betray the village and join a traitor who led an invasion against us. Hyashi stated with an impassive expression on his face. His nephew was lying in the hospital at ICU because of Sasuke. He had nothing against the Uchiha but his actions had led to his nephew's condition. It was also the right punishment for him given that he tried to betray the village. Shikaku nodded, I agree with Hyashi, Sasuke's attempt to betray the village could be counted as treason, given that he was going to join Orochimaru, an S-rank criminal responsible for the death of the Sandaime and the invasion we are still recovering from. Shikaku stated. If his actions are seen as treason then execution awaits him. Inoiki commented. Tsunade and Jiraiya had smirks on their faces. They liked what the head clans were saying. Neither of them would have any problems with having Sasuke charged for treason. What the clan heads were saying was making Tsunade cheerful. We cannot afford to take such extreme measures against the boy. It is indeed true that he tried to betray the village but that was under the influence and manipulation of Orochimaru. As Homura has said, we cannot afford to lose the Sharingan. We need the Sharingan to strengthen our military power. Koharu objected. The Sharingan was a powerful weapon that they cannot afford to lose if they want to remain as the strongest hidden village in the elemental nations. What do you suggest? Tsunade asked for the sake of it. I suggest a more lenient punishment. We should lock him up in a cell for six months and then let him out then train him to get the power he needs so that he does not attempt to leave the village again. We all know that he attempted to leave the village for the sake of power. Koharu stated with a calm look on her face. No, we cannot treat the brat like a spoiled brat. Sasuke is no different from any other shinobi of the village, thus he cannot be treated differently. The favorable treatment is what turned him into what he is right now. Tsunade stated firmly. I agree with Haim, we cannot allow him to think that he can get away with anything. An appropriate punishment has to be sanctioned. Though I agree with you on one point, the Sharingan is indeed a powerful weapon we cannot afford to lose. Jiraiya spoke for the first since arriving at the chambers. Danzo smiled inwardly, Jiraiya had just given him an opportunity to play his card. Dansu cleared his throat getting the attention of the rest of the council, I have a suggestion that will please everyone. He stated getting everyone to be interested to what he had to say. They all knew the old war hawk was always scheming something. It was obvious that the old war hawk was prepared for this. It was certainly interesting to see what he had cooked up this time. Give the Uchiha to me. I can train him and give him the power he desires, and in return I will turn him into a perfect weapon for Konoha that will never betray us. Dansu said with a hidden smirk. His face remained blank, as it had been as if he did not say a thing. While inside he was planning to turn the Uchiha into a perfect weapon for himself. And a perfect weapon for yourself most of the council members thought eyes looking at Dansu. Tsunade thought for a moment, that could work. I have no doubt that you can turn him into weapon for Konoha, but like all shinobi you train, they turn out to be loyal to you to the end. Tsunade commented not hiding the fact that she knew that his root was still active. The root were highly trained and could be useful in the future which was why she had not done anything against it. But having Sasuke locked up at your root bases will not give him a chance to escape. It was a risky move to allow Dansu to have Sasuke but it was the best given the current situation. It will also leave her without to deal with Sasuke. My training will also teach the boy proper manners. Dansu added trying to make things to his favor. If there are no objections, I will allow Dansu to train Sasuke. Tsunade said looking around the table to see if there was an objection. The clan heads said nothing. If Tsunade was allowing Dansu to have Sasuke, she must have a plan cooked up. Homura and Koharu had no objections. Seeing no objections Tsunade spoke again, I will allow you to have Sasuke under one condition. Dansu narrowed his eyes at Tsunade. You are only training Sasuke to become strong and loyal to the village. You will return him under my control after you have finished training him and you will give me monthly reports about his progress. Tsunade stated firmly. Dansu nodded, he was fine with the conditions. He had expected her to say something like that. He would have been a fool to think that Tsunade would leave him unchecked and allow Sasuke to work for his route. Good, I think that's all for now. Tsunade stated. Hokage-sama, Koharu said, there is another issue that needs to be discussed. Which is? Tsunade asked impatiently. The QB. Dansu replied he desired to have the QB under his control. With Sasuke and the QB under his control, he would be unstoppable. He could picture himself sitting at the Hokage seat with his weapons kneeling beside him. You mean Naruto, right? Tsunade said dangerously looking at Dansu. Dansu nodded in return. Their issue with Naruto has already been solved, so there is no need to discuss it. Tsunade stated dismissively. 
Will you tell us what you have discussed and with whom? Dansu asked. I have discussed Naruto with Jiraiya. Naruto will leave with Jiraiya for a three year training trip. Tsunade responded. That is a logical solution. Jiraiya sama is the strongest and the only one capable of protecting Naruto. The training trip will help Naruto become strong so he can be able to protect himself in the future. Shikaku commented. Tsunade nodded, there will be no other thing to be discussed about Naruto. I have made a choice and it will not be changed. Tsunade stated firmly with a fierce glare daring anyone Dansu to say otherwise. Good, this meeting is over, you are all dismissed. Tsunade said dismissing everyone. Dansu left the chamber with a calm look on his face. Despite not being able to get the QB, but he would wait. He had not come this far because he was impatient. Patience was virtue he knew it. He would get his hands on the QB, or so he thought. That went well that I anticipated, and you are handling the elders way better than Sensei did. Jiraiya commented after everyone had left the chambers aside from him and Tsunade. Yes it did. Tsunade said with a small smile, that is because I am unlike Sensei. Sensei cared too much about what they thought and allowed them to make some decisions for him. Tsunade stated. Jiraiya nodded in agreement. The Sandaime had allowed the old fools to dictate most things under his watch. He even allowed Dansu to do as he pleased. I'm surprised that you allowed Dansu to train Sasuke knowing that he might try to make the brat loyal to him. Jiraiya said, are you sure that was a good decision? It was a risky move, but I doubt that even Dansu will succeed in making the brat his personal weapon. He might get the brat to stay in the village, but controlling him. I doubt that will happen. Tsunade said not knowing how right she was. The following day. Naruto sat alone at the Hokaye's monument overlooking the village. His eyes seemed like they were looking past the village of Kanahagakura no Sato. His eyes were not looking at Konoha, but past the village, himself. He was looking at himself through the village. A mirror of himself reflected at the end of the village showed a rather gloomy image of him one that was like an alien that would scare those that knew him. It was not every day that the happiest person in Konoha could turn out sad. It was something that would surprise even those that hated him. People expect to see Naruto grinning from left to right. Even though it was often called annoying, it was what people expected from Naruto. Anything less than that was shocking. Naruto had not seen any of his friends that were at the hospital. He did not even go to get some ramen. The ramen stand was the place he always went after leaving the hospital. However, Naruto was not functioning as he normally did. His ways were lost, some forgotten some he just did not care. Kakashi appeared via sunshine and stood beside Naruto. He did not have his usual orange book within his hands. Kakashi lacked even his usual eye smile. His right eye seemed unfocused, one could very well tell that the Jounin was not having the best of days. The Jounin looked as if he had been crying and had not slept in a while. Kakashi had been having an emotional turmoil. The emotional turmoil was breaking him because he felt guilty to what happened to Naruto. He was the one to have taught Sasuke the jutsu he used on Naruto. The jutsu was created for killing. He never thought that Sasuke would use his signature jutsu on a teammate, especially Naruto. If Naruto had been killed, he could have as well committed suicide, as he would not have been able to live with himself. Naruto meant more to him than Sasuke or anyone that was alive. He might not have taken the time to train the blonde, but that did not mean that he did not care for the blonde. Naruto might not know it, but he was like his little brother, given that Naruto's father was his sensei and had been like a father to him. Naruto's father had even taught him his prized jutsu, the Rasengan. It was just a sign of how close he really was to Naruto's father. The fact that Naruto did not know his father did not ease his turmoils. Naruto's eyes stayed on the reflection of his self as if he did not acknowledge Kakashi's presence. That man was an emotional wreck, he had his own problems to deal with, and he did not need to add to what he already had. Naruto, Kakashi said bringing out all the confidence he could so that he would be able to say what he wanted to say, I'm sorry for what Sasuke did to you. I should have never taught him that jutsu. It is my fault for teaching him, I just never thought he would use it on you. Kakashi said sadness, guilt and regret dripping from the tone of his voice. Naruto stood and turned around to face Kakashi. Kakashi could clearly see that he was looking past him. Guilt, regret, have none of that. Naruto said in a monotone voice before walking away. The words danced inside Kakashi's head. He could not understand what Naruto meant by his words. Was Naruto telling not to regret teaching Sasuke Chidori? Was he saying that he should not feel guilty for Sasuke's actions? If that was it, did Naruto not find him guilty for Sasuke's actions? Was Naruto telling him to be sad for what Sasuke did to him? All the questions left him confused. 
He could not understand what Naruto meant. To understand he would have to find someone who could help him. Later that day, Ikaraku Ramen. Naruto was having his lunch at the ramen stand. He was eating his ramen at a rather comfortable pace. He was not devouring it as he normally did. He was savoring it. This caused both Tuchi and Ayame to stare at him with wide eyes. Naruto is everything alright? Ayame asked her tone down. Naruto just shook his head and continued to eat his ramen. He was not going to lie and say things were fine when they were not. He was not alright and he would say he was not alright. Saying he was fine when he was not did not help at all. Father and daughter stared at Naruto. They had never seen him like this before. Even when he was not having a good day, he would lie and say he was fine. This time he actually made it clear to them that he was not alright. The fact that he was not even smiling or replying made them worried for the blonde. Is there something we can do for you, Naruto? Tuchi asked looking straight at the blonde. Again, Naruto shook his head, but this time he shook it negative. Before Tuchi could say anything, Jiraiya appeared beside the blonde via sunshine. The white-haired Sanin sat on a chair beside Naruto. Can I have a bowl of miso ramen please? Jiraiya stated looking at Tuchi. Tuchi nodded and went away to the kitchen with his daughter. Naruto continued to eat his ramen as if Jiraiya was not even there. Ayame brought Jiraiya his ramen and the Sanin began to eat. The ramen stand with greeted with a few minutes of silence. Naruto had nothing to say to Jiraiya, Jiraiya was just trying to see if Naruto would say something first. I'm taking you on a three-year training trip. Jiraiya said breaking the silence. He had just said it, thinking that it might cheer the blonde. However, Naruto did not even pause, or blink at his words. After finishing his ramen, Naruto stood up and turned his back to the ramen stand. I will be waiting for you at the gate. He said walking away from the ramen stand. You want us to leave now? Jiraiya asked. Naruto turned around and faced Jiraiya. He gave Jiraiya a look that clearly said, I thought my words made that clearly obvious. He gave Jiraiya the look and turned around again walking away. Fine, I will go to see Tsunade Haim first, Jiraiya, said more to himself that Naruto. He looked at Ayame and saw the worried look on her face. Do not worry, he will be alright. When he gets back to the village, he will be back to his cheerful self. Jiraiya said to Ayame trying to soothe the teen's worries. I hope he does. Ayame said sadly. Jiraiya smiled before a realization dawned on him. That damn bratty left me with the bill. Jiraiya yelled particularly to no one. Naruto had left without paying for his ramen, which meant he had to pay. He hated paying bills he hated using his money. It was why when he was traveling with Naruto while they searched for Tsunade, he used Naruto's money to pay for the bills. 25 minutes later. Jiraiya appeared at the large gates of Kanahagakura no Sato in a swirl of leaves. He had gone to Tsunade to get the documents for him and Naruto. The documents would help them for when they visited other villages and for when they returned. The Hokage signed the documents. The documents also acted as proof that they were indeed at a training trip, should someone question their disappearance. Jiraiya saw Naruto leaning against the wall with his hands in his pockets. He noticed that Naruto had not changed his clothes and was not even carrying a bag for his things. Naruto walked forward passing Jiraiya. Jiraiya just turned around stared at Naruto's back, Naruto, where is your bag? You cannot go on a training trip without packing a few essential things. He said. I have nothing to pack, therefore I have no need for a bag. Naruto replied monotonously as he continued to walk away from the gate. Jiraiya sighed and followed Naruto from behind. This is surely going to be long three years if he does not change quickly Jiraiya thought looking at Naruto. Three days later. Naruto lay in a bed at a hotel. They were at a small town they had come across. Jiraiya had tried to hustle money from Naruto to pay for their rooms. However, Naruto had told the Sanin that he had no money to pay for a hotel bill. Jiraiya paid, albeit sadly seeing his money leave him. Nothing much had happened since the left Konoha. They just walked in silence. Jiraiya had tried to start conversations, but found it hard to maintain a conversation given that Naruto did not want to talk. He just wanted to travel in peace without any trouble. Jiraiya looked at Naruto, I'm going to see my spy contact. Stay here and do not go out. If you are hungry eat here at the hotel. Jiraiya said, I might return tomorrow but do not worry. If there is anything summon a toad to inform me. He finished his instructions and left the room. Naruto narrowed his eyes at the door after Jiraiya had left. Jiraiya had yet to tell him how they were going to train. He had never even mentioned a word of training. It was always like this with Jiraiya, he favored peeping than training him. 
Jiraiya had only taught him the Rasengan because it was the only way to get him to accompany him in his search for Tsunade. Naruto thought for a moment. When Jiraiya was training him before the Chunin exam finals, he never trained him to better his skills. The Sanin had only gotten him to sign the summoning contract. He never trained him in anything else, other than chakra control exercises and learning to use the Kyuubi's chakra. In some sense he was like Kakashi, the only difference was that Jiraiya had taught him a few useful things. However, they all favored something else other than training him. During his time with Jiraiya, the Sanin had always spoken about utilizing the Kyuubi's chakra. It was as if Jiraiya thought he was nothing without the Kyuubi's chakra. Controlling the Kyuubi's was most likely what Jiraiya was going to teach him for the whole three years. Naruto remembered correctly, the Sanin had already started training him in using the Kyuubi's chakra. He was surely not going to train the way he wanted and his jutsu arsenal would not increase if he stayed with Jiraiya. The Sanin had introduced him to water walking. He had yet to perfect the exercise. Chakra control exercises were certainly, what they would do first, and with Jiraiya, it would take a year for the exercises to be completed. If he were being honest with himself, he would say that his ninjutsu arsenal was pathetic. All he had was the Rasengan and the cage bunshine. Take that away and he had nothing, he would be just as useless as Sakura. Naruto wanted to increase his own skills. The Kyuubi's chakra would act as his last resort of triumph card. Staying with Jiraiya would certainly do him no good. Without another thought, Naruto walked towards Jiraiya's bag. He opened it and took out his training trip documents. He folded the document and pocketed it without a second thought. Naruto walked out of the room calmly using the door. He even used the door leaving the door. He was in no hurry or afraid that Jiraiya would catch him. Naruto knew that Jiraiya was getting drunk somewhere with women he paid. It would take a day or so for the pervert to return. When he did, he would not find him. He did not need to leave a note behind saying that he had left, Jiraiya was smart enough to know that he left on his own. Two days later. He had no idea where he was going. He just ran through the fire country's forest. He would figure out where to go as soon as he was far away from Jiraiya. Years of experience in hiding from Anbu's after he had done a prank to the village would certainly pay up in getting Jiraiya off his back till he found a place to hide. Hello Naruto-kun. A voice said from behind Naruto forcing him to come into a halt. Naruto was cursing himself because someone had found so easily. It had not been even three days since he was on the run and now he was already found. He looked at his jumpsuit and cursed it, remembering what people had said about it. Maybe it does give away my position easily. Naruto thought to himself as he turned around to see who had found him. Chapter 2, Origins Naruto turned around to see who had called his name. His eyes widened upon the man his eyes came to see. He was truly shocked to see the man in front of him. He never thought that the man would find him alone just after he had left Jiraiya. Never, something like that never even crossed his mind, not even a wind of it. The man was wearing an Akatsuki cloak and had blood-red eyes called the Sharingan. He had seen the man before when he had tried to capture him. It was a time when he was with Jiraiya while they were searching for Tsunade. During that time, this man he was seeing had shown him just how strong he was by beating the crap out of Sasuke, his own brother, as if it was nothing. This man was an S-rank criminal, and the one to have massacred the Uchiha clan single-handedly. Many feared him and admired for his power. He was the strongest Uchiha of his generation, and a prodigy of the Uchiha clan. Naruto's thoughts about the man, were that he should run away from him given that he was assigned to capture him for the QB. This man was Uchiha Itachi. Regardless of what his body was telling him, Naruto knew that he could not escape from Itachi. He was not fast enough to do that, he did not even have the power to slow down him down. No matter how he might run, Itachi would catch him before he gets anywhere. Running away was pointless, it would just be a waste of time and energy to try anything. Naruto cursed himself for being caught so easily. Of all the people to get to him, it just had to be Itachi, the man who was trying to capture him. Itachi was his enemy, so to have his enemy get to him just two days after leaving Jiraiya was troubling. Naruto stopped cursing himself and jumped down to the ground. His features went to blank, showing nothing, no sign of fear or preparedness to fight. Naruto just looked calm with a blank expression that would make most have difficulty in reading what was going on in his head. Uchiha Itachi, Naruto stated monotonously, have you come to capture me? He asked. Itachi shook his head no confusing Naruto, though, the blonde never showed any confusion on his face. Itachi walked further closer to Naruto before coming to a halt. He features were just as stoic as usual. Follow me. Itachi said wailing past Naruto without another glance at the blonde. Naruto had no other options, he was as good as captured. 
Even though Itachi showed no hostile intentions towards him, he still had his guard up. Thinking of it, the Uchiha never showed any hostile intentions towards him even when he had come to him to capture him the time he was with Jiraiya. Nevertheless, that did not mean that the man did not want to capture him. Last time he had even asked him to come with him and his partner so that they could take him away and rip the QB out of him. Regardless, he had no choice in the matter. Last time he had stood his ground and tried to fight because he was a fool to think he could take out an S-rank criminal. Letting out a sigh, Naruto turned around and followed Itachi. Just because he was following what Itachi had instructed did not mean he was just going to allow himself to be taken easily. He would wait for his time, if indeed Itachi was taking him to the Akatsuki base, he would pull out everything he had to try to escape, even if doing that might cost him life. Going down without a fight was never his style. Right now, he was just doing it the smart way. For three days, Naruto followed Itachi. They were hopping through the trees at fast speeds. They only rested a little to recover spent energy. While on the stops, Itachi would hunt for food for them to eat. One could not travel with a complaining stomach for days. The only time Itachi spoke was when he was telling Naruto to stop so they rest and when he was telling him to get ready so that they could leave. Naruto did not mind the silence, though. It worked better for him. He still had to work on what to do with his life after the events of the Valley of the End. His past life was what led to the event to happen at the valley. He did not want to leave that life again. He did not wish to be betrayed again, it hurt more than anything did. While traveling with Itachi in silence, he was working on finding a solution for himself. He also had to think about his training. The training was why he had left Konoha in the first place, the training was why he had abandoned Jiraiya. There was also his current situation. Any choice he would make regarding his future would be worthless if Itachi took him to the nest of Akatsuki. He did feel a part of him telling him that it was not the case, but still he could never be sure. He did not know much about Itachi. What he knew was that he was Sasuke's older brother, a member of the Akatsuki and the man responsible for the Uchiha clan massacre. What he knew was just common knowledge everyone who has heard of the Uchiha knew. He was also wondering where the Uchiha was taking him. Itachi never did say where he was taking him, he just told him to follow. Itachi was truly surprised that Naruto could keep up with him without sticking out his mouth like a tired dog gasping for air. He had heard that the boy was energetic but he did not think he was this energetic. The fact that he only seemed slightly winded meant that the kid had a lot of chakra and stamina. Even for a Jinchuriki, he had to have tire already. It was not every day that one found a Jinan who could keep up with an s rank shinobi without so much as complaining. A few hours later Itachi dropped from the trees making Naruto imitate him. They walked slowly for a few minutes before they arrived at what seemed to be a house. The front of the house had an Uchiha clan crest painted on them. The house hidden, it would make it a hideout. Naruto just followed Itachi from behind as they entered the doors inside the house. Itachi led Naruto to the kitchen and motioned for the blonde to sit down. Naruto was first to speak as he was confused. It did not seem like Itachi wanted to take him to the nest of Akatsuki. What is this place? He asked looking straight at the Uchiha. Uchiha clan hideout. Itachi replied with an impassive tone. It was one of the hideouts that was located within the forest of the fire country. The Uchiha clan had many hideouts around the nations that they used before hidden villages were formed. How were you able to find me so easily after I abandoned Jiraiya? I was sure that I had covered my tracks well enough to hide from everyone. Naruto asked curiously. Itachi just happened to find him just after he had abandoned Jiraiya. He knew Itachi had been assigned to capture him. Jiraiya had told him that much. However, the timing of the Uchiha's appearance was making him curious. I have been watching you, since your fight with Sasuke at the Valley of the End. Itachi replied his eyes searching how Naruto would react to being reminded of his fight with Sasuke. Naruto gave none, which made him suspicious of the blonde. Why, was it so you could capture me easily? Itachi shook his head, I was not watching you because of my job as a member of the Akatsuki. I was watching you because I was interested in you. Naruto looked at the Uchiha for a second, why? You were the only person to have been close to my foolish little brother, so close that you used to see each other as brothers, and other reasons. Itachi replied nonchalantly. Naruto noticed were and used, Itachi reference his relationship in past tense, were? Something like a smile formed on Itachi's face, only for a second, though. You are very perceptive than people give you credit. Itachi commented. Naruto just shrugged his shoulders. You are also very calm than usual given the situation you are in. Moreover, the impassive look on your face is not something that seems to have been adapted to recently. It seems like it has been there for quite a while now. He added. Again, Naruto just shrugged his shoulders, perhaps it might have been. 
He replied, so? Naruto continued going back to his question. Given your reaction towards Sasuke's attempts to kill you, and how you are now, it is logical that you no longer see him as your brother. Itachi said flatly. Sasuke was willing to kill you for the sake of power. Power to Sasuke was everything, it was his life, his greatest desire and if anyone stood in his way of getting power, he or she would certainly be his enemies. Seeing as you did just that, resulting in Sasuke's attempts to take your life. It is logical to conclude that none of you see each other as brothers anymore. Itachi replied as if he had read both Naruto and Sasuke's minds. Naruto nodded, Sasuke no longer meant anything to him. The moment Sasuke pierced his chest with a Chidori in an attempt to kill him their relationship was dead. Sasuke had succeeded in killing him. As such, Sasuke was dead to him. The Sasuke that was living now was just like any other shinobi of Konoha. It would not do him any good to keep clinging on to a selfish bastard like Sasuke. The Uchiha only cares about his revenge and he did not matter to the Uchiha that was why he had attempted to kill him. Therefore, he did not have to be concerned with someone like that. To put it simply, he no longer cared for Sasuke. That was why he was not even thinking of ways to kill Itachi for what he did to Sasuke. Whatever problems the two had, it was their own problems. He did not give a damn thing about it. He had no intentions of getting back to Sasuke for trying to kill him. It was not worth the effort. Why did you bring me here? Naruto asked wondering why the S-rank criminal had brought him to the hideout. Why did you leave Jiraiya and run off on your own? Itachi replied with a question of his own. I wanted to train. Naruto replied simply. Jiraiya is a Sanin. He could have given you the training you require. Itachi stated. Anyone would be thrilled to have the opportunity to be trained by one of the legendary three ninjas, the Sanins. However, Naruto ran away from Jiraiya, a Sanin. Most people do refer him as the strongest of the Sanins. It was interesting to hear why Naruto had left Jiraiya. Naruto shook his head, the only training I would have gotten if I stayed with Jiraiya was chakra control exercises, a few taijutsu lessons and learning to control the Kyuubi's chakra. Naruto stated, that sort of training only makes me to be reliant on the Kyuubi. Without the fox's chakra, I would be nothing. Itachi nodded, he knew too well. Shinobi with special abilities, in Naruto's case, the almost unlimited supply of chakra from the Kyuubi, tended to rely of their special abilities. Uchiha clan members had come to be reliant on their dujutsu that without it they would be nothing. They had even forgotten how to fight without their dujutsu. Such a mentality was because the Uchiha believed that they were superior to other people given that they wielded a dujutsu powerful than others. True, their dujutsu was indeed powerful but that did not make them a powerful clan. Many strong shinobi had come up with ways to counter-attack the abilities of the Sharingan often rendering it useless in a battle. Naruto was a Jinchuriki if he relies too much on the Kyuubi rather than his own strength that would spell disaster. If he were to come across someone who was familiar with seals, they would just cut the flow of the Kyuubi's chakra to Naruto, that would it make impossible for him to use the chakra. Still, are you certain that is all he could have taught you? Naruto nodded, Jiraiya would not think twice to abandon me just so he could go do his research. A few moments of silence passed by. Itachi broke the silence after thinking about something, I brought you here to offer you training. He revealed. Naruto's calm demeanor crumbled down within seconds of Itachi's words reaching him. Itachi was a criminal, someone who is a member of an organization that was after him. It was shocking to hear the Uchiha offering him training when a few weeks back he had been trying to capture him. Did I hear you correctly? Itachi only smiled slightly, Naruto's reaction to his offer was certainly amusing to see. The calmness that the blonde had been carrying just faltered with a few unexpected words. The kid still had a long way to go if a few simple words could make him lose his calmness. You are a member of the Akatsuki, the very organization that is after me for the QB. Just a few weeks ago, you tried to kidnap me with that shark. Naruto said puzzled by the fact that Itachi was offering him training. Shark, Naruto was referring to Kisame. I'm no longer a member of the Akatsuki, Itachi revealed shocking Naruto further. It is true that I did try to capture you, but that was when I was still a member of the organization. Itachi said not finding any reason to hide the part truth. I find that hard to believe. Naruto said banishing the shocked features in his face. However, I do know that you are not trying to capture me. If you wanted to you would have done it already then moment I saw you. You are strong enough to knock me out in a blink of an eye. He paused for a moment, your offer does make me curious though, why would you offer me training? I no longer have attachments to your brother and I am just a former target to you. You are rather smarter than you lead people to believe, Itachi commented after Naruto had spoken. 
Naruto just shrugged again, he did not have to explain why he appeared a bit smart when Konoha knew him as a glorified idiot. You are an interesting person with a kind heart. Despite how Konoha has treated you, you do not hate anyone or the village for it. You fight to protect it even if it might cost you your life you still do it, regardless of that the same village hates you. Itachi stated. Naruto raised a brow, you speak as someone who actually cares about Konoha but yet you are responsible for the massacre of your own clan. Naruto said with a thoughtful look on his face. To be honest with the previous encounter with you and now, you do not seem like a psychotic killer to me as people portray you to be. However, appearances can be deceiving. Naruto said in a calm manner. If anything, Itachi seemed to be a rather peaceful person. Speaking from experience? Naruto knew what Itachi was referring to, but he just shrugged, he did not owe anyone an explanation, perhaps. A wise person does not believe everything he is told or hears. Itachi stated cryptically. As for my reasons for offering you training, I have informed you of them, you chose what you wish to believe. Itachi said standing up, I will give you time to think about my offer. I will be gone and return in five days. When I do return, give me your answer. He stated walking away, without turning back, he spoke again. Everything you might need is within the hideout. He said and disappeared, leaving Naruto with so much to think about. If Konoha found out he was in connection with a missing nin, he would certainly be in trouble. Itachi was a wanted man in Konoha. If anybody was to be aware of his whereabouts, they were to report it immediately to the Hokage. Here he was, he was not even thinking about that. For the first time in his life, he brushed off what people would say about him. He brushed off what Konoha would think about him. He put himself first when making a decision, a decision that would benefit even Konoha. Jiraiya. The white-haired toad sage was panicking. What scared him the most was what Tsunade would to do him when she does find out that Naruto was not with him. He was surely going to spend a month in the hospital with a broken body. Just the thought of it made him pale, with cold shivers dancing down his spine. He knew that no one had taken Naruto. Naruto had just left him. He failed to understand why the he would leave. He was an awesome sensei, better than Kakashi. He did not understand why Naruto hated him like this. The fact that Naruto left meant that he did not care about him. If he did care for him, he would have never left knowing that if Tsunade found out she would kill him. Jiraiya was running across the fire country trying to find Naruto. He would certainly not go to Konoha and inform Tsunade of the latest development. He would search for the blonde first. What Tsunade did not know would not hurt her. He just had to keep away from Konoha until he found Naruto. He had connections all over the shinobi world. There was nowhere Naruto would go he would not be able to find him. It was just a matter of time. Given time, he would find him and make him pay for worrying him and risking his health. Naruto does not know much about the elemental nations and is too loud to keep hiding for a long time. I will find him soon enough. Jiraiya thought hopping through trees. The Uchiha hideout. The days had passed and Itachi had returned. Naruto had made his decision on the first day. He had no other good option than the one Itachi was giving him. If there were to be consequences for his choice, he would gladly face them without fear or regret. The choice was his and he would live with his choice without regrets. Regrets did not change anything they just make you miserable. Naruto would rather live with the consequences of his choice than being miserable for the rest of his life. When you make a choice, you had to stick by it regardless of the consequences. Once you start to question your choices, you begin to question your beliefs. Once that happens, you became lost. Naruto looked at Itachi without a smile on his face. The Uchiha was just staring at him impassively, so you have made your choice. Itachi stated. You knew I was going to accept your offer. Naruto said flatly. I have nowhere to go, and I do not know anyone I could go to and hide while I train. I just abandoned Jiraiya without knowing where to go. You knew that and gave me the perfect offer knowing that I had no other choice. He said. It was obvious that Itachi had calculated that he would have nowhere to go if he refused his offer. There was also no one who would train him if he refused Itachi's offer. Itachi had just capitalized on the situation. Dot. How perceptive of you, Itachi commented on how Naruto was able to see things. Perhaps I did, he said. I do find one thing rather curious though, Naruto stated. You say you are no longer a member of the Akatsuki yet you still wear the Akatsuki cloak. I've grown fond of it, Itachi replied flatly. True, he had grown fond of it, but that was not the only reason he wore it. People feared the black cloak with red clouds knowing that whoever was wearing it was an S-rank criminal. With that knowledge people tended to avoid anyone who wore the cloak. The fact that people avoided the Akatsuki cloak influenced Itachi hold on to it. He rather enjoyed peace than needless bloodshed. 
If people saw the cloak, they would avoid picking a fight with him, leaving him alone to enjoy his peace. Why did you leave the Akatsuki? Naruto asked wanting to know why Itachi would leave the home of S-rank criminals. You should not concern yourself with such things. Itachi replied. He did not intend to tell Naruto why he left the organization, for now that is. Naruto nodded, but that did not mean he had lost his curiosity. It just was not important at this time. When do we begin the training? We will begin tomorrow, you should rest. Itachi said walking away from Naruto. It was not even night, Naruto wondered what kind of training he would have to go through. Naruto shrugged off his thoughts and went outside the hideout. Naruto went through hand seals and slammed his hands on the ground. Kushios no jutsu. In a large puff of smoke a colossal dull, dusty red toad appeared. Why have you called me Jiraiya? The giant toad grumbled. He certainly did not want to be used as Jiraiya's escape jutsu for when he was caught peeping. Jiraiya also had the nerve to summon him just so he could do his stupid pose with him. Chief, it was me who summoned you. Naruto stated sitting comfortably on top of the toad's head. The toad Naruto had summoned was the toad chief Gamabunta. What is it Gaki? Gamabunta asked looking around, this does not look like a battlefield. No it doesn't. Naruto said. Then why have you called me? I have a favor that I must request from you. Naruto said his tone calm. Now Gamabunta came to notice the difference in Naruto's tone, which made him curious. He did not ask anything, nonetheless. What favor? I was supposed to be on a training trip with Jiraiya for three years. However, I abandoned Jiraiya because he would no train me the way I want to be trained. Naruto paused for a moment. Jiraiya will probably try to get you or any other toad to reverse summon me to Mount Mayuboku once he realizes that he could me that way. I want you to tell him you cannot reverse me. Gamabunta was quiet for a moment, was it really necessary for you to leave Jiraiya? Yes, Naruto replied flatly. So will you do it? Gaki, you are asking me to lie to Jiraiya. That is something I cannot do, given that Jiraiya has been a very loyal summoner for many years. Gamabunta replied. If you can't lie, then simply tell him you can't because I asked you no to do it. Naruto stated. Gamabunta sighed, he really could not refuse the kid, fine, he said. Are you sure it is safe without Jiraiya protecting you? He asked worried for the blonde. Don't worry about me, I am in good hands. Naruto replied with a smile. Summon Gamakichi regularly so that I can be able to see that you are well. Gamabunta said as he disappeared back to Mount Mayuboku. Naruto smiled, that was a problem solved. Jiraiya would have no way of tracking him now, if the toads refused to help him. He could continue now without having to worry about Jiraiya finding him through the toads. He could not have the toads null his contract just so Jiraiya could not track him. The toad contract was important and valuable. He would be foolish to willingly have it cancelled. Itachi smiled not far away from Naruto. Naruto was doing well to cover his tracks. The fact that he had thought of having the toads refuse to reverse summon him if Jiraiya asked before Jiraiya had thought of it meant much about his thinking process. The following day. As early as the day had taken its shift, Itachi had already taken Naruto outside to a small training ground. Naruto had no complaints, he was not even sleeping when Itachi had come to wake him up. Sleep had eluded him all night. Itachi wanted to get Naruto started with the training as soon as possible. He had so much to train the blonde, and for him to teach Naruto everything he had to take time and use it wisely. He had time, but the shinobi world was unpredictable. Today you could say you have time, tomorrow you find you do not have it. Where the time went, becomes a mystery. Itachi took time seriously. He did not take it for granted. He believed that time not used beneficially would surely be regretted in their near future. The skills you have as a ninja are the cage bunshine, Rasengan. The two are your most powerful techniques. Itachi stated reminding of his ninjutsu arsenal. You have no defined taijutsu style and you lack speed. Naruto was a brawler. He had no taijutsu style. He just fought as he could without taking a defined taijutsu style. Because he never trained in taijutsu, he lacked speed. Probably the only male Janan who Naruto could beat in speed was Shikamaru and maybe Kuji. Before I begin to teach you anything. You must have Jown and level chakra control, your body must be conditioned physically. You must also know your chakra affinity. He paused for a moment before continuing. With Jown and level chakra control, you will be able to learn ninjutsu without too much difficulty. When your body is conditioned physically, I will be able to teach you taijutsu and kenjutsu. Naruto nodded with a small smile. Itachi seemed to have put a thought to his training. If he was with Jiraiya, 
the pervert would have just taken him somewhere and dump him to do something while he went away to peep. The fact that Itachi seemed to be taking the training seriously brought him to smile. What do we begin with? Naruto asked his voice was dripping with a bit of excitement betraying the calm look on his face. Before we begin, Itachi said. Do you know the secret of the shadow clone technique? Itachi asked curiously. He doubted Naruto knew of it though, despite how smart he seemed to be. Secret? Naruto asked with a raised brow. Itachi sighed inwardly. He wondered what Jiraiya and Kakashi were teaching Naruto and if they ever wanted him to become strong. With Naruto unaware of the secret of the shadow clones, it was hard to say that they wanted him to become strong. If they wanted him to become strong, they could have told him the secret. Naruto could have achieved so much with the shadow clones. He was truly disappointed in both Jiraiya and Kakashi for willingly keeping this kind of information to Naruto. It appears that Kakashi, Jiraiya nor the Sandaime for that matter saw it as something of significance to tell you this. Itachi stated. Even the Sandaime knew Naruto was able to use the Shadow Clone Jutsu and yet he did not tell him of the secret. The Shadow Clone Jutsu has a unique ability that allows the clones to transfer the memories and experiences they gain back to the user when they disperse. Itachi revealed the secret to Naruto. I have never noticed that despite the fact that I always use the Jutsu. Naruto said with a thoughtful expression. I wonder why Jiraiya and Kakashi never told me of it though. He thought aloud but shrugged off his thoughts. They did not tell him because they had their own reasons, he did not have to wonder about their reasons where. It was not worth the effort. As you might have concluded, the Shadow Clone can be a very useful tool when used for training. You can be able to achieve a year's worth of training within a week by using Shadow Clones. Not everyone can survive that kind of training, Itachi stated, how many clones can you make? About 2000, Naruto replied nonchalantly as if it was nothing astounding. Itachi raised a single brow can you still fight after making that many clones? Yes I summoned 2000 when I was fighting Gara and was able to summon the Toad Chief even after summoning the clones. Naruto replied, I have heard Kakashi say that some people can die due to chakra exhaustion if they create more than 10 clones. I can create 2000 and not even feel the effects of creating the clones that must mean I have large amounts of chakra reserves. Naruto concluded more to himself that to Itachi. Another brow rose when Itachi heard Naruto say he created 2,000 clones and after that, he summoned the Toad Chief. That was more chakra than he imagined Naruto had. Naruto was still just a 13 years old boy and had the chakra reserves of more than a cage. It would be frightening to see the kind of chakra he would have when he had matured and at his prime. That is still not counting the chakra of the QB. With that much chakra, Naruto had the potential to become one of the strongest if not the strongest shinobi in the world. With Naruto's chakra alone, it should have made someone like Jiraiya take more interest in training him. However, Jiraiya disregarded all the chakra Naruto had and went straight for the Kyuubi's chakra. If Naruto could learn to control his chakra well, he would have no need for the Kyuubi's chakra. This will make your training progress faster than I had imagined. Itachi said after a few moments of silence. Do you know what your chakra affinity is? Naruto shook his head, he knew of different wind elements but he never tried to find what his element was. Itachi took out a piece of paper from his cloak making Naruto raise a brow. He did not think that the cloak had pockets in the inside. Itachi handed the piece of paper to Naruto, channel your chakra into the paper, he said. If it crumbles into dust your element is earth, if it burns your element is fire, it becomes wet your element is water, if it shocks you your element is lightning, if it is shredded into pieces your element is wind. Naruto did as instructed, wind he stated. Wind was powerful, but rare to find. Wind chakra was also hard to control given how powerful it was. However, when one had master control over wind manipulation, they could be become dangerous opponents for someone to face. Within a month you can be done with chakra control exercises. Itachi said and then took out a scroll from his cloak. He threw the scroll at Naruto who caught it. That is a storage seal. It is beginner's books in Fuenjutsu. I want you to create five clones and have them study the books. You will continue to do that each day until you understand everything. Naruto nodded and created five clones. The clones knew exactly what their job was. Naruto handed them the scroll and they went away to begin studying the books. He did not need to question why Itachi wanted him to learn something complex as Fuenjutsu. Sealing was indeed useful, with his little time with Jiraiya he understood that the man was adept to using seals. They were indeed useful and powerful. The Kyuubi was locked within him because of the art. Orochimaru had used a seal to cut the flow of the Kyuubi's chakra within him during the fight at the Forest of Death. Itachi created a clone of himself. Create 100 clones. Naruto created the clones without questions. 
Follow me. The clone Itachi said as it walked away. The clones Naruto created followed him. Where are they going? Naruto asked curiously. This hideout is not far from the Valley of the End. Itachi stated. They are going there to train in water walking for chakra and wind manipulation at the waterfall. Isn't the Valley of the End a place they could be easily spotted by someone? Naruto asked. The valley was not by any means hidden unlike the hideout. Anyone could reach the place. If Naruto was training there, someone passing by the valley could easily see him. It is, but I have taken measures that will ensure something like that does not happen. Itachi replied flatly. Naruto felt no need to question what sort of measures Itachi had taken, thus he just nodded. Itachi walked away from Naruto and went inside the hideout. While some of Naruto's clones studied Fuenjutsu, the others practiced water walking and the others were to practice wind chakra manipulation by attempting to cut the waterfall with chakra. Naruto would be doing physically activity, which he would continue to do until his training was complete. Itachi came back to the small training ground holding weights. Naruto had to wear them on his ankles and hands. They would help him develop speed, and pure physical strength. Itachi handed the weights to Naruto, put them on. Naruto did as instructed but found it rather hard to stand straight due to the extra weight that he carried. How much weight am I carrying? Each weight weighs at 5 kilograms. That makes it 20 kilograms in total. Itachi replied. Now run around the training ground. It does not matter how many times you run, I just want you to get used to having the extra weight on your body. Naruto began to jog as he could run with the weights on. Itachi was certain that because Naruto was a Jinchuriki, his body would be able to adapt fast to the weights. Any damaged muscles would be healed overnight given the Kyuubi's chakra healed. For each day, Naruto did the same process. Running around the training ground while his clones studied Fuenjutsu, did water walking exercises and train in wind manipulation. As soon as Naruto was able to walk without much trouble with the weights, Itachi increased the weight Naruto had to carry. Naruto never complained. To become strong he had to endure everything. Six months later, a bundle of shurikens went flying at fast speeds towards Naruto. He looked at the shurikens calculating their movements and speed. The shurikens' numbers tripled out of nowhere. Naruto cursed as a shower of shurikens flew towards at him. He jumped back to avoid the first wave of the shurikens. More came at him. Naruto disappeared from his position in a burst of speed avoiding the shurikens. As soon as he touched ground, another wave of shurikens sped in flight towards him. Naruto did quick thinking and used a seal less replacement technique replacing with a tree log. The shurikens pierced the log in place of Naruto. Naruto let loose of a sigh of relief upon having the log save him from pain. Without warning, two more shurikens came behind Naruto and embedded themselves on his back. Naruto winced at the pain and forced the shurikens out of his body. Fire style, great fireball. Naruto heard from behind. A small fireball sped towards him. Naruto was quick to dodge the fireball in a burst of newfound speed. The moment he touched ground a foot crashed onto his back sending him flying away. Naruto recovered by flipping in mid-air. He landed down in a crouched position panting slightly. Itachi landed down beside him with an impassive look on his face, your opponent will never give you time to recover your energy. He stated and moved fast. He kicked Naruto to his chest sending him flying. Naruto winced as Itachi's foot crashed to his chest. Itachi appeared from behind Naruto while he was still in flight. Your senses must be on high alert each time you in a battle. You must be able to see what your eyes can't. He stated and pummeled Naruto to the ground. Naruto crashed to the ground on his front. He recovered quickly and stood up. He took a taijutsu similar to the Uchiha interceptor style. If he did not do that, more assaults from Itachi would follow. It was always like this training with Itachi. Each day he had to leave the training ground with a pained and beaten body. Itachi never took it easy with him. To Itachi there was no easy way of learning that engaging in actual battle. It was a real fight, as Itachi would break his bones if he gave him the chance to. Naruto was not allowed to take of his weights that now weighed at 150 kilograms. He had 50 kilograms on each ankle and 25 kilograms on both his hands. That is it for day, Naruto-kun. Itachi stated. Naruto sighed and sat down on the ground. The Kyuubi had already dealt with the wound on his back. He was no longer in pain, he was just a little out of breath. At the other side of the hideout, hundreds of clones were busy with their own training. Since Naruto attained chakra control and wind chakra manipulation that was satisfactory to Itachi, some of his clones were learning wind jutsus. Their progress was steady, which was enough for Naruto. Itachi never allowed him to use any of the jutsus he had been learning when they fought. 
Itachi had taught Naruto a taijutsu similar to the Uchiha interceptor style. The style focused on predicting your opponent's attacks and counterattacking. To be able to be proficient with the style one had to be fast and alert. You could not predict your opponent's attacks and think of a way to counterattack if you were slow. Naruto had changed a few things for the style to work for him. It was hard for him to get a grasp of the style since he did not have the Sharingan to predict his opponent's attacks. Itachi had told Naruto to expand his senses and awareness to be able to predict his opponent's attacks. He also had to be very observant of the way his opponent fought. To expand his senses Naruto had to do a lot of meditating. His Fuenjutsu was going well. He was no longer studying books beginners. He was now able to create his own seals, less complex seals though. The only seals he had been able to create were explosive tags and storage seals. Itachi had also let Naruto read a scroll on a few Kenjutsu styles. Naruto decided not to learn any Kenjutsu style. He decided to study the art of Kenjutsu itself. He wanted to learn the relationship between a wielder of a sword and a sword. He found that a true Kenjutsu fighter treat a blade as an extension to his body. The blade became something as his slash her third hand. Whatever the sword felt he or she had to feel it too. One had to be coordinated with the sword. Overall, a Kenjutsu fighter shared a very intimate relationship with his slash her sword. Naruto, I'm going away for a while, Itachi stated. While I am gone, only create clones to study Fuenjutsu. You will be practicing the jutsus your clones have been learning in Kenjutsu. Do not leave the hideout. Stay here until I return. He instructed Naruto in a serious tone emphasizing the seriousness of his words. Hi Naruto replied. With only six months Naruto has spent with the S-rank criminal, Naruto had learned a few things about Itachi. He was an honest person and peaceful, smart and easily bored with unintelligent conversation. The fact that Naruto saw Itachi in that light brought him to see Itachi as someone that was not a criminal. In fact, Naruto now respected Itachi. Despite being the men to have massacred the Uchiha clan, Itachi was a positive influence to Naruto. Most of all, Naruto trusted Itachi. His trust in Itachi was the reason he was not even asking where he was going. With Naruto's acknowledgement to his words, Itachi walked away. He trusted Naruto to follow his instructions. Three weeks later, Naruto lay in the middle of the small training ground, close tattered several sword wounds around his body. His breathing was labored and eyes were unfocused due to the sheer pain and tiredness he felt. His chest was left bare due to the cuts his upper clothing received. Several streams of blood matched across his chest down the ground. Several shurikens and a sword lay beside him. The tip of the sword had blood signifying it had been tasting blood. It had been one of his training sessions. Ever since Itachi departed from the hideout he had taken the time to practice Kenjutsu. So far, the results had been satisfactory. It was not perfect it was anything but that. The progress was satisfying nonetheless. He could handle a sword well, better than he did when he had yet to practice Kenjutsu. His Kenjutsu had its flaws though, but he could correct the flaws to his Kenjutsu with the time he still had before he had to return to Konoha. With the shadow clones by his side, by the end of his training, he would be proficient if he kept training as much as he had been during Itachi's absence. The first thing he had to work on with his Kenjutsu was the openings his style left. If he encountered someone that was faster than him, his Kenjutsu would leave him like an open book. Anyone faster than him would be able to take advantage of the openings his Kenjutsu left. Itachi walked slowly towards the training ground. He saw Naruto's bloodied body. A smile crept into his face, as what he was seeing was just the results of how his student was training in his absence. The smile quickly disappeared when Naruto shifted his head upon sensing Itachi. Naruto positioned himself to look at Itachi perfectly. He was glad to see that Itachi had returned, not that he would ever admit it to Itachi. I see you have been training well. Itachi commented with an expressionless face. Whether he was pleased or not, one that did not know him better could not tell. Get cleaned up, I want to tell you something. Itachi said as he showed Naruto his back and went back to the house. Naruto sighed tiredly and stood up. The Kyuubi had already begun its job of healing him. It was as if Naruto had his own medical nin living inside his own body. The Kyuubi always healed him of his injuries. He could never have a scar caused by wounds. His flesh always returned to what it had been each time the Kyuubi finished healing his body. Sometimes Naruto pitied the fox because it always worked overtime in healing him. Each night his body had to be healed of its injuries. He had to be recovering his chakra. The Kyuubi was responsible for that to happen quickly. Naruto's feet carried him to the house lazily. He went inside and took a long calming bath. His body had to relax and be calm after the strain he had put it under by his training. A hot bath was always soothing to his body. 
After the bath, Naruto changed his clothes. Ever since he began his training, he had discarded his orange jumpsuit. He now wore dark blue shorts and a short-sleeved blue shirt. Naruto walked to the sitting room and found Itachi sitting comfortably drinking tea. Looking at him drinking tea in peace one could never think he was the man who killed his own family and was a feared S-rank criminal. He was man whose name brought fear to those who knew of his power. Some people say that he massacred his own clan just to test his own strength. Some people have said that he had gone insane because of power. Yet there he was sitting comfortably drinking tea with an aura of peace radiating around him. Naruto eyes trained at the small backpack on the table for a moment before going back to Itachi. He sat on the table across Itachi. After a few minutes of silence, Itachi placed his mug down and looked at Naruto, when I departed here, I went to Konoha. Itachi stated. Naruto face was expressionless just as Itachi's was. There was another thing that Itachi was teaching Naruto while they were not at the training ground. Control over his emotions. Naruto was getting the hang of it but he was not like Itachi when it came to hiding emotions. Itachi was a master at doing something like that. You could tell him the most shocking thing and never get a reaction from him. Control over emotions was a shinobi's weapon. Without control over emotions, one was bound to careless mistakes. Emotions often clouded shinobi for making best decisions, which ended costing them. Naruto nodded and waited for Itachi to continue. I had gone to fetch a few things that are inside this bag. Itachi stated, his eyes pointing at the small bag in the middle of the table. What? Naruto asked curiously. It must have been important for Itachi to risk going to Konoha when the very same village was hunting him. Had he be caught whilst inside the village, he could have been executed most villagers saw him as a traitor partnered with Orochimaru and Konoha's most powerful traitors. Before that, he paused for a moment. I told you that I have something that I must tell you. Itachi said. He was sure telling Naruto what he wanted to say was the right choice. It is something important that the Sandaime and Jiraiya neglected to tell you, he stated impassive not showing that what he wanted to tell Naruto was as important as he said. Naruto was now truly curious. Itachi never said something was important unless it was important. There was also the fact that he said that he wanted to tell him something that the Sandaime Hokage and Jiraiya failed to tell him. It is about your parents. I am not sure why the Sandaime chose not to tell you about them. Itachi stated calmly. Now, he had Naruto's full attention. It took all his willpower to force himself to calm down. He just wanted to jump on Itachi and beg him to tell him about his parents. This was something that he had always had the need to know, but unfortunately, no one seemed to be willing to tell him anything. He knew that the Sandaime knew something, but just refused to tell him. Do you know of the Uzumaki clan? Itachi asked. Naruto shook his head. The Uzumaki clan, a clan that you are part of were allies of Konoha years ago. The orange swirl you see in Konoha's Jown and Flakes is the Uzumaki clan swirl. It was a sign of respect to the friendship that was between the Uzumaki clan and Konoha, to be more precise, the Senju. Itachi stated in a calm manner. Naruto was a little surprised that he belonged to a clan. He did not know that Uzumaki was a clan name. He had always thought it was just a name like any other given that he was the only one within Konoha who uses the name. Even outside the village, he had never met anyone who used Uzumaki. No one even spoke of the Uzumaki clan, it was like the clan never existed, which was why Naruto was not aware of it. The Senju and Uzumaki were relatives, though neither has confirmed this. The Uzumaki clan lived in their village, called the Land of Whirlpools located at an island at the coast of the Fire Country. They were seal masters and the first to create seals that could seal a baijuu within a human. That would explain why Itachi had Naruto learn Fuinjutsu. Mastery with seals was not the only thing that the Uzumaki clan had. They possessed extraordinary lifespans and special chakra. Because of this, other villages feared their power. During the Second Great Shinobi War, the village was destroyed by the combined effort of Iwagakur and Kumagakur, leaving only a few alive. Itachi revealed while his eyes stayed on Naruto. Naruto had many thoughts going through his head. It was rather hard to believe that his clan was destroyed only because of its power. There were many powerful clans, but neither has been destroyed because of their power. He understood that with seals, the impossible was possible, but to destroy a village just because they could make the impossible happen was unimaginable. Humans, Naruto said. They envy what is better than they are, fear what is powerful than them and hate that they do not understand and what is different from them. Desire everything that is likable to their eyes, such greedy beings. Naruto commented empathically. Itachi nodded. That is indeed true. Greed has led the shinobi world to what it is today. Itachi stated agreeing with Naruto. Your mother was from the Uzumaki clan. 
She came into the village at a young age. Her name was Uzumaki Kushina. A smile crept into Naruto's impassive face. Something in his heart was stirred by knowing the name of his mother. He always had a desire to know something about her. It felt great, as if something missing to his heart was found and added. He had already accepted the fact that she may have been dead. Itachi confirmed it, it saddened him slightly but he was nonetheless happy that he knew her name. When your mother was brought to the village, she was brought for one thing. Itachi said. Naruto felt a sense of dread creeping inside of him. It was to be the Jinchuriki of the Kyubi. Naruto's eyes widened, losing his calm demeanor. He shared the same burden as his mother. He feared if she had to live the same life as him, overbearing hatred from the villagers. Nevertheless, the fact that his mother was the previous Jinchuriki of the Kyubi made him feel a lot closer to her. I have never heard of anyone speaking of a previous Jinchuriki of the Kyubi before me, and there is not Kushina Uzumaki at the memorial stones. Naruto stated his confusion after getting over his shock. Your mother's status as a Jinchuriki was kept a secret that was known only to a select few. Her name is not engraved at the memorial stones. Any records of her were removed from the library and everywhere else public. The only place you can find anything about her is at the Anbu headquarters. Itachi replied. He had been an Anbu captain during his time at Konoha. Such information was accessible to his eyes. There was another Jinchuriki before her, but that has also been removed from any records. The first Jinchuriki of the Kyubi was the Shundime's wife, Mito Uzumaki. Your mother was the second, and you are the third. Again, Naruto's eyes widened slightly. The Shundime's wife was from his clan? Tsunade was the granddaughter of the Shundime which meant Mito Uzumaki was her grandfather. Tsunade, Jiraiya and the Sandaime, these were people that knew of his mother and yet refused him the right to know. Such an act was unforgivable. No one had the right, no one, to deny him of his right to know just even the name of his mother. Regardless of their reasons, such a decision to keep the name of his mother away from him was unthinkable. He could not understand how any human would do something like that. I still do not know how the Kyubi was released from her. However, many say that a Sharingan was manipulating the Kyubi. Regardless, the day your mother died was the day you were born, the day the Kyubi attacked Konoha. Itachi stated. The Kyubi had escaped from Naruto's mother seal the day the Kyubi went on a rampage. The Kyubi was sealed into Naruto that day. His mother had died the day he was born. After nine months of carrying him, she never got the chance to breastfeed him, the chance to hear his first words. It must have been heartbreaking for any mother to die the day her child was born. His life was indeed cursed. His mother died the day he was born, the Kyubi was sealed in him the day he was born. After that, he was cursed to endure loneliness, hatred and pain all his childhood. And as for your father, Itachi said snapping Naruto out of his thoughts. You know him very well, everybody in Konoha and outside of Konoha knows him, Minato Namikaze, the Yondaime Hokage. Time stopped moving as it allowed Naruto to dwell on his thoughts. The world gave him a free space to think. Naruto became lost in his own thoughts. His father was the Yondaime Hokage, he had thought he was related to the man due to his similarities to the dead Hokage. However, he had nothing to prove it, and now Itachi had just proved. The Yondaime Hokage, a man he admired and always thought to surpass was his father. His own father was responsible for sealing the Kyubi inside of him. His own father had cursed him to live a life of shouldering hatred from the villages while he went to die. The villagers praised his father while they cursed him. Jiraiya, Tsunade and the Sandaime, they knew of this and yet did not tell him. The Sandaime had known this, and yet put him into the orphanage. Kakashi also had to know since it was common knowledge that he was the Yondaime's prized student. He could not fault him given that it would not have been his place to tell. He also could not fault Tsunade since she only returned to the village a short while ago. However, the Sandaime? The old had looked him at his eyes and told him he knew nothing of his parents. Jiraiya was the Yondaime's sensei, he knew of this before he even came to his life. Yet he never bothered to fill in the holes inside of his heart. He just allowed him to continue living with his heart missing a few pieces that completed it. Now, he knew why Jiraiya had even bothered to have him sign the Toad contract. Take his time to train him. It was now obvious, Naruto was the carbon copy of the Yondaime Hokage. Jiraiya had to be reminded of his former student each time he saw Naruto. Anger, unbearable anger raged within Naruto. Anger that his own father was responsible for the miseries he had to ensure, angry that the people he trusted the most lied to him all his life. He could almost see them laughing at him, while he cried for his parents. They knew who they were, and yet they just laughed at him telling him that they did not know. It brought so much anger within him. So much anger, 
that the atmosphere in the room became suffocating. Red bubbling chakra surrounded Naruto's entire body. Naruto. Itachi called out seeing the Kyuubi's chakra leaking out. If he did not calm Naruto, things might turn out nasty should Naruto leak too much chakra of the Kyuubi. Naruto did not respond, he was too absorbed by his thoughts to hear Itachi. Naruto. Itachi called again raising his voice slightly. It took a few moments for Naruto to register Itachi's words. He calmed down upon noting the temperature in the room, and the Kyuubi's chakra leaking out. His calming down forced the Kyuubi's chakra to recede back to the seal where it belonged. Naruto stared at Itachi for a moment before his eyes went to the ceiling. I managed to collect a few photos from your father's house. I took the liberty of taking scrolls with notes on jutsus that made your father famous. I believe that they are yours to learn, and no one has the right to deny you that. Itachi stated eyes boring into Naruto, everything I took is inside this bag. He said pointing at the bag on the table. Naruto's eyes shifted from the ceiling to the bag and then settled onto Itachi, why did you tell me this, when the San Daime or Jiraiya chose not to? For you to choose the correct path for your life and to become truly strong you must know who you are. Telling this, allows you to locate your roots. This in turn will help you become truly strong knowing where you came from, what you were born to become. Itachi replied getting from his seat. I will leave you to your thoughts. After that, we will resume your training while you know what you are training for. He said and turned around, walking away from the blonde. Naruto just stared at the retrieving form of Itachi with many thoughts dancing within his head. As soon as Itachi disappeared from his sight, and senses, he looked at the small bag on the table. Slowly, he took the bag and carried it to his room, intent on exploring all its content. Chapter 3, Formed Bonds A few days passed, seemingly time was flowing faster than it normally did as if in a hurry for something. Naruto had gone back and forth with his thoughts. A few sleepless nights as his mind refused to home what he had been told. Like everything else in life, the sleepless nights passed and he returned to sleeping peacefully at night. His mind was able to accommodate the new knowledge he had learned. Regardless of how painful and how much it angered him, he accepted it. Holding a grudge had never been his strength. Still, even though he could not hold hatred for those who wronged him willing fully, it did not mean he was pleased with their actions, he was far from that in all honesty. Nevertheless, for him to move on with his life, he could not hold on to the past. Things were done, choices were made that affected him, he has been living so far with those choices and he would continue to live on with them. Even now that he had realized just how deep the secrets that were hidden from him, he could not allow that to stop him from living. He had endured so much in his young life to be stopped by something as his revealed parentage. His father was dead, the Sandaime was dead, only a screwed up person inside the head could hold a grudge against the dead. Not that he could actually hate his father even though he was alive. Hating him was beyond him. People who hold grudges against the dead are those that run about to curse the graves of the dead as if the rotten bones could hear them. Regardless, he did not have to like their choices because they were dead. He just had to accept it because there was nothing that he could do to possibly change what has happened. What had happened happened. He just had to find a way to live with the burden that he was left to shoulder on his own. His father left the burden for him to carry, and he would carry it. He could not dump it on someone. Uzumaki Naruto or rather Namikaze Naruto stared a picture of a red-haired woman with blue eyes. He face was formed as his. Even though he held the picture within his hand, the image itself was already plastered across his mind. He admired her, even though he will never hear her voice as long as he lived in this world. She was his mother, a woman who carried the Kyuubi within her gut just as he does now. Kushina Uzumaki. Naruto sighed and laid the image beside him. Even though it was just memory, something of the past, it still held great value within his heart. Nothing could be more valuable than the image of his mother. He did not need to see the face of the Yondaime, his father in a picture. All he had to do was look in the mirror and he would see a Chibi Minato. Jiraiya had always said that he reminded him of his former student. Even he could not doubt the uncanny resemblance he shared with his father. He had done through all the staff Itachi had brought for him. There were pictures of his mother and father, notes in Fuinjutsu and the formula of the Flying Thunder God technique and some notes in completing the Rasengan. With another sigh escaping his lips, Naruto got up from the bed slowly and made his way to the kitchen. It was just past noon, during this time Itachi was surely drinking his tea. Each day on a set time, Itachi always had his tea. Naruto was not disappointed when he walked into the kitchen and saw the said Uchiha. Itachi shifted his eyes from the hot black liquid inside a mug to the form of Naruto. He had let the blonde do his own thinking and come to his own conclusions. 
he felt that it was necessary for Naruto to think on his own and make a choice of his own instead of manipulating him into thinking what he wanted him to think. It would not have helped anyone if he did something like that. He had already manipulated Sasuke into hating him while he making an ambition to kill him, and where was Sasuke now? Naruto took a sat down across the table. He never did like drinking tea. That was Itachi's thing. Nevertheless, that did not mean that because he did not enjoy it as much as Itachi he did not drink it. A few moments of silence passed. Naruto just wandered across the elemental nations with his thoughts while Itachi sipped his tea. Have you thought through everything? Itachi asked placing his now empty mug on the table. Naruto replied with a small nod, yes, I have, his voice taking a flat tone. And? Itachi asked with an impassive face as if he was not interested in his own question. I am not pleased with the fact that the Sandaime had lied to me, and Jiraiya hid it from me. Tsunade also knew of this and yet relented to tell me. However, I cannot blame Tsunade since she only returned to the village. Naruto replied nonchalantly. His mindset had changed in a way that he no longer had it in him to call Tsunade Ba-chan. Your father? Itachi asked again, he cared less for what Naruto thought of Tsunade and Jiraiya. What interested him were Naruto's thoughts towards his father. Naruto adopted a thoughtful look for a second. It quickly disappeared upon its appearance. Naruto's face just became blank. Itachi could not really tell what he was thinking. I am not happy with what he did to me. If sacrificing his life was not enough, he also sacrificed me for the sake of the village. He said flatly. Regardless of that, he was my father, and I his son. I cannot change that. He did what he did as Hokage of Konoha. I can live with that. It's a little sad that he chose the village first over me. Itachi could not conclude whether he was mad or not. The tone of his voice was blank, no hint of anger of any emotion dripped from it. Added with the fact that he could not guess what was going on within the blonde's head, Itachi decided to go with the thought that Naruto did not like that his father chose to use him as the Kyuubi's container, but understood that he had no choice given that he was the Yondaime Hokage. It was duty to protect the village, even if it meant making his only son a Jinchuriki. Do you hate him? Itachi asked. Naruto shook his head blankly, I don't like his choice to stick the Kyuubi inside me. He cursed me to live the life I have lived within Konoha. Naruto stated, regardless of that, he is my father, and I just don't have the capacity to hate anyone especially my own father. I do understand his position given that he was the Hokage and had a duty to protect the village. So I bear no fangs for him. He said looking straight at Itachi. Your father wanted you to be seen as a hero. That was why the Sandaime publicly revealed your status as a Jinchuriki. He believed that the village he died protecting would treat his son as a hero. Itachi said after a few moments of silence. And that turned out very well. Konoha saw Uzumaki Naruto as the hero who jailed the Kyuubi saving them from being destroyed. Naruto said sarcastically. Though being sarcastic, his demeanor never changed, it stayed as it had been, blank. Your father was a great man Naruto, Itachi said ignoring the sarcasm. He desired peace. It was just unfortunate that he had to die soon and being so young. Nevertheless, he died a noble death. Naruto looked at Itachi with a slightly raised brow, peace? Itachi nodded, in your short life you have yet to see what the shinobi world is like. But you have seen some despicable things given that you are a shinobi. Itachi replied keeping his calm demeanor. You have yet to see war and what follows after it. Konoha for example is enjoying temporary peace. The village has no qualms with others and the villagers live happily with one another. However, in your case, I doubt you have seen that since you have always had to endure hatred from the villagers. Itachi said and paused. The shinobi world, is full of unnecessary bloodshed. People lose their lives each day. Women and children are raped, sold to forced labor and sex workers. Villagers fight each other for power, dominance, and just because of greed. Itachi paused allowing Naruto process every word he had said. Your father wanted to change that. He wanted the shinobi world to be free of that, free of war. He wanted a world where the nations were united, in agreement with one another. He wanted a world where brothers did not betray each other, he wanted peace. Naruto's blank expression was replaced by a thoughtful look. He never seen the world in a way Itachi saw it. However, he had seen some of things that were truly despicable. His father did have a noble cause. A world where villages could be in agreement with one another was certainly a world worth dreaming. He liked that sound of it. Peace huh? Naruto said. I have never thought of something like it. I used to dream of being Hokage just so I could gain the acknowledgement of the villagers, to prove my existence. He concluded with his thoughtful look still firmly in place. 
The Shah Daim tried to bring peace during his time. Unfortunately, he failed despite all his power and humbleness. The San Daime was next to try, but even he could not do it, Itachi stated. Nobody now tries to bring peace to the world today. Long-lasting peace is seen as something impossible to achieve. If we cannot trust each other, even steps to peace cannot be taken. Sunagakur easily betrayed Konoha despite being an ally to the village. Naruto said. If villages can easily betray each other and have no trust with each, they can never be in agreement with one another. Itachi nodded, trust is something hard to gain, but rather easy to lose. Silence greeted the two, as both were speaking amongst themselves within their thoughts. Naruto was thinking about something, bloodshed. The life of Shinobi was ultimately to kill all the enemies of his slasher villages. That made Shinobi killers, life takers. He had seen some people take other people's lives without so much as remorse. He did not get why death was necessary even if the enemy was beaten. What are your views on killing? Naruto asked. He found it ironic that he was asking the question to a man who was responsible for the massacre of the Uchiha. Deaths are necessary sometimes. It is unfortunate, but often it has to be done to protect and save the lives of many. Itachi replied. Still, I think killing someone is wrong. Naruto argued. You have yet to kill, have you? Itachi asked earning a nod from Naruto. You are a shinobi you are bound to take the life of someone one day. Nevertheless, just because we kill does not make us monsters. We show that we are still humans by not enjoying the act of killing. A true shinobi accepts that killing is part of protecting, but never enjoys killing. Naruto decided not to take the conversation any further than it was already. He certainly did not like the fact he would have to kill someone one day. He just hoped that day never comes. Itachi saw that Naruto did not want to further with the topic. Did you find the scrolls I brought useful? He asked changing the subject. Naruto nodded, yes, some scrolls with few injutsu will help me reach a depth level of understanding of the art. Naruto said. What I found most interesting was my father's notes in completing the Rasengan and the formula of the Flying Thunder God technique. Before the day ages my clones should be out there beginning working on completing the Rasengan and deciphering the formula to the Horishin. Naruto stated with a small smile. Itachi could tell he was excited by the prospect of learning the Horishin. How do you complete the Rasengan? I thought it was a complete jutsu. You did not read the scrolls? Naruto asked with a slightly raised brow. Itachi shook his head in response. Well the Rasengan is made from pure chakra. You manipulate chakra alone to form it. But to complete it, you add your chakra element to it and it will take a new form. In my case wind element, and I will be able to create a powerful jutsu. Well that is according to my father's notes. He was never able to complete it. Itachi nodded. He was interested in what jutsu Naruto would be able to create after successfully adding his wind element to the Rasengan. The Rasengan was already an A-rank jutsu, adding a powerful element as wind would certainly make it even more powerful. When are going to continue with my training? Naruto asked. Learning the Hiraishin and trying to complete the Rasengan was something he would be adding to the training Itachi was already giving him. Itachi stood up from his seat let us go now. He said. Naruto had no complaints. He followed Itachi to their small training ground. He was eager to pick up from where he left off. He had not trained with Itachi for a month now. Naruto went through another training session that ended with body echoing with unbearable pain. Yet he made no complaints for he knew that after the training it would have been worth it. There was no pain without a reward. He would get his rewards after the training. Konoha. It had been two years since Naruto left the village. It had been two years since Jiraiya had been looking for Naruto after the blonde had abandoned him. For two years, he searched all over the elemental nations and yet he found no clue as to where the blonde was. He found nothing, no one had even seen the blonde. It was as if he had just vanished from the face of the elemental nations. Naruto had disappeared without leaving a trace. What Jiraiya was certain of was that he never left the borders of the fire country. If he did, regardless of how good he might be at covering his tracks, he would have known. He was positive that the blonde was still in the fire country, where was the question? The fire country was rather large and he could not search the entire country looking for a single person. With a sigh, Jiraiya looked at the Hokage's tower from the Hokage monument. He had returned to the village to face Tsunade's wrath. Over the past two years, he had lost all connections with Tsunade as he searched for Naruto. He could not lie to her, thus he decided it was better to avoid speaking to her. Even if one of her messages got to him, he never replied. He raised his right hand, which was holding a bottle of sake. He began to take a few gulps of the sake until the bottle was empty. 
he put on a brave face and wiped off his mouth ready to face Tsunade. Hokaye's office. Tsunade sat behind her desk doing her paperwork. She detested doing the paperwork, but it was duty to complete them, thus she was left with no choice but to do it. The paperwork was something of an everyday occurrence. She had to do it every day, and each day she would get a headache because of the load. The load never ended, just when she would think that she was done, Shizun would bring another load much to her dismay. Tsunade sighed and leaned back to her chair. Ever since Naruto left the village, she had stopped consuming alcohol. She did get much work done without having to spend her time drinking. Despite that, she did miss her sake, surely, now she would have been savoring a cup of sake with no one in her face to disturb her. Back when she was still drinking, Shizun would always budge into her office stopping her from drinking. It always annoyed her, but she understood that her apprentice wanted her to get some work done. Thinking of Naruto, she did miss him. She missed seeing him budging into her office calling her Ba-chan demanding for a mission. She missed every little annoying thing about him. Even the fact he would always try to runway whenever she wanted to check his physical health, as he hated hospitals. She missed having to have Shizun and Sakura chase him around the village to get him back to the hospital. It was now two years, two whole years without seeing the large smile that always found a way to Naruto's face. She just hoped that he had changed and went back to normal and did not stay as he was when he left the village. It would pain her to see him in that condition he was again. Naruto to her was not Naruto without a goofy fox grin and eyes that brightened with life and happiness. She also hoped that Jiraiya was training him to his best. She wanted her Naruto be strong when he does return to the village. She wanted him to have the strength of at least a Jounin. She could expect that much from three years of training. Being a Jounin, he could protect himself better. Even though he might be able to protect himself if he does return strong as a Jounin, Tsunade would never stop worrying about him. With him being a Jounin meant that Naruto would have to do heavy missions. As such he would see things that she rather he did not see. Jiraiya had yet to give her any progress report. Something that was odd from the Sanin. Under normal circumstances, Jiraiya would have been sending her progress reports once every two or three months. Ever since he left, he had yet to send her any report, not even tell her where he was or doing. He had not even attempted to contact her or respond to any of her messages. She viewed it as suspicious behavior. The window to her office bust open as Jiraiya made his entrance. He did not get anywhere near Tsunade fearing for the health of his beautiful body he stayed at the window. I'm home. Jiraiya said with a large grin on his face. He wanted to start things lightly for when he does have to deliver the news. It's about time you showed up pervert. Tsunade stated ignoring the fact that Jiraiya did something she had abundantly told him not to. That did not matter now, there were pressing matters she had to discuss with him. So why haven't you made any contact with me and why have not responded to any of my messages? Tsunade asked with a straight face. Jiraiya became nervous, W well, you see I have been busy that I did not have the time to respond. Nevertheless, here I am, this beats responding by a letter. This way you get to see my beautiful face. Jiraiya said getting over his nervousness. A tick mark formed on Tsunade's head, but she quickly had it vanish. So how is he? Jiraiya scratched his forehead trying to find a better way to say it. He found none so he decided to say it like it was. Well you see Haim, a few days after we left the village Naruto ran away from me. It took a few seconds for Tsunade to register what Jiraiya had said. When she did all hell broke loose. What? Her voice shook the very foundations of the village of Kanahagakura no Sato. Everyone who was close to the office quickly put some distance between him or her and the Hokaye's tower. When the god I made a screech like that, she was definitely not in a good mood. Moreover, when she was in a bad mood, things tended out to be nasty for whoever was in her office. It's not my fault Haim. I had left him at a hotel room we had booked. When I returned from meeting my contact, he was gone. Jiraiya said positioning both his hands in front of him in a defensive manner. Jiraiya. Tsunade said as a murderous aura radiated around her. Her eyes lost their color as she stood up with clenched fists. She was beyond angry. Haim please, don't do anything. I am also worried about him. Jiraiya protested knowing what was about to come. He had his hands in front of himself ready to defend himself. His skin paled with each step Tsunade took towards him. Cold shivers rocked down his spine at the murderous aura that surrounded the blonde Hokage. Jiraiya how could you? Tsunade uttered again, though not looking for an answer from Jiraiya. She got within touching distances of the Sanin. Her very breath was hot and intense enough to burn Jiraiya's skin. She grabbed the pervert by his collar and glared at him with a piercing look. Then it began. 
Jiraiya's girly screams echoed throughout Konoha for an hour as Tsunade broke every bone in his body. Three hours later. After a surgery, Jiraiya's whole body was bandaged. He looked like a mummy more than anything. Despite having every bone in his body broken more than ten times by Tsunade, he always made a speedy recovery. Something that surprised even Tsunade, as she could not explain how it came to be. So despite his condition, in a few days he would be out there doing his research. Explain everything to me Jiraiya. Tsunade barked impatiently staring at the Sanin. I already told you. Jiraiya stated with a sigh. His body still hurt because of the beating he received. We booked a hotel in a town just three days a walk away from Konoha. I told him to stay at the hotel while I went to meet up with my spy contact. When I returned he was gone along with his traveling documents. Jiraiya explained everything. Tsunade sighed, given how the condition in which Naruto left the village, it was believable that he would run away from Jiraiya. From what she had heard, Naruto was crafty enough to run away without a trace. But she was not going to let Jiraiya off the hook like that. It was his responsibility to make sure that something like that did not happen. What have you been doing over the past two years? Tsunade asked with narrowed eyes. I have been searching for him all over the elemental nations. Jiraiya replied looking at the ceiling. And? I was not able to find him, not even a trace. The fact that a 13-year-old got away from him hurt his pride. So that was why you decided to inform me. Tsunade stated, so if you had found him you would never have told me that he had ran away. Tsunade stated accusingly. Jiraiya smiled nervously. Tsunade knew him better, he would never have told her something like that. She would have freaked out if he did and it was good for his health if he did not. Tsunade sighed and took a seat beside Jiraiya's bed. So you don't know where he is, what he is doing and how he is doing. She concluded. Jiraiya nodded, the toads know where he is, he said. What? Tsunade said. Then why didn't they tell you? Because Naruto asked them not to, Jiraiya replied through gritted teeth. He has been a loyal summoner to the toads and yet they refused to tell him where Naruto was. He was like a senior summoner, and Naruto was just a junior summoner and yet they took the word of Naruto. That brat, Tsunade muttered bitterly. The fact that Naruto told the toads not to reveal his location meant that he did not want to be found. Gamabunta did tell me that he is fine though. By the looks of it, he is training somewhere with someone but I found that hard to believe. Tsunade nodded, Naruto could not have someone training him outside Konoha. He did not know any shinobi outside the village. The logical conclusion would be that, he was training on his own with the toads helping him. What now? Tsunade asked in a defeated tone. I will keep looking for him, that is after I get out of this place. Jiraiya replied. How is it going with Sasuke? He asked changing the subject. So far so good. Dansu has succeeded in teaching some manners to the brat. Tsunade said not showing any interest to what she has just said. He has already made Jounin and I had Kakashi take over the training. I figured that Kakashi would be a good influence to him. Jiraiya nodded, I did not expect that his training would excel so fast. It does seem that Dansu's training methods are very effective. He commented. Yes, it does. Nevertheless, he tends to have his trainees turn into emotionless killing robots. That is why I had Kakashi take over. Tsunade replied. She could care less for the Uchiha brat. However, a change in his attitude would make things for her. What do you plan to do with him? I plan to have him become an Anbu on temporary basis other than that he will operate like any other Jounin, Tsunade said getting up from her seat. I am going back to the office. Stay here until I clear you, is that clear? Tsunade said with a fierce glare at Jiraiya. Jiraiya nodded and Tsunade proceeded to leave the room. As soon as Tsunade left, Jiraiya made his miraculous recovery. He stripped off his bandages with a few winces and left through the window. Research awaited him. Two years ten months after Naruto left Konoha. Naruto jumped back avoiding Itachi's punch which crashed into the ground creating a small crater. Naruto dashed towards while the Uchiha's fist was still planted on the ground. He swung his right foot attempting to land a kick on Itachi's face. Itachi sensed the attack and looked up. He positioned both his hands and blocked the kick. The kick had so much force that it pushed Itachi back, and made him wince. The wince was never shown on his face. Naruto continued his assault by raising his other foot. He swung it and attempted a roundhouse kick at his opponent. The kick came at Itachi with so much speed that he could not avoid it. His hands were still recovering from Naruto's previous kick. He only managed to bring out one hand to block the kick. It was not enough as the kick sent him flying. Naruto did not give Itachi time to recover as he appeared above Itachi. 
he applied wind chakra to his fist preparing for a bone-cracking punch. He punched Itachi to his chest sending him crashing down like a bullet. As soon as Itachi hit the ground with a loud crash, Naruto noticed that there was something wrong. Itachi would not have been caught easily. Genjutsu? Naruto thought to himself. He held a single hand seal, Kai. He muttered and dispelled the illusion. He sensed something from behind. Spinning around Naruto saw Itachi dashing at him at fast speeds. Naruto could do nothing as Itachi's knee crashed into his gut. Itachi added to the assault with a powerful punch to Naruto's face. The punch sent Naruto in flight. Naruto recovered quickly before he hit something and flipped in mid-air. He landed on the ground in a crouched position before standing up and looking at Itachi impassively. You caught me in your genjutsu the moment I appeared above you. Naruto stated. Itachi nodded, you are getting good at detecting genjutsu. He commented. It was indeed true Naruto had become good at detecting his illusions. When they started training, Naruto did not have any skills at genjutsu. He could be caught in one for the whole day and still not be able to recognize that he had been caught in a genjutsu. Naruto said no word any further. There was no need for him to say anything. He got into his taijutsu stance and prepared to face Itachi once again. Both opponents ran towards each other and clashed in between. Itachi attempted a high roundhouse kick at Naruto. Naruto saw the attack coming and crouched down, dogging Itachi's kick. He spun around and attempted a leg sweep on Itachi. Itachi was too experienced to be caught by something like that. Thus he jumped up avoid Naruto's leg sweep. While still in flight, Itachi flashed through hand seals, gathering enough chakra for his jutsu. Fire style, great fireball. A large fireball expelled from Itachi's mouth and raced down at Naruto who was still in a crouched position. The flames hit a Naruto and consumed him before dying down. Itachi was on alert knowing that something like that would not put Naruto down despite him firing the jutsu at a close range. He was not disappointed as Naruto charged at him from behind. He quickly spun around to block a kick aimed at his head. Another Naruto appeared behind Itachi and threw a number of shurikens at the Uchiha's back. The Naruto that had attempted to kick Itachi disappeared in a puff of smoke. Itachi realized that it had been just a distraction. He quickly used a replacement technique to avoid the shurikens that were of no doubt doing to pierce his back. A log appeared in his place, taking the hits that were meant for him. Naruto narrowed his eyes searching for Itachi. He did not have to wait long as a bundle of shurikens flew towards him at high speed. Naruto gathered the wind around him and mixed it with his own chakra. Wind release, wind palm. Gusts of wind sped towards the shurikens. The two attacks met and Naruto's jutsu propelled the shurikens away from Naruto. The gusts of wind continued to make their way towards Itachi who simply leapt away. Naruto went through a number of hand signs. As he did that, the wind around him turned into at least 20 wind shurikens that that were spinning around him. Wind release, wind shuriken. The wind shuriken sped at the unmoving form of Itachi. He knew that the shurikens were sharp and could leave a few gashes should they hit him. He had seen the attack before, and it would be nasty if he were to be hit. As soon as the wind shurikens got into touching distance with Itachi, he disappeared in a burst of crows. Naruto cancelled his technique and looked to where Itachi had disappeared. Fire release, Phoenix Flower. A number of fireballs sped at Naruto. Naruto looked at the fireballs a few thoughts running through his head. He was trying to run how the scenario would end up. Itachi always often used the jutsu as a distraction and there was always a secondary attack hidden within the flames. Naruto could not really conclude what Itachi was hoping he would do. Naruto shrugged off his thoughts and went through several hand signs. After the hand signs, he clasped his hands together and released a wave of chakra. Sealing art, chakra barrier. Naruto muttered as a barrier erected around him. The barrier was orange taking the color of Naruto's chakra. It did not cover a wide area it did just enough to shield Naruto. The fireballs hit the barrier but were unable to break through the barrier. Itachi sighed slightly and went through a set of hand seals. Fire style, dragon breath. Itachi expelled a jet stream of hot and intense flames towards Naruto. The flame sped towards Naruto with amazing speed. Naruto just stood unmoving inside his barrier. He was concentrating on keeping his barrier active. Itachi's jutsu crashed into Naruto's barrier. The flames covered Naruto's entire front trying to break through the barrier. Naruto held on without wavering on his barrier. The barrier strength was determined by the amount of chakra he put on it. If he put more chakra on it, the barrier would be stronger. Naruto called it chakra barrier because nothing that had chakra could penetrate through it, depending on the chakra Naruto put to reinforce it. That did not mean that physical attacks could just pass through it though. 
With enough physical force it would break. Despite its resistance, the barrier drained too much chakra depending on the kind of attack hit it. Naruto also could not attack because what was inside the barrier stayed inside the barrier and what was outside stayed outside. Naruto also had to concentrate on keeping the barrier active. The flames died down, clearing the path for Naruto to see Itachi. Naruto deactivated the barrier and charged at Itachi. They engaged in a fierce taijutsu battle that ignited sparks around the small training ground. Naruto was faster than Itachi, but Itachi had the Sharingan to predict Naruto's attack. This only made the battle even fierce than it had been as none let their guard down. Punches and kicks were thrown at one another, which were each being either blocked or dodged. Well that was before Itachi suddenly blurred out of sight and appeared behind Naruto, and positioned a kunai on his neck. Itachi was alarmed when he felt a sudden rise of chakra from Naruto. The Naruto suddenly exploded to gusts of winds. The explosion caught Itachi, giving him multiple cuts on his front and sending him flying away. Itachi recovered quickly and flipped twice before landing on the ground on his feet. The moment he landed, he felt a spike of chakra from Naruto. The said blonde appeared in front of Itachi with a Rasengan on his right hand. Rasengan. Naruto yelled as he tried slamming the Rasengan on Itachi's gut. Itachi was saved by his experience by leaping sideways from the attack. Naruto missed Itachi and his Rasengan slammed the ground creating an explosion. The explosion was just a testimony to the power of the Rasengan. As the lifted debris cleared, a rather large crater was formed in the middle of the training ground and Naruto was standing still in the middle of the crater, panting slightly. Itachi stood not far away from Naruto, his clothes tattered because of the explosive clone that hit him, but he was otherwise okay if not counting his slightly labored breathing. Okay, I think this is enough. Itachi said calling the spar to a halt before Naruto destroyed the training ground with his jutsus. Yes, each time the sparred Naruto always destroyed the training ground with his destructive jutsus. Itachi had banned Naruto from using some of his destructive jutsus in the training ground. It was not that he was afraid that someone nearby would sense their chakra there was a barrier surrounding the hideout. It made it impossible for anyone to sense the chakra inside the barrier no, he was just tired to having to repair the training ground each time Naruto destroyed it. Naruto nodded and dusted himself. He walked over to a tree and took a meditative pose to relax his body after the spar. It was always good to relax and recover the chakra spent. As Naruto did his meditating, Itachi went back to the house. The following day. Naruto was lying under the tree with eyes closed. He was enjoying the breeze that washed over him. It was not every day that he could relax and not think about training. He could now relax as he was proud of what he has achieved so far on his training. He could relax because of that but that did not mean he no longer took training seriously. He still trained as hard as he could, breaking a few bones if he could. Itachi walked over to Naruto and sat down beside the blonde with a rather serious look on his face. Naruto had sensed him but did not bother to open his eyes. I want to tell you two important things, Naruto-kun. Itachi said looking at Naruto. Naruto's eyes snapped open, to look at Itachi but he never got up, remained as he was. This action was enough to tell Itachi he could speak. The first thing I want to talk to you is about the Akatsuki and my reasons for departure. Itachi stated without a hint of emotion. Naruto looked at Itachi with slightly narrowed eyes. Itachi never spoke about the Akatsuki, neither did he bother to ask. He had always assumed that there was a story behind Itachi's defection from the criminal organization. The Akatsuki no longer exists, Itachi stated bluntly. He did not need to go to Konoha and come back to say it. He was a straightforward person and did not have the patience to go around circles to say something. If Naruto was shocked by the news, he hit it well. The only reaction he gave was a raised eyebrow. Despite not showing it outwardly, the news was a surprise to him. Why? Naruto asked nonchalantly. The leader and the figurehead, Pain of the organization were fighting for the leadership of the organization. Pain did not like where the real leader of the organization was taking things and some of the decision he was making, thus it resulted in a dispute. Itachi paused for a moment. Naruto simply listened on as Itachi spoke. He was truly surprised by the revelation. Never had he thought that Akatsuki had two leaders. The fallout was predictable. The leaders had to be stronger than the rest of the Akatsuki members to lead the organization. It meant that between them, there were some massive egos and each of them would want to asset their superiority over the other. If Pain felt that the real leader was no longer worthy of being leader, he would try to remove him. The dispute resulted in a major battle that took place in Ame, where Akatsuki was based. The battle between the two resulted in half on Amiga Core being destroyed. Pain killed the real leader in the battle. Due to the strain caused by the battle on his body, 
he was left on the verge on death. But before he died he revived everyone and Amei the leader excluded who was killed because the battle Itachi stated. He himself had not seen the battle but he had seen the aftermath. The destruction was unlike anything he had ever seen before. It was beyond what a cage could do. When he had seen the destruction that was in Amei, he could not deny that the figurehead of Akatsuki, Pain, was right when he did say he was a god. The villagers of Amei were correct to call the man a god. He did not believe that the man held such strength, he believed it when he saw the destruction. With the leaders being dead, that would cause the members to disband. Naruto commented seeing how it would end up. Followers follow their leader, and if the leader was no more, then they would follow their own path. Yes. However, some that had become friends chose to remain together to continue their lives as wanted S rank criminals. Itachi stated, his calm look never fading away. Naruto nodded, so you chose to leave your teammate, leaving the other members to do what they wanted to do, he said. Yes, as I told you I was interested in you, thus I left him and it all ended up here. Itachi replied with a nod. After Naruto had left Konoha with Jiraiya, the choices that were made, led to the events that had occurred. Right now, there are five or six former Akatsuki members running loose within the elemental nations. Naruto stated. They were to surely run loose around the villages given that they no longer followed orders of Akatsuki. Akatsuki did things professional and hid well their activities, eluding unwanted attention. Now that them no longer with Akatsuki they were to act like loose cannons, doing criminal activities after the other, that is if they not smart. Yes. Now without the Akatsuki, Jinchurikis won't be targeted anymore. Naruto nodded. That was some good news. He would no longer have to worry what the Akatsuki coming after him for the QB. This meant that all Jinchurikis were now safe. That is some good news, he said. What happened to Amiga Kur? The figurehead leader of Akatsuki, Payne was the leader of the village after having defeated Hanzu. He had a partner named Konan. From what I know, she has known him since they were just children. She is now the leader of Amiga Kur. Naruto nodded, what was really the goal of Akatsuki? Naruto asked wondering why the organization would want with the power of nine by Jews. With that kind of power in the hands of criminals, nothing good would be achieved. Itachi shook his head, even I do not know why by Jews were being gathered. Nevertheless, what I do know is that Pain desired peace along with his partner Konan. They wanted peace through the power of all nine by Jews combined. He could never figure out what Madara was planning with the use of the by Jews. He had tried everything to find what the man wanted with by Jews. Still this to this day it is a mystery to him. I wonder what kind of peace the man would have brought with the power of all the by Jews, Naruto stated more to himself than to Itachi. It was nothing good, Itachi said. After a few moments of silence he spoke again. The second important thing I want to tell you is a secret that you cannot reveal to anyone. Even I was not supposed to tell anyone, but I feel that you deserve to know the truth. Some of the dark things about Konoha. Itachi stated in a rather serious tone. Naruto got up and leaned against the tree. He looked at Itachi for a moment. Sure they trusted each other, but he did not think that Itachi would go as far as to reveal secrets that he had sworn not to reveal. The secret Itachi wanted to tell him was making him curious as to what it may be. Only three people in Konoha have know of it. Shimura Dansu, Mitokato Homura, and Yudutain Koharu, these three are from the council. The Sandaime was aware of the secret by he is dead now. Itachi stated keeping his serious tone. There is no record of it anywhere in Konoha. Naruto now was even more curious than he had been before. It was written all over his face. Itachi was involved with the Sandaime and members of the council. He was curious, very curious. So, not even the Anbu commander, Jiraiya or the Hokage are aware of it. Naruto commented. Itachi nodded. What I am about to tell you is the secret behind the Uchiha massacre. Naruto was now leaning a bit close to Itachi figuratively so that he would not miss a word Itachi was going to say. I did not massacre my clan because I wanted to test my strength or anything. It was because I was ordered to. Itachi revealed. Naruto's eyes widened slightly before they returned to normal after a second of widening. That was the best reaction one could get from Naruto. Why? Naruto asked a question that anyone would have asked after hearing what he had heard. My clan was planning a coup d'etat to take over the village. The Sandaime tried peace talks between the village and my clan, but the talk just reached an impasse. I was ordered to massacre my clan to save the village from a civil war that would have destroyed it. Itachi stated impassively. Naruto stared at Itachi for a moment. He could not believe that Konoha would do something like that. Ordering the extermination of the whole clan was just unthinkable. 
He could not believe that the Sandaime would allow something like that to occur even though the peace talks had reached an impasse. Why did your clan plan a coup d'etat? It was because they felt that they were losing power in Konoha. The clan had been secluded from the rest of the village, they also held no real power in Konoha, thus they felt that they were wanted out of the village their former leader had taken part in establishing. Naruto felt like he could understand what they were feeling. The Uchiha clan and the Senju clan were the two clans that formed Konoha. It could be depicted that way since Uchiha Madara, head clan of the Uchiha clan at the time and Senju Hashirama, leader of the Senju clan formed joined hands and formed Konoha. At the time of the massacre, the Uchiha clan, were reduced to be nothing but police officers with no real power. They deserved more than what Konoha was offering them. However, regardless of that planning a coup d'etat was not a way to do things. After the Kyubi's attack on Konoha, the village started to think that the Uchiha clan was behind the attack. With that thought, the Uchiha clan lost trust of the villagers and most tended to avoid clan members. Itachi added. Naruto remembered when Itachi had told him that a Sharingan had been thought to be manipulating the Kyubi to attack the village. The Sharingan is a dujutsu belonging to the Uchiha clan, it was given that at the thought that the Kyubi was being manipulated they would look at the Uchiha clan. It did not help the matter since there was no Uchiha who had turned rogue at the time. Blame would be on the Uchiha clan. Naruto stated. After saying that a small smile crept to his face making Itachi raise a brow. Naruto was obviously amused by something. The villagers thought that the Kyubi was being manipulated by someone. Yet they continued to hate it for the rampage while simultaneously blaming the Uchiha for its rampage. If they believed that it was being controlled by someone. Why did they continue to hate it when they believed that it was just a puppet in the whole matter? Naruto stated. They have no standing point, they say it was a puppet and yet they continue to hate it. If they were smart, they would have concluded that the Kyubi was not to blame for the attack since it was merely being used. Itachi nodded. Not many people saw things the way Naruto did. Even though Konoha thought the Kyubi was just a puppet they continued to hate it as if it was its was its decision to attack. Everyone who saw the Baijuu attack the village knew that it appeared in a puff of smoke, which meant one thing, it was summoned to Konoha. If it had been a person to have done it, they would not have hated the person as much as they did the Kyubi. Their minds just could not afford to let the Kyubi go because it was not human. To them it was a demon of mass destruction that almost destroyed their village, albeit being manipulated to do so per their belief. You are taking this better than I had anticipated. Itachi commented on how Naruto was not judging him for anything. I had my suspicions after getting to understand you. Naruto replied with a shrug. It must have been hard for you to kill your own parents. Naruto stated eyeing Itachi. Yes it was. Itachi replied with no hint of emotion on his tone nor his face. Naruto was not expecting any from the stoic Uchiha. Why was Sasuke sparred? I could not kill him. Itachi replied simply. Naruto closed his eyes. He had thought as much, Itachi loved his brother. From what he knew so far, Itachi did not regret taking choice to wipe out his clan. Konoha meant more to him than his own clan. You don't want Sasuke to find out about such information knowing how he might react. And you want him to kill you avenging your clan while also cleaning the blood of the Uchiha clan on your hands. Naruto stated getting up, eyes still closed. I will keep it to myself, and thank you for trusting me with such information. He said and walked away from Itachi. He wanted to begin work on a few seals that he had yet to complete. Itachi smiled slightly seeing Naruto walk away. He was glad to have met someone like him. Someone with a kind heart, understanding and trustworthy. Naruto was unlike anyone he had ever seen in his life. He had a kind heart like his father, genius with seals but there was something that he could not place a finger on that made him different from his father. They were alike in so many ways but there was something in Naruto that made them different. The Sandai may have been kind of peaceful man during his lifetime especially during his old age days. But he was nothing like Naruto. There was no one in the world that was like Naruto. He had met many people but none of them were like Naruto. He was lucky to have seen that and take the boy under him and nature him to be what he was now. Jiraiya had been a fool by not taking training Naruto seriously. He had no qualms with the man, in fact he respected him. Jiraiya was unlike his fellow Sanins. Jiraiya was a peace-loving man like the Sandaime Hokage, his sensei. However, with Naruto he had turned a blind eye. Itachi had no doubt he would have natured the blonde to be a peace-loving person. Itachi could not give himself all the credit for what Naruto was to become. Naruto was a peaceful person by his own right, he had just yet to realize that fact. In regards to training, it was Naruto's determination to become strong that made them achieve so many things in training. He was just a guide everything else was Naruto. 
A few days later. Mount Mayuboku. Naruto suddenly found himself transported to another world. It had been early in the morning when that happened. He looked around where he was and recognized that it was Fukasaku's house. He had been summoned here before when he had requested to be taught Sinjutsu. Naruto looked around house and saw Fukasaku and Shima looking at him. I was thinking you might no longer call me Fukasaku-sama. Naruto stated looking at the toad sage. Ma and I, just had a lot of thought about it. Fukasaku said with a smile. We have decided to train you in Sinjutsu. Ma will not be doing anything, I will teach you. He said. Naruto smiled slightly at the news. Though the smile quickly disappeared as if it was never there. That is pleasing to know. He said. Pa, I will go get some food for Naruto-chan. He has to taste my delicious food before he begins his training. Shima said looking at her husband. Fukasaku just nodded, he did not want to deal with his wife now. Naruto was more important. Follow me Naruto-chan. Naruto crouched out of the small house and followed Fukasaku. They went to a clearing, which had statues of large toads. Naruto just walked over enjoying the cool breeze that washed over him. The air around him was enjoyable and not the same as the air he breathed at the hideout. The air at Village of the Toads felt natural. Fukasaku ordered Naruto to sit down while he stood staring at the blonde with a serious look on his face. Before I even begin to teach you Sinjutsu you have to know the risks. He said making Naruto raise a brow. Learning Sinjutsu requires you to absorb chakra from nature and balance it with your own, physical and spiritual energy. The chakra you absorb from nature is extremely powerful. Absorbing too much of the chakra or not having too much control of the chakra will turn you into one of those. He said pointing at the statues that seemed to decorate the area. Naruto was certainly not expecting something like that to be as the risk of learning Sinjutsu. Itachi had said Sinjutsu was powerful. Naruto now could conclude that nothing of great power did not come easy to achieve. Nevertheless, for great power to be achieved one had to deal with the risks. Do you still want to train even when knowing that you can die? Fukasaku asked. Yes. I have never been the one to back down from anything. Naruto replied with a small smile recalling his old self. Fukasaku smiled, I thought you might say something like that. He then instructed Naruto to sit beside a waterfall. That was what Naruto thought, but it was not actually water that was flowing but oil. To be able to absorb natural energy, you must be able to be one with nature, feel nature, hear nature. He said as Naruto took a meditative pose. Getting in touch with nature should be easy for given that you meditate a lot. He said. Is it possible to train somewhere else in the elemental nations other than here? Naruto asked. Fukasaku nodded, yes. However, due to the risks you have to train here. This oil helps you to absorb nature chakra easily. It is only found here and cannot be found anywhere. He said the poured the oil on Naruto. When you absorb too much chakra I will hit you with this. He said as a black stick suddenly appeared on his hand. This stick will force natural chakra out of your body when the process of purification begins. With those things said, Naruto began his Sinjutsu training with the Toad Sage. Fukasaku wanted Naruto to begin as soon as possible so he could perfect the training before he has to return to Konoha. Jiraiya had never perfected the training, even when it had taken a year to train. In fact, the Toad had concluded that it was impossible for the Sanin. It would explain why Jiraiya had never bothered coming back to Mayubakus and to perfect the training. Jiraiya could not enter sage mode on his own, which made his sage mode imperfect. Naruto was different from Jiraiya. Naruto had more chakra than Jiraiya did when he learned Sinjutsu. To be able to perfect Sinjutsu you had to have large amounts of chakra reserves that Naruto had. That day. It was already noon and Itachi had yet to see Naruto. It was unlike Naruto to disappear without a warning. Mostly if he did go somewhere, it would be at the valley of the end to meditate. He never left without saying a word. Not that Itachi was worried for the blonde. He knew that Naruto could take care of himself. Burying himself in his thoughts, Itachi decided to just wait and see. A toad appeared in a puff of smoke in the middle of the training. It was big as him. He quickly recognized the toad as Gamakichi, Naruto usually summoned the toad to give a report on how he was doing, and how far he was progressing with his training. Gamakichi saw Itachi sitting comfortably under a tree and jumped over to him. I was sent to tell you that Naruto was reverse summoned to Mount Mayuboku. He won't be returning for a while now. The elders have agreed to teach him Sinjutsu. Gamakichi said and then disappeared in a puff of smoke. He did not like staring at the eye Sharingan of Itachi. It unnerved, the man never smiled. He would come back later during the day and fetch the things Naruto had requested. 
Naruto had requested that the elders teach him Senjutsu after Itachi had told him that Jiraiya used Senjutsu and was very powerful when using Senjutsu. Naruto had made the request a about a month ago seeing that there was nothing else Itachi could teach him. What was left was just to perfect his Jutsu arsenal and Fuenjutsu. It should take him a couple of months to learn Senjutsu. Itachi thought to himself. He would have the whole time to himself, to do other things with Naruto gone. It had been over two years since he left the area close to the hideout. He had always stayed there, as he did not need anything to outside the hideout. He could go outside to see what villages have been up to and what his former Akatsuki comrades were doing with their time. A month and a half later. Naruto appeared at the Uchiha hideout in a puff of smoke. He had completed his Senjutsu training far faster than Fukusaku had anticipated, even Shima was surprised. The two great toad sages were very surprised given that Jiraiya learned Senjutsu for over a year and was still unable to perfect it. But Naruto was able to perfect his sage mode under a month. He stayed at the land of the toads to train more in wind manipulation and seals. The atmosphere at Mount Mayuboku was perfect for him to train further his control over the wind element. Naruto walked calmly towards the house. Training at the land of the toads had been rather harsh to his body, but it was nothing he was not used to. His body had worked overtime, right now he just needed to rest. Itachi raised a brow upon seeing Naruto. I took little time than I had anticipated. Itachi stated. That is what the toads said, Naruto replied. I'm going to rest. He said and walked to his room. Itachi raised another brow. It must have been a harsh training he had gone through to look for rest after just returning. Two days later. Naruto sat comfortably under a tree doing nothing in particular he had rested enough. Right now he was just resting his mind for a bit. It had worked over time while he was at Mount Mayuboku. His body had rested physically, but for his mind to compute at its full potential he needed to allow it to rest a bit more before going back to working it overtime again. Itachi walked over to Naruto holding a small storage scroll. Naruto noticed the Uchiha's presence and looked up to him. I have something to give you, Naruto-kun, Itachi stated. I collected it while you were gone. He said handing over the scroll he held to Naruto. Naruto took the scroll and opened it. He channeled chakra on the seal to summon whatever that was sealed inside the scroll. In a puff of smoke, a sword appeared in a sheath. It was not just any sword it was a sword sparkling with electricity. It was the sword of the flying thunder god, the blade of the Naidaim Hokage. Naruto looked at Itachi with the blade firmly on his hands. He had the widest smile Itachi had ever seen from the blonde. Naruto was happy. No, he was overjoyed by what Itachi had given him. He felt happy more than the time Iruka gave him his headband. The sword was his first gift given to him by someone else. He could not count the necklace Tsunade gave him as he had won it over their bed. He opened his mouth and said three words that almost made the stoic Uchiha Itachi give a foxy grin. Thank you Nisan, Chapter 4 Home a lone figure walked calmly towards the large gates of the village hidden in leaves. He was wearing a long red short-sleeved coat with flame patterns at the gemline and high collars. At the back of the coat, there was a kanji for Toad Sage. Beneath the coat he wore black shinobi pants, short-sleeved black shirt, black shinobi boots and black fingerless gloves. He wore a metal plate as an armor on his chest. A sword was strapped on his back. His attire was complemented with a straw hat that hid his face. Izumo Kamazuki and Kotetsu Hagane the two eternal gate guards were having a rather boring day. There had been no visitor for the day. The people that had been entering the village were a few teams that were returning from their missions. They liked it when new people came into the village for touring or just visiting. Izumo, there is someone coming. Kotetsu said looking at the lone figure heading towards the gates. Yeah, I can see him, Izumo replied. Who do you think it might be? I don't know. Haven't seen anyone wearing something like that before. Izumo replied with a shrug. The figure walked closer to the gates making the two guards to stand up as they waited for him to arrive. He was walking at a rather slow pace like he was in no hurry. Halt! Kotetsu said in a rather loud and commanding voice. State your business. Izumo commanded the other part of their normal sequence for when someone new enters the village. Returning, the figure replied simply. State your name. The figure lifted up his straw hat revealing his face. He had spiky blonde hair, deep blue eyes. His hair framed both sides of his face. Naruto Namikaze, he said placing back his hat. The two Chunin guards widened their eyes upon the mention of the name. Without the whisker marks they would have said it was the Yondaime Hokage. Naruto looked exactly like the Yondaime. If someone was to say that he was the Yondaime they would not have denied the claim. 
At the same time they were happy that Naruto had returned to the village. It had been three long years since they last saw him. They had missed seeing him grinning like a fox and shouting something about being great and surpassing someone. Kotetsu was the first to get out of his stupor, Naruto, it's good to see you again, he said with a genuine smile. The village has never been the same without you. Hey Kotetsu, did I hear correctly? He said Namikaze Naruto right? Izumo asked after Naruto had walked away from the two. Huh? You were not listening. He did not say Uzumaki Naruto. He said Namikaze Naruto. Is he related to the Yondaime Hokage? I don't know. But with the way he looks I would not disagree if someone said he was the Yondaime's son. Naruto walked past the two Chunin guards. He was in no hurry to report to the Hokage that he had returned. He just wanted to see what how the village was. He never cared for information on the events occurring within the village while he was training. As he walked around the streets of Konoha, several villagers were staring at him trying to figure who he was. The whispers began to resonate around as he walked. Naruto looked around Konoha. It was still the same as it was when he left. Nothing had changed, the air was still the same. The villagers were still smiling and gossiping in groups like they always did when he was not walking around. Konoha was still the same lively place as it had been when he left. He could see that the village recovered well after the sand slash sound invasion. It was his home. He loved Konoha, despite its treatment towards him. The village was his home and nothing would change that. He was born here and he would be buried within the village. Naruto looked at the Hokage Monument. It had been his favorite spot when he was younger. The place gave him a sense of peace since when he was there no one would be staring at him with hateful glares. It was his comfort zone. Looking at the faces of the Hokages, Naruto could not help but smile slightly. The past four Kages had been great Hokages, both in power and mind. The Naidaime, Sandaime, and Yondaime, all died protecting the village. That was a mark of a cage. Laying your life for the sake of the village which you lead, and have sworn to protect. Konoha has been truly blessed to have had such great leaders as the five at the Hokage Monument. The Shadaime was hailed as the god of Shinobi for his power. The man was powerful indeed, yet a peace-loving person. The Shadaim tried to unite the world during his time, but his attempts failed miserably. He tried making the villages equals by capturing Baijuus and handing over to them. He had hopes that if each village had a Baiju it would stabilize things and each villager would see other as equal. However, that never occurred as villagers saw each other as nothing but rivals. The Naidaim Hokage, Senju Toborama. He was the brother to Senju Hashirama, the Shadaim Hokage. The Naidaim was a serious man and took no nonsense. He was the best manipulator of water element. He was the only person to be able to create water from air molecules. The Naidaim was a powerful man, but not as powerful as his brother. He died during the Second Shinobi World War, killed by the gold and silver brothers of Kumo. The Sandaime Hokage, he was referred to as the professor, being that he knew every jutsu in Konoha and was able to perform it at a high level. He was trained by both Hashirama and Toborama. The Sandaime was wise and a peace-loving man. He survived two wars, and was the only Hokage to have served two terms. He died in the hands of his own student, Snake Sani Orochimaru. His death was noble as he died fighting for the village during the sand-slash-sound invasion. The Yondaime Hokage, Minato Namikaze, probably the most famous out of all the Hokages despite being Hokage for a short period of time. Minato is known all over the elemental nations as Konoha's Yellow Flash. He made his name known during the Third Great Shinobi World War. He was the man responsible for Iwa's loss in the war, which is why even after a decade of his death the village still hates him. Minato was a genius and a seal master. He was the best seal master that Konoha had ever seen. Sadly, despite achieving so much, he died while still being relatively young. His death was also noble as he died sealing the Kyubi inside his own son. Sealing the Kyubi inside of his own son was because the said Baijuu had gone on a rampage and began to destroy Konoha. No one could fight the almighty Kyubi, thus the only way to defeat it was to seal it. Today Konoha sees him as her greatest hero. Now there is Senju Tsunade, the god I'm Hokage. She also has fame and a name that carries weight being that she is one of the three legendary shinobi. She is also renowned for the skills in medical ninjutsu and is the best medical nin in all the elemental nations. She was doing a steady job as Hokage, Naruto could agree with that. Naruto looked around to see that he was generating a lot of unwanted attention. Villagers were just staring at him as he walked around. He could also sense that Anbus were watching him. The fact that they were just watching him meant that the gate guards had yet to inform anyone of his presence within the village. 
but it was just a matter of time before they did and Tsunade would send her Anbu to come and fetch him. With a sigh, Naruto blurred out of sight making everyone who was looking at him look at him to see where he had went. His way of disappearing was nothing flashy. He just disappeared like he was never there to begin with. When the villagers saw that they could no longer see him they just shrugged and went back to what they were doing. Hokage Monument Naruto looked at the peaceful image of Kanahagakura no Sato. This peaceful village was a village that his mother and father died protecting. It is a village he had been protecting from the day he was born, Konoha had just yet to be aware of that fact. The Namikaze family have given everything for this village. His father died in the ceiling of the Kyubi. His mother had been a Jinchuriki of the Kyubi since her younger days. Both were heroes. Konoha is what is today because of their sacrifice. Had they not make the sacrifice they made, Konoha would have burned down to the ground since there would have been no one powerful enough to stop the Kyubi. This peace, this sense of security that Konoha now has was because of his family. Even he, who was made a human sacrifice to contain the Kyubi had done just as much as his parents did. Had it not been for his mental stability the Kyubi would have broken out of the seal and finished what it started. But he held on, despite being a social outcast. His mind remained stable and he held the Kyubi back in its cage. Konoha was safe because of his life. Uzumaki and Namikaze, both have sacrificed more than anyone within the village. All Uzumaki to have lived within the village were Jinchurikis. They were made to bear the beast of hatred within them. Today he being the last Uzumaki in Konoha and possibly the world, carries the Kyubi within him following the path of his predecessors. Being Uzumaki, he also had Namikaze blood flowing in his body. His father, the only known Namikaze before him, had been the leader of the village, and died being the leader of the village. With all the sacrifices and the pain and loneliness he has had to endure, it would be a shame to allow all that to be for nothing by not stepping up as the protector of the village. He was born to be a protector of Konoha, guardian of the village and he would take on that mantle proudly. It was his place to ensure that Konoha was safe, and in peace, as a Namikaze, Uzumaki and third Jinchuriki of the Kyubi. Naruto let loose of a sigh as he sensed several chakra signatures coming his way. He figured Tsunade must have been alerted of his return to the village. Anbu would just try to asset their authority over him. He had no doubt they would try to take him to the Hokaye's office by force even if he said he wanted to see the village a bit more. With that in mind, Naruto disappeared from the Hokaye's monument. Naruto looked at the tallest building in Konoha, the Hokaye's tower. Kijas of each village always stayed at the tallest tower within a village. It made it easy to target them, not that anyone would be stupid enough to attack them given that they are the strongest in the village they lead. Naruto entered the Hokaye's tower, still wearing his straw hat. He just decided to walk as it had been long since he breathed the air inside the tower. Today was still the day of his return, in the next few days he would have seen everything inside the village. Naruto bumped into someone after passing by a corner. He had been engrossed with his thoughts that he did not sense anyone. The person who hit him fell back because Naruto had stood still like a wall. But his hat was knocked off his head. Naruto leaned down to pick it up before looking at the person who bumped into him. It was a light-skinned woman, with long, shoulder-length untamed black hair, he had unique red eyes. By her dress and eyes, Naruto quickly recognized the woman as teammate Sensei, Yuhi Kurenai. Sorry about that. Naruto said stretching out his arm to help her get up. Kurenai just stared at Naruto for a few moments. She would have screamed Yondaime-sama if it were for the fact that the Yondaime was a dead man. Naruto? Kurenai said in a whisper as she took Naruto's hand. His grip was firm as she took his hand. Naruto nodded slightly before placing his hat back to its rightful place. Kurenai continued to examine Naruto's appearance. He had grown wonderfully well, since she last saw him. Naruto began to walk forward passing the woman. Kurenai realized that she was staring when Naruto walked past her. She turned around to see him before disappear past a corner. A thought came into her mind as he she realized that Naruto had been missing from the village for three years now. Hinata will be so happy when she finds out about this. Kurenai thought knowing about the Hyuga heir's infatuation with Naruto. Although it does seem like she will have some competition. Another thought crept into her mind. Kurenai shrugged off her thoughts before she could think of how handsome he looked. She turned around and walked away. Naruto walked past the receptionist without saying a word to the woman. Tsunade was expecting him, thus there was no need to check in with her if he could enter the office. Unfortunately, the young lady did not have the same thoughts with him. Hey! You can't just walk in there! She yelled out. The god I'm is expecting me. Naruto replied without turning back to look at the young lady. I don't know that. 
Before you go inside the Hokaye's office you must check with me if she's free or not. This time the receptionist was now standing up. Naruto continued to walk away from the woman. She was rather loud, he had enough of loud females. Sakura was already enough, he did not another one. Hokaye's office. Naruto knocked into the office of the god I'm Hokage. He stood patiently waiting for an answer. Enter. A voice responded behind the door. Naruto entered the office and stood still. There were three people inside the office. He took off his straw hat allowing the people to see his face. Jiraiya, Tsunade and Shizun could only stare at the figure in front of them with wide eyes. Naruto had really grown, and his body was built well. All that baby fat on his face was gone, and the deep blue eyes and shoulder-length spiky blonde hair made him look like the Yondaime Hokage. Clothes he wore were not something they had expected him to be wearing. All three were expecting to see orange, but there was none of it. What was standing in front of them was a true shinobi. They had been expecting him, after the gate guards alerted them of his presence within the village. Tsunade had immediately instructed an Anbu squad to go look for him. Naruto eyed Jiraiya, he had expected the man to be in Konoha given that he was due to return today. Jiraiya would be eager to see him after he had abandoned the Sanin. I have returned from my training trip Tsunade-sama. Naruto stated looking straight at Tsunade. That was a shocker. His words had not mock respect no sarcasm, they were just respectful and his tone was down and calm. Naruto had never addressed Tsunade as Tsunade-sama, it was always Ba-chan or Old Hag. The room was met with silence before Tsunade exploded, shrugging off the fact that Naruto had addressed her name with Sama. She rose up from her chair behind her desk and slammed both her hands to her desk, giving it cracks. Her reaction caused the other two in the room to tense. What were you thinking running away from Jiraiya? Did you forget that the Akatsuki were after you? What if something might have happened to you after your little stunt? That was a stupid thing for you to do Naruto. Tsunade ranted out anger clear in her voice. Do you know what you put me through after Jiraiya told me that you had abandoned him? Do you know many drinks I drank after I learned of your stunt not that she regretted the drinks she had, I was very worried about you and your safety. She was not coming down as she continued to yell at the blonde. Naruto however, remained as he was as if her anger was nothing to him. He did not tense or flinch at the tone of her voice or anger. He just continued looking straight at her. I am going to make you pay for making me worry about you. Tsunade yelled as she short towards Naruto like a bullet. She appeared in front of him with a chakra-enhanced fist speeding towards his face. Both Jiraiya and Shizun tensed, knowing that it was not going to end pretty for Naruto. No one dodged Tsunade's punches. Well not because they could not, but because she was the Hokage and dodging them would only infuriate her further. An infuriated Tsunade was not someone you wanted to deal with. When Tsunade's fist was just an inch away from Naruto's face, he sidestepped at a rather fast speed. He had his left hand stretched out, it was placed of Tsunade's large bust. Naruto had avoided trying to block the attack knowing how powerful Tsunade's punches were. His hand on Tsunade's bust was for support so that the woman did not hit the ground to her momentum. Shizun and Jiraiya were shocked to see Naruto dodge Tsunade's punch. One who was shocked more was Tsunade. At the speed she appeared in front of him, she was not expecting him to dodge. Also, Naruto had never tried to dodge her punches. Jiraiya then noticed where Naruto's hand was placed. He grinned perversely, lucky brat I have never gone that far. Jiraiya muttered under his breath. Everybody heard his words. Jiraiya's words snapped Tsunade out of her thoughts. She realized that Naruto's hand was on her bust. It was supporting her so she could not fall, thus she could feel it well on her bust. She looked at Naruto who had a slightly amused expression on his face. Tsunade had the decency to blush as she realized the situation she was in. She quickly got her bearings and walked away from Naruto without another word. She went back to sit on her chair behind her desk. She opened a drawer and took out a bottle of sake before downing it. Naruto raised a brow when he felt a pair of eyes staring at him. He looked to see Shizun staring at him as if she was lost in her own world of imaginations. Shizun realized she was caught staring and looked down. Whether from embarrassment at being caught staring or she was just hiding something. Nobody could really tell why. H hello Naruto-kun, she managed to say, her eyes going back to Naruto. Shizun, how have been over the past three years? Naruto said. Well, just a lot of stressing work. You? I have no complaints. Naruto replied, his tone calm and reserved. Tsunade cleared her throat to get everyone's attention. She eyed Naruto carefully. He had definitely changed. He was no longer the Naruto she knew. This Naruto was totally different from the Naruto she knew. Putting it accurately, 
she could say she was the opposite of the Naruto she knew. Naruto, it's not that I'm not happy to see but you have some explaining to do. Tsunade stated in a serious tone. Jiraiya nodded, agreeing with Tsunade. Naruto had a lot of explaining to do. They all looked at Naruto waiting for him to speak. Explain what exactly, Tsunade-sama? Naruto asked. Why you ran away from Jiraiya? What were you even thinking when you did? Tsunade asked with a fierce glare that would make anyone flinch. Naruto looked at Jiraiya for a moment before looking back at Tsunade. I did not run away. I simply left him to clear my head and get some training. Naruto replied calmly. What do you mean you left him to clear your head and get some training? Tsunade asked glaring at Naruto. The reason she had allowed Jiraiya to take Naruto out of the village for the training trip was because she wanted him to clear his mind and get trained by Jiraiya. With all due respect, but I thought my words were simple enough for you to understand. Naruto said seeing as there was no reason to explain his statement. Naruto, Tsunade barked intensifying her glare. She leaked some of her killing intent. Shizune had to step away from her master when she started leaking the killing intent. Tell. Me. Why. You. Ran. Away. From. Jiraiya. Now. Tsunade stated in a tone of authority showing Naruto that she was the Hokage. Naruto shrugged off Tsunade's killing intent. He could handle worse than the blonde Hokage was giving off. As I said, I left Jiraiya because I wanted to get some training done and become strong. Before Tsunade could respond, Jiraiya spoke. Did you have to leave me? I could have trained you to become strong. I am a Sanin after all. He said with narrowed eyes. Tsunade chose not to say anything, she wanted Naruto to respond to Jiraiya's question. Yes, Naruto replied. You might be a Sanin, but you could have never given me the training I required. To you I would have been third to everything you could do. The first had to be your research, the second had to be your spy network. Am I correct Jiraiya? Jiraiya was surprised that Naruto did not call him Urosenin. It has always been what Naruto called him ever since their meeting at the hot springs. Naruto had also called him without the respect suffix. Getting over his surprise, Naruto's words began to sink in his head. Tsunade narrowed her eyes at Jiraiya who shifted nervously upon seeing the look she was giving him. Respond to his words Jiraiya. She barked at the Sanin. No no no, Haim you know I would have trained him. I was the one who asked to take him on the training trip after all. Jiraiya defended himself. Jiraiya, you were going to correct some flaws in my taijutsu, help me with chakra control and teach me how to control the Kyuubi's chakra for all three years. Correct me if I am wrong. Naruto stated giving Jiraiya an impassive look. Tsunade glared at Jiraiya, well. Jiraiya scratched the back of his head smiling nervously, we, a, you see. If he was being honest, that was all he had planned on teaching Naruto, added with a few variations of the Rasengan. Jiraiya I cannot believe that you were going to waste all three years teaching him only those things. You damn pervert I trusted you with him to make him strong. Tsunade yelled throwing a stack of papers at Jiraiya. Tsunade-sama, you shouldn't whatever Shizune was going to say, she could not finish as Tsunade sent her a glare to shut her up. Your reasons might have been justifiable. But you should not have ran away from Jiraiya. Did you ever pause to think what your friends, what I would think if something was to happen to you because of your foolish decision? Tsunade asked not happy with Naruto's choice. She would deal with Jiraiya later, but Naruto needed to know the consequences of his actions. No. Naruto replied. It was the truth. He did not think of anyone when he made the choice to abandon Jiraiya. He was only thinking about himself, not anyone else. All three just stared at Naruto. That was something neither had ever thought they would hear from Naruto. Naruto had always put everyone ahead of him when he made his choices. It was safe to say that the blonde lived for other people discarding his own needs. You are telling me that you just ran away from Jiraiya without thinking of how those who care for you would feel? Tsunade yelled losing her calm look. Yes, Naruto replied. For the first time I placed myself ahead and did what was best for me. Was that so wrong to do? Tsunade was taken aback by his question. She had never expected him to say something like that. No, she replied losing her anger but that does not excuse you for running away from Jiraiya. Naruto said nothing. Where did you even go after you left Jiraiya? What did you even do? Tsunade asked. I'm afraid I cannot answer that question Tsunade-sama. Naruto stated. Naruto, Jiraiya said, his face taking a rare serious expression on his face. You are going to tell us where you have been for past three years. That is not a request. Naruto shook his head, order or not. 
I cannot answer your question. Sonate slammed her fists on her desk cracking it. Another hit and it was going to break. Listen here Brad. You are going to tell me where you have been over the past three years. I might have let you off the hook in the past, but this is serious. You will tell me what I want to know or I will make you. Do you understand me? Tsunade yelled with a hardened glare at Naruto. She increased her killing intent to a new high to show the blonde that she was dead serious. The temperature became tense in the office because of Tsunade's killing intent. The killing intent was enough to make Jiraiya sweat bullets and Shizun find it difficult to breathe. To the surprise of Tsunade, Naruto was unaffected by her killing intent. He did not even flinch or tense. He simply just shrugged it off like it was nothing. All you need to know is that I was at a safe place and I trained to the level I wanted. Naruto replied his tone unwavering. Tsunade stared at Naruto for a minute before she sighed and stopped leaking her killing intent. Naruto was not going to answer her question no matter what she did. The look on his face told her that much. Fine, she said in a defeated tone. At least give me a report on what you trained in. Naruto unsheathed his sword. Showing it the occupants in the room. Their eyes widened recognizing the blade. Rajin no Ken slash the sword of the thunder god. Jiraiya muttered looking at the sword. Naruto placed the sword back to its sheath. Where did you get it? Tsunade asked knowing that the sword had been missing from Konoha. From Aoi Roku's ho, Naruto replied. It was the half-truth since he was not to took the sword from Aoi. He could not tell them that it was Itachi who gave it to him. I trained in Kenjutsu and other shinobi arts. Naruto stated. Now, I believe that is all now. If you need anything from me, I will be at my father's house. I was nice seeing you again, Tsunade-sama, Shizun. Naruto stated with a small smile before he disappeared in bright yellow flash. Jiraiya did he just say my father's house? Tsunade asked staring at the spot Naruto had been standing. Yes he did, Haim. Jiraiya replied with a dumb expression on his face. Haim, did he just disappear in a yellow flash? He asked. Yes he did, Jiraiya. Tsunade replied with a dumb look on her face. Shizun just watched the two converse in a comical fashion. The expressions of their face were priceless. Had it not been for the implications of the revelations, she would have been rolling on the floor killing herself in laughter. A few seconds later. The house of the Yondaime Hokage not what Naruto had expected from the house of the most famous Hokage to have ever existed in the village hidden in leaves. He had expected to see a large house worthy and fitting for Konoha's yellow flash, the man who brought the arrogant Iwagakura to her knees. He was expecting to see something exquisite but what he found was just a normal house. The house was perfect for a normal family. No one would really guess that the Hokage of Kanahagakur lived within the house. Naruto had smiled upon taking a look at the house he had inherited from his parents. It was just a symbol of how humble and simple his parents were. Many who could have been in his father's shoes would have opted for something big and standing out of all the houses in Konoha. But not his parents. Some would have even lived in house big as the Hokage's tower just so people could see that they stood out of everyone in the village. But again, not his parents. Perhaps his parents had made a small home so not to attract too much attention from people. Perhaps that was the case. However, thinking of that, they would not worry about anything since they had Anbu to protect them 24-7. No one would have really attempted to take on the strongest man in Konoha. Regardless of their reasons, the house was perfect for him. Sighing, Naruto disappeared in a yellow flash after having located a Horatian seal within the house. He appeared in a room that had a large bed a really large bed. It was definitely his parents' bedroom. There was no doubt that it was the main bedroom. By just looking at the setting of the room, Naruto deduced that much. The room was still in perfect condition. Perhaps the Sandaime had some trusted people to look after the house while he was still alive. That would explain why the room was in good condition. He could take a nap without having to worry about insects jumping on him and taking a bite. That was just how the room was. Perhaps it was the seals that banished anything that might have attempted to eat the house inside out. Anything by now was just assumptions. Not that it mattered anyway. The house was his. There was no one who would dispute that. A clip invaded Naruto's head. It was him in his younger days. He saw himself busting inside the room catching his father doing something to his mother. And then he screamed To-san. What are you doing to Ka-chan? Both his parents just flushed red in embarrassment before hiding under their blankets. It would be been a funny memory had it been real. It would also be amusing to see how his father would try to explain what he had just seen. Minato Namikaze would definitely be unable to explain himself. Naruto shook his head, deleting the clip. Amusing as it was, having those thoughts was not going to do him any good. 
Naruto sat on the bed and shifted his eyes around the room. He smiled sadly seeing the portraits that were hung on the wall within the room. The portraits were truly beautiful. He would not mind gazing on them for a full day. His parents seemed to be truly happy together. They seemed perfect for each other. There was no doubt about that within his head. Naruto's eyes trained on the one that his mother was still pregnant with him. The smiles on both their faces made him shed a tear. He could only guess how happy they must have been knowing that they were expecting their first child. By just looking at the portrait, he could only say really happy. They must have waited patiently for his birth. So that they could see their first product, their joy. A pity they never got the chance to live with him after his birth, they never got to hear his first words or hear him call them Ka-chan and To-san. Death had taken them away from their beloved the day he was born. The world had a funny way of operating. Naruto took his time exploring the house further. He looked at each room that was in the house without missing any. He did not send clones to do it for him, he wanted to do it himself. He wanted to see it with his own eyes, even though the clone's experiences would be brought back to him. The better choice was to do it himself. The house was perfect for him. He could not explain why, but it just was. He felt home, free. Perhaps it was because it was his parents' house and he had lived inside the house while he was still inside his mother's womb. The house had four bedrooms, two bathrooms, a kitchen, sitting room, library and a basement. The basement was used as a storeroom for storing weapons amongst other things. The library was full of scrolls and also functioned as his father's home office judging from the chair and desk just beside the window away from the shelves. Naruto had sat down behind the desk and made himself comfortable. The chair felt like it was made just for him, like it was made with him in mind. He looked around the library and marveled at the sheer number of scrolls and books. He doubted he would ever go through all of all of them any time soon. He even wondered if his parents had even read everything in the library. Perhaps they had stored their knowledge and other people's knowledge for him. He would certainly save some scrolls for his own children. Especially since he was planning to write his own book. He wanted to write his own book in Fuenjutsu, perhaps another about his life. Fuenjutsu would come first though. He was a master in the art, it was his duty to share the knowledge he had with those who sought for it. Also teaching Fuenjutsu was his duty. The Uzumaki clan was known for being masters in the art of sealing. Right now, it was his duty to continue with that tradition. He was already a seal master. Not that he bragged about it, it was just the truth. A room that had made him shed a few tears was the room with a crib inside. Without any doubt it was the room that was built for him. The crib was made for him. It was the room at which he was supposed to have had nightmares in. He was supposed to let loose of unwanted water inside his body while he was sleeping peacefully inside the crib. A pity he never got the chance to rest on it. Instead he had a cold and lonely bed at the orphanage. He would have wished just for once to enjoy the comfort of the bed his parents had prepared for him. They had made it, but never got the chance to watch him fall asleep inside the little bed they had made. If he could fit inside the crib, Naruto would have jumped inside and taken a nap. But he was not, he could only enjoy the comfort with his own hands and thoughts. One thing was certain though, he was going to leave the room as it was. Nothing would be changed from the room. Perhaps his own children will enjoy the comfort he never got the chance to enjoy. What was to be done in the room was cleaning. Speaking of cleaning, Tajuu Cage Bunshine no Jutsu, he breathed out and 20 identical copies of himself popped up into existence. Naruto gave them the orders to clean the house. His clones could do the trivial staff for him. Naruto himself decided to go to the library slash study. He wanted to do everything in the library by himself. Complex Fuenjutsu Naruto looked at the words and nodded to himself. He had fixed and put everything in place within the library. It had taken him a few hours to do so, but he never complained. In fact, he enjoyed doing the work. In a few hours day will be making way for night. Naruto had decided to use this few hours before night to begin some writing. He wanted some to get some writing done. The clones he had made were still busy doing their chores. They had managed to stay long thanks to the chakra he had given them. One had been sent to buy some groceries since the house had no food given that no one had been taking refuge in it. The clone he had sent was hinged as he did not want to come across any of his friends. He would see them tomorrow, today he had to make himself comfortable before announcing his return to his friends. Without any more thoughts, Naruto began to write his book for Fuenjutsu masters. He being a master thought it be best to write about some complex seals. He doubted that there was anyone in Konoha who would better him in the art of sealing. Perhaps his talent came from the fact that he had Uzumaki genes running through his body. It was natural for any Uzumaki to be a master in Fuenjutsu, so there was no surprise there. Also, his father had been a genius in seals, perhaps some of that talent was transferred to him. Either way, 
He was a fine seal master and was not afraid to say it loud. The first seal he explained in detail was the Haki no Funshiki. The seal that his father used to seal the Kyubi within him. Naruto had taken much time to study the seal in detail. He understands everything about it, even the minor details. When he studied the seal by examining the one on his stomach, he found out that Minato had created a key to unlock the seal. The key could either remove the seal or open the gate that to the Kyubi's cage. Naruto understood that his father had intended for him to use the Kyubi's chakra. After having completed the detailed description of the 8 trigram sealing style, Naruto began to make notes for another book. This one he called, The Journey of a Hero. He just made a few notes only. He would continue to gather material as he continues to write complex fuinjutsu. If someone had said he would be interested in literature in his Janan days, he would not have even laughed. He hated reading or writing those days. Even his handwriting was horrible. At least these days it had improved because he was constantly writing something. Naruto sighed annoyingly, How long are you going to watch me? He said seemingly to no one. Jiraiya stepped out of the corner of the study with a sheepish grin, You have improved your sensing abilities, he said. In your Janan days you would have remained oblivious to my presence until I got tired of hiding, he said with an awkward chuckle. It was not every day that someone caught him while he was hiding. Naruto deserved praise for having noticed his presence. Those years I was an idiot trying to play shinobi. All I had was just large amounts of chakra and a mountain tall by Juu sealed within me, Naruto said leaning back to his chair. He stared at Jiraiya with a blank expression making the Sanin swallow whatever that he was chewing. Don't say that. I gave you some skills when I trained you. Naruto shook his head making Jiraiya look at him questionably, you cannot give anyone skills Jiraiya. A skill is not something you can just hand over. Some people are born with skills while some attain skills through sheer dedication to training, he paused for a moment. You as a teacher help recognize the skills and improve those skills. Jiraiya made to note that Naruto was not the same idiot as he was. He sounded smart. In my case you helped me improve what I had so that I could survive the Chunin exams. Truthfully, had it not been for you I would have flopped. Jiraiya beamed at Naruto's words. He wanted to add that he had improved Naruto's skills and made him perform well at the Chunin exams because he was the greatest sensei of all time. But Naruto's next words had him kissing the floor. Regardless of how grateful I am for your help, I cannot regard you as a good teacher given the fact that you pushed me inside a deep hole just to see if I could use the Kyubi's power. If the Kyubi was suicidal I would have died or ended up with a broken body, Naruto said with a straight face, eyes still looking at Jiraiya. You hurt me with your words Naruto, Jiraiya said rather childishly. But you have to agree my method did give good results. You ended up summoning Gamabunta with the Kyubi's power. The Sanin pointed out. Despite his method being risky, it gave satisfactory results. Yes it did, Naruto conceded. Silence took its part in the room. Naruto was still staring at Jiraiya with an unreadable expression on his face. The look on Naruto's face was really making the Sanin nervous. The old Naruto would have been just looking at him with a goofy smile and wide eyes. Finally Jiraiya spoke. You know seeing you like that working behind the desk reminds me too much of your father. He used to love this study, Jiraiya stated changing the subject. Naruto's parents, that was his reason for coming here. Naruto knew who his parents were. He never told the blonde, but it was his task to do so. He had not planned to tell Naruto about his parentage before the whole Akatsuki mess was over. But now, Naruto knew. That is where things were complicated. Naruto's face took a thoughtful expression, I forgot that father was your prized student. Moreover, you saw him as your own son, am I correct? Yeah, Jiraiya replied with a proud smile. Minato was the son I never had. The brat was a genius. A pity I was nothing like him. The words worked like magic. The mood in the study became tense. Jiraiya looked away from Naruto, not wanting to meet his gaze. Sighing, Jiraiya looked back at Naruto. Naruto I he was cut off by Naruto. Jiraiya I just came back from a three-year training trip. The training was harsh to both my mind and body. Today is the first time I stepped inside my parents' house. A house that I was supposed to grow up in. Jiraiya I saw the crib that my parents had prepared for me. You and the Sandaime made sure I never saw this house or sleep in the bed that was made for me, Jiraiya looked down in shame at hearing those words. It must have been draining emotionally for Naruto to see a house he was supposed to grow up in. But instead he had been left to live in the orphanage while he had inherited a house from his parents. I simply do no not care for your reasons in keeping the truth from me Jiraiya. As it stands, it matters not because the damage has already been done. I know you may be sorry for not looking after me while I was taking crap from the villagers. 
I mean it is the responsibility of a godfather to take of their godson right? Jariah could only nod. Let's face the facts, you only came back to the village and offered to train me because of the threat of Akatsuki. Had it not been for them, you would have never shown yourself before me. Regardless of that, I do not hate you Jiraiya. But make no mistake I am very much angry with you, Naruto paused for a moment letting the words sink into Jiraiya's head. Now if you can leave me alone to enjoy this free time I have, it would be highly appreciated. Jiraiya slumped his shoulders. He had expected worse. At least Naruto did not hate him for keeping the truth from him and not being there for him in his younger days. Fine, I will go. But meet me at Haim's office tomorrow at 8 a.m. We have a lot to discuss. Naruto figured they wanted to know more about his training and who he was with. He had basically not told them anything about his training trip. Knowing Tsunade, she would not be satisfied until she got some answers. He was not going to give any he did not want though. There was also the matter of his parentage. Since he now knew, it would change things completely. Jiraiya turned around to leave only to be stopped by Naruto's voice, and oh Jiraiya, always remember this, there will be severe punishment for your choices. So Godfather, when you walk around know that I will be watching, waiting for the perfect chance to strike. Chapter 5 The Real Me Three hours before 8am the time he was supposed to meet Tsunade and Jiraiya Naruto was already awake. He had slept comfortably on his parents' bed. Yes, he had decided to use his parents' room as his. The house was his now, there was no use in preserving the room for another use. He could as well enjoy the comfort of the bed that his parents used. Ultimately sleeping in the bed had resulted in a sound sleep. But he had set up an alarm to wake up early so he could begin to work on other things. Yesterday his clones had finished cleaning the house. Luckily, only a few of the furnitures would need to be replaced to suit his liking. Overall, the house was cleaned and looked like it had been giving refuge to someone for quite some time. His clones had not rushed while cleaning. They did it slowly and ensured that no dirt was left behind. Today he would have them clean outside the house. The garden was a mess, it appeared that whoever was taking care of the house when the Sandaime was still alive did not bother to look after it. Naruto had always liked flowers. He had planned to go buy some after meeting with Tsunade. But first thing first, Tajuu Cage Bunshine no Jutsu. A cloud of smoke gave birth to ten clones of Naruto. Naruto waved them to get onto their duties. They already knew what they were tasked to do. Without a complaint, the clones first went to the basement to get the required tools to service the garden. Naruto went to the kitchen. He began to boil some water. He waited calmly at the kitchen for the water to boil. After it had finally boiled, Naruto made himself a cup of black tea. Even though he did not enjoy tea as much as Itachi did, it was still refreshing in the morning. Perhaps in the morning was the only time he would say he enjoyed drinking tea. Speaking of Itachi. He was already missing the man's stoic presence. The intelligent conversations they used to have and the often training they used to do, he was missing all that. Funny thing was that it had been just four days since he left the Uchiha clan hideout. Now was the second day since he returned to Konoha. Naruto took his cup of tea to the study. He placed the cup on the desk and went on to take a scroll from the shelves. He went back to his desk and sat behind it on a chair and begun to read the scroll while sipping his tea. His mother was also familiar with seals. Her seals were unique only to Uzumaki clan members. When she came into Konoha from Uzushio Gakur, she came with so many scrolls from her mother and had certain knowledge of seals. His father was able to benefit from her scrolls. Perhaps if it were not for his mother, his father would never had become renowned for his mastery in Fuenjutsu. The Uzumaki clan was indeed ingenious and creative with their work. Naruto could only wonder what the clan would have been able to do with seals had great villages not annihilated them for their creativity. Well there was always a price for power. A pity that the Uzumaki paid a hefty price, while they were a peaceful nation secluded in their own little island. They distanced themselves from fighting when necessary. Naruto picked up his cup and peeked inside it. There was nothing left. He had drank all the tea without even realizing it. And he kept saying he was not the one who enjoyed tea. Sighing, Naruto placed the cup on the desk and continued reading the scroll. It had details about seals that were used to seal by Jews. Interesting part was that his clan had been the first clan to develop a seal that could hold a baijuu and imprison it inside a human. Perhaps his clan had inherited something from the Sage of Six Paths. Despite the hypothesis not being confirmed by either clan, Senju and Uzumaki were relatives. Whoever was Uzumaki had Senju heritage in them. That meant that Uzumaki were also related to the Sage Six Paths. Senju and Uchiha inherited power, while Uzumaki inherited his mind and life force. That sounded just about right. An hour left before he could meet Tsunade. 
Naruto took the scroll and returned it to the shelf. He slowly went back to his desk and opened a drawer. He took out the papers he had written yesterday on his book Complex Fuenjutsu. He wanted to ensure that he had explained everything clearly without a mistake. Although he doubted he made any mistake, it did not kill him to check. After rereading everything, Naruto was satisfied. He stood up and stretched his muscles before looking at the time. More than 40 minutes left before he had to leave. He smiled as a thought came into his mind. Naruto walked out of the study and went straight to his room. His sword was perfectly placed near his bed. He had yet to find a perfect place for it. The basement did not seem like a place his sword would appreciate to be kept. Keeping it close to him had been the choice he had taken. He picked up the sword inside its sheath before wrapping the sheath on his back. He walked onto a clearing. No, a training ground at the back of the house. He liked the house because it had everything he would need. He did not have to go anywhere to get some training done. It was good for his body to keep it conditioned at the highest level. He did not want his skills to become dull. That can happen if he misses a few days of training. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Naruto created a clone. The clone stood in front of him with its own copy of the Sword of the Thunder God. Without another word, both Naruto's disappeared in blurs and engaged in a fierce taijutsu battle. The clone rushed at Naruto. Upon reaching the original, the clone brought out its right hand and went for an uppercut. Naruto was more than ready for the challenge. He blocked the incoming punch with his left hand. He held out his right hand creating a Rasengan. The clone immediately leapt away from Naruto so to avoid being hit by the A-rank jutsu. Naruto did not want to use the jutsu, simply he just wanted the clone to make some distance with him. He knew that with its punch block the clone would attempt something else. Naruto disappeared in a blur towards his clone. He appeared in front of with his foot raised and attempted to kick the clone at its temple. Unfortunately, the clone had good reflexes just as he did. It brought out both its hands to block the powerful kick. Naruto's kick was unable to penetrate or break the guard. The clone moved shiftily to kick him on his waist level with its right foot. Naruto saw the attack coming and countered with his own foot. The two legs collided in mid-air but not for long as both of them were retrieved making way for the legs which had been used for balance. But the results was the same. Naruto jumped back away from his clone. The clone did not give him a chance to breath. It attacked him again and they engaged in a taijutsu battle across the training ground. The battle took several minutes before both parties finally separated. Naruto unsheathed his blade and stuck his finger on a small hole on the blade's handle. He spun the blade in front of him like a fan before retrieving his finger and flicked the sword. He caught it and held it in front of him. Just as he was about to charge at his clone, an alarm rang. Naruto sighed and sheathed his blade. He looked at his clone, dispel yourself, he said walking away from the training ground. Before going into the house, he went to check how the clones were doing at the garden. He smiled when he arrived, they were doing well. All the unwanted weeds had been uprooted and dead flowers also. They were also preparing the soil for plantation. He smiled. Definitely, after meeting with Tsunade he would go and buy some flowers. Nodding to himself, Naruto walked inside his house and went straight to his room. He did not do anything other than taking a warm refreshing bath. After the bath, nothing else was done. He just changed into new clothes. He took out some clothes he had bought on his way back to the village. He wore a long-sleeved white shirt and dark blue pants along with blue shinobi sandals. Hokaye's office. Tsunade sat leaning against her chair with Jiraiya sitting on the window of her office. Naruto, he was dominating her every thought. The fact that he knew his parentage changed a lot of things. Added to that he was living inside of his parents' house. The council would have to be informed of this, or they would start yapping to her about this and that. She definitely had no time to listen to whatever they would want to say about Naruto. The house was his, it was his inheritance. The council had been keeping away Naruto's inheritance and parentage. The fact that he found out about it and went to claim it without even speaking to them will cause them to stir. Tsunade glanced at Jiraiya. Ever since he entered the office, he had been oddly quiet. Jiraiya was never the one to be quiet no matter what the situation was. Serious? Yes, he could be serious if the situation called for it. Do you think he hates us? She asked her former teammate quietly. Jiraiya shook his head, no. I spoke to him yesterday about it when I went to inform him of this meeting. What did he say to you? He did not care for my reasons and that he was angry with me. He also said he did not hate me. Jiraiya did not tell Tsunade of Naruto's last words to him. Truthfully, he was dreading what sort of punishment the blonde was planning for him. And me? He did not say anything about you. He only spoke of me and Sensei. 
I don't think he blames you for anything. Tsunade sighed in relief. Well that is good to know, she said. But still, even I knew of his parentage but did not bother to say anything to him. In fact, I was not planning to tell him anything until he became strong enough to protect himself. Don't feel bad about anything Haim, Jiraiya said in a consoling voice. Sensei and I were the ones who messed up things. I can't say Sensei alone is to blame. But I who was Naruto's godfather should have at least been there for him. Tsunade wanted to say that he indeed had messed up big time. But she knew that her teammate regretted his choice for not taking care of Naruto when he was still young. Probably he had even chosen to take the blonde on a three-year training trip so that he could make up for lost time. She was not going to point out Jiraiya's wrongs for him. He was already beating himself for it. He did not need her to add more to that misery. There was also the fact that Jiraiya had felt responsible for Minato's death. He felt that as his sensei he should have been there to protect him. He failed to do that and it pained him. I just hope that he will. Tsunade trailed off as she sensed something. Naruto appeared in the middle of the office right in front of Tsunade's desk. He just appeared, just like that. There were no leaves that came with him, there was not cloud of smoke, there was nothing. He just appeared. Not even a flash of something was seen. Morning Tsunade-sama, Jiraiya, Naruto greeted the two former teammates with a small smile. Jiraiya simply nodded to Naruto. Tsunade responded with words. Morning to you too Naruto, she said with a smile. Did you sleep well at your new home? Yes, the night was pleasant, Naruto replied still standing in front of Tsunade's desk. I'm glad, Tsunade said before clearing her throat. For what purpose, only she knew. Can you sit down Naruto? Jiraiya and I have things to discuss with you. I would imagine so, Naruto stated taking a sit. He would never have been called at this time of the morning to the office if there was nothing to talk about. First thing. We will ask you some questions which we will ask that you give us honest answers, Jiraiya said taking over from Tsunade. Tsunade nodded. Yes you can trust us with anything, she said. Naruto simply remained quiet. The smile on his face was now replaced by an impassive expression on his face. He waited for Tsunade and Jiraiya to start with the discussion. But that did not mean he was going to share with them everything. He would not want to put Itachi's life in danger. Itachi was no longer strong as he was given his condition. If he were to tell them about him, they would surely try to get him to tell them about his whereabouts. Naruto knew that not even Jiraiya or Tsunade were aware of Itachi's mission. Tell me Naruto, how did you find out about your parentage? It was a closely guarded secret that only Anbu and the council members knew off, Jiraiya questioned looking straight into Naruto's eyes. Someone told me about it, Naruto responded calmly. Who? This time, it was Tsunade who asked the question. I cannot tell you that. I made that perfectly clear yesterday. Tsunade gritted her teeth but remained calm. Naruto was not making things easy for her. She wanted to protect him from the council should they know that he had not been with Jiraiya during the past three years. But for her to protect him, she needed him to be honest with her and tell her everything. There was also the fact that they had to know who had told Naruto about his parentage and for what purpose. She wanted to know if village secrets were being leaked by someone else. She also had to know if someone her and Jiraiya knew had gone to tell Naruto about his parentage while they had worked to keep it away from him and the whole world. Naruto why can't you just tell us? It's just me and Jiraiya what do you think we will do? Because if I do tell you, I would be betraying someone's trust in me. I cannot do something like that. And as for what I think you will do. I have not thought that far since I never planned to tell you anything that could violate someone's trust in me. Tsunade was rather unnerved by Naruto's calm demeanor. She narrowed her eyes at him suspiciously. Whoever had told Naruto about his parentage must have meant a lot to Naruto if he was not willing to give them even a name. Even Jiraiya now looked at Naruto suspiciously. He could not understand why Naruto would not tell them the name of the person who told him of his parentage. Jiraiya's gut was telling him that whoever told Naruto about his parentage is the one that trained him for the past three years. He had a strong feeling towards that. Naruto noticed their suspicious gazes and inwardly shook his head in disappointment. Just because he was refusing to tell them about something, they were already looking at him with suspicion. Tsunade-sama, I will let that suspicious look on your eye slide for now, Naruto said causing Tsunade to look at him with slightly wide eyes. Godfather, you are looking at me with suspicion simply because I refused to tell the name of the person who told me of my parentage. Ironic, you look at me with suspicion because I refused to tell you something, as I would be betraying someone. You who being my godfather lied to my face when I asked you if you of my parents, Naruto said his tone still calm. Jiraiya had the decency to flinch and look down in shame. 
What concerns you the most Jiraiya, Tsunade-sama? Is it the fact that someone told me of my heritage? Is that someone had the guts to be honest with me? Is it that I am keeping things from you too? Shouldn't you be happy that I went away and came back safe and strong enough to protect myself? Jiraiya and Tsunade were not really expecting Naruto to say something like that. So they were surprised upon hearing those words from Naruto. Perhaps Naruto is right. They should be happy that Naruto had returned to them safely. He had transformed his personality and attitude. He had come back smart. As people who care for Naruto, they should have been happy for him. So why were they focused on grinding information from Naruto? Is it because they did not like it when Naruto kept things from them? Was it being fair to him? They also kept things from that could have changed his life way sooner. Naruto would never do anything that would harm Konoha or any of his friends. They knew that. Naruto's love for Konoha ran deep. He would never do anything or associate himself with someone who could harm the village. If they knew that, why did they even look at him with suspicion? I should have known better, Tsunade said more to herself than anyone. Naruto it is not that we are not happy that you have returned and know of your heritage. We are just worried about you. You also have to understand that your heritage is an S-class secret. I do not believe that you met anyone from the village who could have told you about it since recently there has been no one from our top ranks to depart the village. So it would be alarming if someone outside the village knows one of our closely guarded secrets. Jiraiya added to Tsunade's words. You should have known that I would never do anything that would harm Konoha, Naruto said. There is nothing to worry about in terms of village security. Regardless of your concerns, I still will not tell you who told me of my heritage. I am very thankful of what the person did for me. If not told, I would have been running around the world not knowing who I was. Now that I know who I am and where I come from I can live freely and be myself. Back then, what made me strong and kept me alive was my heart and desire to protect, that which was precious to me. Now I know my roots. I know what is expected of me as Kushina Uzumaki and Minato Namikaze's son. Jiraiya had to nod. Naruto did make sense with what he was saying. He also had to give the blonde praise. While speaking of the mysterious person who told him about his heritage, Naruto never gave them anything. Not the gender, not even who the person was associated with. He did not even reveal whether the person was from Konoha or not. I understand. I think Haim also understands, Jiraiya said eyeing the blonde Hokage before looking straight at Naruto, however, I need you to answer some questions, he said. Naruto waited for the questions. Was the person who told you of your heritage the one you had been with in duration of the past three years? Yes, Naruto responded calmly. You said you could now be myself, are you saying that before you left Konoha you were not being yourself? Tsunade was shocked at question. Jiraiya was asking if Naruto had been wearing a mask before he left the village for his training. Naruto smiled slightly at the Sanin. How perceptive of you Jiraiya. You notice that little detail, Naruto said. To answer your question, yes and no. Yes, not every smile I gave was real. Most of them were fakes hiding my pain and loneliness. I also was not stupid as people might have thought I was. I believe only Shikamaru knew the real me. No, I was always kind-hearted by nature. My desire to protect was not fake, but that was something that came from my heart. In addition, my dream of being Hokage came to be because I wanted to be acknowledged and seen as acceptable. When I left Konoha for the training trip. The way I was, that was part of the real me. Now as you see me. This is who I am. This is the real me. You could as well say that right now I am complete. Naruto's words left both Tsunade and Jiraiya bewildered. None of them had seen this one coming. Why did I not realize it? Tsunade and Jiraiya asked themselves. Now are we in agreement that you won't be asking me about who I trained with and who told me about my heritage? Yes, Tsunade said with a sigh. Well then, is there something else? Yes, but before that. Where is that necklace I gave you? Tsunade asked. She had not seen Naruto wearing it yesterday. Even today he was not wearing it. I have it placed somewhere safe. I know you gave it to me to wear, well technically, I want it. But knowing how valuable it is I doubt you would have given it to me if you did not want to. I stopped wearing it when I began training. I did not want to lose it and also I feel uncomfortable wearing it knowing what it does. He was not going to explain to Tsunade what it does. She knew that the necklace was really a seal that could activate on its own once a certain amount of power of a Baijuu was released by a Jinchuriki. But that does not mean I do not appreciate it. I know it is very precious to you knowing that it is the only material thing that can remind you of your grandfather other than Konoha itself. However, I will not give it back. I will keep it and give it to someone precious to me. 
Jiraiya quickly responded with a grin, you mean like a girl? Naruto sighed. Jiraiya was a shameless pervert. In this case, he was right. Tsunade smiled knowing that Naruto had not just discarded the gift she gave to him. And his silence proved that Jiraiya was right, he was going to give it to a girl. She just hoped that the girl was well-mannered, beautiful, strong and kind-hearted like Naruto. She would not accept anything less than that. Do what want me to reveal that you are the son of the Yondai maid to the village? Tsunade asked. Actually, she wanted him to say yes so she could see the look on the faces of the villagers when they hear that the very person they have hated and treated as a social outcast is the son of their beloved Yondaime Hokage. Do what you want, Naruto said with a nonchalant shrug. Tsunade nodded. Naruto, you have also not told us about your training and how strong you are. Jiraiya said. Ah Jiraiya, a ninja must have his secrets. I cannot give you a proper rank without knowing how strong you are. Currently you are just a chunin. Chunin? Last time I remember I was just a Janan. Naruto said knowing that he was not promoted after the Chunin exams despite showing skills that were compatible to a Chunin. Tsunade smirked. After you left I promoted you after reviewing your performance at the exams. You fought Gara after having released Shikaku and defeated him. No Janan can do that and also your fight with Neji was impressive. The council just wanted you to be grounded. Tsunade explained. Naruto just nodded not even looking the slightest excited or thrilled by the news. In measuring your strength, I know a perfect way to have you show what you can do. You cannot refuse is as it is an order from you Hokage. Naruto just sighed again. He had expected as much from Tsunade. She would not rest until she knew how strong he was. Knowing how strong he was would work in her favor when she has to be overprotective of him. You will be at training ground 7 tomorrow at 10 p.m. That was an order not a request by the god I'm Hokage. Naruto simply nodded. We also wanted to tell you about the Akatsuki, Jiraiya said. They have disbanded. I know that. How? Naruto shrugged in response. He really did not have to respond to each the question. That does not matter, Tsunade said. The good news is that Naruto is safe from them and he Tsunade was cut off by the opening door. Tsunade-sama I have brought you the reports. A grown-up Sakura trailed off when she noticed the spiky blonde hair. She stood still staring with wide eyes. Naruto turned around to look at his former teammate in Team 7. He gave the girl a smile, Sakura, he said. Sakura walked closer to Naruto with a mountain of papers in her hands, and Naruto? Naruto nodded. Sakura beamed up brightly at seeing her former teammate for the first time in three years. Naruto, she said happily. How have you been? How was your training? When did you come back? Sakura started asking questions like a schoolgirl. The adults just watched with small smiles in their faces. I am well. I returned yesterday. How have you been? Good, Sakura replied. You look, wow. She said dropping her reports to the floor like they did not matter. She touched her shirt and spun around, how do I look? Beautiful as always, Naruto said giving the girl a lady killer smile that made the girl blush at the simple compliment. Jiraiya on the other hand was singing in pure happiness seeing how well Naruto was handling Sakura. The old Naruto would have just insulted her. However, this one made her blush. This meant one thing for the Sanin, gold mine. Naruto stood up and looked back at Tsunade. Well I believe we have already discussed everything. I will see you tomorrow Hokage-sama. Naruto said and disappeared in flash of yellow. Tsunade blinked and blinked again. Damn Jiraiya. You forgot to ask him about that. Jiraiya smiled, I will go and ask him now. If he disappeared like that then he is off to his house. I will see you later Haim, the self-proclaimed super pervert said jumping out of the window. Sakura looked at her master forgetting that she had dropped the report she wanted Tsunade to sign on the floor. Tsunade-sama, was that really Naruto? She asked. That Naruto was very different from the one she knew. Still, she was glad that he had changed. Yes Sakura that was Naruto, Tsunade replied looking straight at her student he really has changed. Tsunade sighed rubbing her temples. Yes Sakura you have already told him that. I have. She sort of like questioned herself like that conversation earlier with Naruto had not happened. Sakura, Tsunade called snapping Sakura out of her thoughts. Aren't you forgetting something? Huh? Tsunade moved her eyes down on the floor. Seeing that Sakura was not getting her, she moved her fingers and pointed at the papers. Sakura looked at them and flushed in embarrassment. I forgot about them, she said leaning down to pick up the papers. This are the reports you had me prepare yesterday so you could approve, 
she said handing over Tsunade the papers. Great. More paperwork. Tsunade yelled inside her head at the work Sakura was giving her. Well at least this was from the hospital. She cared too much for the hospital to avoid its work. She did not have much work to do anymore since Sakura and Shizun did most of the work. Tsunade took the paperwork and placed it aside. She first had to finish some of the paperwork her receptionist had brought her. Where is Shizun? She had a night shift at the hospital. Did not she tell you that yesterday? Tsunade sighed. Shizun had told her yesterday that she was going to take a night shift at the hospital. Sometimes when Shizun took a night shift she would often come at the office in the morning to check if things were in order then go home to sleep. I guess she had a lot more work to do last night she thought. Without Shizun, she would not have anyone to dump on her work. Tsunade-sama, Sakura said causing Tsunade to look at her. Now that Naruto is back, will Team 7 be formed again? I mean all the team members are present in the village. In addition, you did say that Sasuke-kun sometimes takes missions with Kakashi-sensei. Tsunade sighed for the hundredth time since she woke up. I don't know Sakura, she said honestly. It depends on Naruto. After what happened between him and Sasuke, I don't think he will want to be on the same team with Sasuke. But I will ask him tomorrow about it. In the topic of Sasuke, Naruto had never brought up his name since he returned. It was like he was not even concerned about Sasuke. It was like he did not care for the Uchiha. Oh. Sakura breathed out. She knew that when Naruto left for his training he was not in the most of happy person. In fact he was somewhat scary to look at because Sasuke had almost killed him. Of course, she did not believe it at first when she was told that Sasuke had attempted and almost succeeded in killing Naruto. But when showed evidence she believed it. Still, she could not understand why Sasuke would do something like that to Naruto. He might have been loud and annoying. But he was their friend and teammate. Naruto was the only friend that Sasuke had. Regardless, she still naively believed that things would go back to the way they were before the Sasuke retrieval mission. She wanted Team 7 to be back to together again, so they could be a family again. Sakura it might be hard for you to understand but at least try to see things in Naruto's point of view, Tsunade stated not wanting to give the girl hopes that Team 7 would be reinstated again. Sakura just nodded. Are you going back to the hospital? Tsunade asked changing the subject. Yes, Sakura answered immediately. I have a few patients that I have to see before noon, she said. Tsunade nodded in understanding. Tell the rest of Naruto's friends to be at training ground 7 tomorrow at 10 HOO. What will be happening at my old training ground? It's a surprise, Tsunade said with a small smile. An hour later. After the meeting with Tsunade, Naruto had flashed back to his house to get money for the things he wanted to buy. First, he had went on to buy the furniture he wanted. He was surprised to see that shop owners were actually smiling at him while he bought the things he wanted. Once he bought his things, he had given them the directions to his house, so they could deliver his things. Some of the things had to be added some custom things he wanted so it would take a few hours for them to finish. Nevertheless, at noon they said they would bring him his furniture. Naruto appeared in front of the Yamanaka flower shop. He used the roofs and his own advanced shunshine that was similar to the one Anbu used to travel and teleport himself to places. He wanted to avoid meeting some of his friends today when necessary before tomorrow. He had planned to see them today, but since Tsunade had planned other things. He would see them tomorrow since he had no doubt they would be at the training ground. Naruto opened the doors to the flower shop walked over to the flowers without consulting anyone at the counter. He did not even notice who was behind the counter. Hello. A voice Naruto recognized very well called. Can I help you? Naruto turned around and looked at the blonde-haired girl behind the counter. Ino stared at him with wide eyes upon seeing his face. He was so, wow. She wanted to squeak just by looking at those deep blue eyes that stared at hers. And Naruto? Ino, Naruto said walking over to the girl. Is it really you? Yes, Naruto replied keeping his impassive expression, he had been so proud during his time with Itachi. Ino got away from the counter and went on to stand in front of him. Her eyes were ogling him from toe to head. My Naruto, you look wonderful she said slyly. Well expect Ino to be subtle and she will give you just that. She was straightforward and was not ashamed of her behavior. In fact, she seemed proud of it because it was who it was. Naruto looked at the girl studying her. She certainly has grown well and her body was well developed more womanly. She dwarfed Sakura with her chest. In terms of looks she was just as beautiful. Naruto shoved his thoughts at the back of his head. During his time with Itachi he never had these kind of thoughts. 
perhaps it was because there was a lack of females at the hideout. At the hideout, he even rarely smiled. However, ever since he returned he had been smiling more often. Nevertheless, he knew that the smiles would disappear soon and replaced by a bored look. When did you return? How was? Naruto cut her off. One question at a time Ino, Naruto said. I returned yesterday. And you did not tell your friends that you returned. We missed you so much, you know. I had important matters to deal with, Naruto replied. Ino nodded. I'm amazed. It's not just your appearance that has changed, but your attitude as well. I never thought that you would change. Unexpected things occur every time, Naruto responded. What are you doing here anyway? I did not think that you liked flowers. Ino said happily. You did not know me, Naruto said. I want to buy some flowers for my garden. You have a garden? Yes. Where? As far as I know you live in an apartment, Ino said. That was indeed a surprise to her. She did not take Naruto as the kind to be taking care of a garden. At my house, Naruto replied not hiding that he was now living inside his inherited house. Wow. You have your own house? Ino asked greatly surprised by what Naruto had just said. Yes, Naruto replied. Ino was questioning him a lot. Not that he had anything to hide, he just had come to order the flowers then go back to his house. Okay, what kind of flowers do you want? Naruto listed everything he wanted, from annuals, bulbs, roses, perennials, herbs, and vines. One particular tree that he liked was showed in a poster. A redbud tree. The tree was beautiful. Naruto wanted it on his garden. The flowers Naruto wanted amazed Ino. He did truly know what he wanted in his garden. Thinking of it, she really wanted to see it. Anyone who liked flowers had to be her friend, especially if it was a hot guy like Naruto. Naruto handed the money his flowers cost. Some of the things you bought here are not in the flower shop but at our garden. I will have to get them there. Ino said. It's alright, Naruto said. Pen and paper, he said. Ino gave him what he requested. Naruto wrote something on the paper then handed it back to Ino. What is it? Directions to my house. You will have to deliver them. Okay, Ino said rather happily that she should have been. With that Naruto walked away from the flower shop without another word. Ino just stared at his retrieving figure with her head resting on her hand. After Naruto stepped out of the flower shop, he took the roofs and headed back home. Naruto's house. Jiraiya had been waiting for Naruto for a few minutes now. Since he left Tsunade's office he had said he was coming here but he had taken a little detour to the hot springs. Unfortunately, there was no one as it was still morning. He was utterly saddened by that. He got no material for his next book. It was not acceptable. But there was nothing he could do about it. He could not drag women from their homes and force them to play in the hot springs while he watched. Perhaps he could have Naruto used that sexy jutsu for him. Yap that would definitely do since the hot and exotic blonde-haired women Naruto was able to make had knocked him a few times. He doubted the blonde would do it for him anyway. He sensed Naruto at the entrance of the house and left the study to the entrance. Jiraiya, that is just wrong, no matter your relationship with a person you don't enter their houses and wander around while they are not around, Naruto stated as he entered the house. He sensed the sanin upon arriving at the house. Come one Naruto, I have been coming in and out of this house before you were even born. Yes, my parents allowed you to enter the house. But now the house is owned by me. I am forbidding you to enter my house when I am not in, Naruto said. If you ignore that you will regret it. Now that was just wrong. Not the words themselves. But the way Naruto said them and the little smile he had on his face. It sounded like Orochimaru had spoken those words. That was never a comfort to anyone. Therefore, Jiraiya nodded. So then, what is it? I thought everything had been discussed. Naruto said going to the sitting room. Jiraiya followed him. Yes, well there was something we forgot to ask you. What is it? Twice since you have returned, you have disappeared from Tsunade's office in a yellow flash. I don't understand your question. Did you learn your father's most prized jutsu? Naruto stared at Jiraiya for a moment before replying. Yes. When? How did you even get your hands on it? Entrance to the house was strictly forbidden unless given permission by the Hokage. Are you expecting me to answer you Jiraiya? Naruto asked calmly. Yes, I am curious. No. Huh? I won't answer your question, Naruto stated standing up. Jiraiya gritted his teeth at the lack of answers. There was no doubt, the person who told Naruto of his heritage also trained him and sneak in the house to take the scrolls. 
that person was either a former Anbu of the village or someone else who was privileged to s rank secrets of the village. He had thought of a certain name but he had shrugged it off as the odds were against it. Fine, he said in a defeated tone. He liked the old Naruto much better than this one. He followed Naruto outside the house through the back door. Naruto smiled at the work his clones had done. The grass was just cut and the wheat had been rooted off his green grass. Added with some flowers, the garden will be very much beautiful. You have done well to put the house back to perfect condition, Jiraiya commented. Ramen stand. It was just past noon and Naruto had decided to get something at the ramen stand. He had missed the sweet taste of Ikaraku ramen. Itachi had never allowed him to eat any, he never even bought any each time he went away to get food for them to eat. Other foods Naruto was allowed as Itachi said they were good for his body and overall grown. Itachi had reminded him that he was shorter than any of his age group friends. Naruto had admitted that ramen did not give him the nutrients that other healthy food would give him. Healthy food that were rich in nutrients was also good for him on his training. To be able to recover quickly and keep a healthy body, he needed to eat healthy food. He could not always depend of the QB to deal with healing his body. The QB also could not give him the nutrients that his body needed. He could only get them from food that he ate. And so he had gone for three years without eating a single noodle of ramen. Ino had already delivered the flowers he wanted. He kept them safe and watered. He would plant them at night or tomorrow morning. It would depend on whether he had time today. If not, tomorrow before training ground 7 he would plant them. Eno had insisted on getting to see the inside of his house. Luckily, there was no portrait of his parents in the sitting room and kitchen the only place he had showed Eno. If Eno were to know that his father was the Yondaime Hokage, the whole of Konoha would be aware of it by the end of the day. He girl did not know when to keep her mouth shut after hearing something that other people did not know. Naruto arrived at the ramen stand and took his sit. Hello Ayame, he greeted to the woman who was attending another customer. Ayame took notice of Naruto and rushed over to him. Naruto, is that really you? Yes, Naruto responded. The moment the yes left his mouth, Ayame jumped the counter and threw herself at Naruto. She hit him making him fall off his chair. She had more power than Naruto had anticipated. Both crashed at the ground with Ayame sitting on top of Naruto. I have missed you so much Naruto she said happily with no intentions to get off him as she had yet to realize that she was on top of him. I missed you too Ayame, Naruto said. Not that I have a problem with you sitting on top of me, but I'm really uncomfortable. Naruto stated looking at Ayame's eyes. Ayame took notice that she was indeed on top of Naruto and he was uncomfortable, as he had hit the ground awkwardly. She blushed slightly and hit Naruto on his shoulder for his comment before getting off him. She stalked off to the back of the counter. Naruto stood up and dusted himself before sitting down again. When did you come back? Ayame asked looking at Naruto happily. Yesterday, Naruto responded. How are you and how was the three years for you? I'm well. The three years were quite pleasant and satisfactory, Naruto replied. How about you? I'm well. It just was never been the same without you around. Your disappearance was quickly noted the second or perhaps the day you left. I would imagine so given my character those days, Naruto responded with a smile. Those days, he was very loud and would be going around the streets of Konoha shouting something to anyone. He was not very quiet and his orange made it easy for people to recognize him without mistake or a second look. Father! Ayame shouted. Come here there is someone I want you to see. A second later Tucci appeared behind the counter. He still held a spoon on his hand. It was clear that he was cooking something before Ayame decided to call him. What is it Ayame? He asked. Ayame pointed at Naruto. Tuchi looked at Naruto and then smiled softly. Naruto my boy you have returned, he said. Yes, Naruto responded with a smile of his own. How have you been Tuchi-san? Good, good. I must say, I'm happy to see back in one piece and looking to be in perfect condition, Tuchi said. The Ikaraku had been like his family seeing that they provided for him and were the only people who allowed him to eat without overcharging him and just kicking him out of their shops. They sometimes even allowed him to eat without money to pay for his food. He was very grateful for them and what they have done for his life. How has business been? Naruto asked whether the ramen stand was still making profit or not. Tuchi smiled pleasantly. Good, he said. If it wasn't we would not have opened now would have we? Even if you just to open for you number one customer? Naruto asked. Tucci chuckled slightly. If the bar was closed I would open any time for my favorite customer, he said. Naruto smiled, can I have one bowl of miso ramen, he said getting his order. 
Ayame nodded and went back to the kitchen along with her father who went back to cooking what he had been cooking before Ayame called him. Naruto did not have to wait for too long to get his ramen. He ate it surprisingly slowly and savoring it. Ayame was really surprised to see Naruto eat with proper manners. She was even more surprised when Naruto said only a single bowl was enough. No it's free for today since I have missed you, Ayame said refusing to take Naruto's money. Please Ayame, I have already ate much more from you guys for free. At least now that I have money allow me to pay for my meals, Naruto said trying to convince Ayame to take his money. He did not want the Ikaraku to suffer on their income because he was eating from them for free. No, as I said the meal was for free. Naruto sighed and pocketed the money. Perhaps when he was still young he would have gladly accepted the free ramen because money at that time was scarce. He also did not understand what it meant for the Ikaraku when they gave him free food. Well the girl was not going to budge, he could at least be grateful. Well, thanks anyway, Naruto finally said. I will see you around Ayame, with that he disappeared from the ramen stand. Ayame blinked one, twice and then shrugged before going to the kitchen to help her father with kitchen duties. Later that day. After Naruto had left the ramen stand, he had gone home and went straight to the study to continue with his book. He spent hours writing it. Then he was interrupted, to be precise his own thoughts interrupted him. He had remembered the time Jiraiya had been refusing to train him saying he had to do research for his next book. Naruto had worked the whole night writing the next book to the Icha Icha series. Jiraiya had been devastated upon learning what Naruto had done. More shocked when a courier took the notes and delivered them to a feudal lord of another country. Naruto was surprised when the feudal lord actually giggled perversely after reading the first page of his script. At that time he had just thought he could write well as much as Jiraiya could. Perhaps he is indeed right. He was only 12 at that time and he was able to write staff that Jiraiya needed to peek on women to write. He wrote it without peeking. That spoke much about his own thoughts and imaginations. Unable to continue with his book, Naruto had decided to visit to Forest of Death to blow off some steam. Naruto stood in the middle of the forest after having made sure that he had created enough distance between him and Konoha. He did not want anyone eavesdropping while he blew off some steam. Wind style, wind god technique. He created a giant tornado, which spun towards the trees. The giant tornado moved towards the trees and began to uproot a number of trees in its path with its ferocity. The jutsu continued to cause destruction on its path before dying down and leaving only its destruction behind. Naruto formed more hand signs for his next jutsu. Wind style, divine down current. Naruto created a vortex of wind and blasted it towards the trees. The jutsu successfully destroyed its helpless targets within seconds. Naruto set more hand seals. Wind style, vacuum wind barrage. He took a deep breath and exhaled several wind blades. He shot them at different angles by rapidly moving his head towards different directions. The wind blades Naruto shot hit the trees cutting them from different directions. When Naruto stopped his jutsu, the trees around him were cut down by the jutsu. A seal-less clone appeared next to Naruto. It jumped away from creating some distance between them. Just as it was about to take action Naruto sensed something. His clone also sensed it and disappeared in a puff of smoke. Naruto tilted his head sideways as a kunai came flying towards his head. He caught it rather easily in the middle of his fingers. He then flicked it and gripped it tightly. He spun around swiftly and threw the kunai at a rather fast speed. The target managed to avoid being hit by the kunai. But she was surprised when she felt a cut on her right cheek even though the kunai missed her. She ran her finger horizontally on the cheek and brought it in front on her. She smiled in a wrong way and leaked her blood. Naruto recognized the woman, ah the sexy mistress Anko Mitarashi, Naruto said impassively looking at the woman. Anko jumped down from where she stood and walked in a way that could be called seductive towards Naruto. She stopped just a few inches from him before a snake shot out of her sleeve and wrapped itself around Naruto. And who might you be? You don't remember me? You did the same thing I just did to you three years ago to me at the Chunin exams. It clicked on Anko. She could see that he looked like the Yondaime, but the guy was dead. So the thought of he being him never crossed her mind. Wait. You are that Gaki? Anko said in disbelief. Naruto just nodded. Do you mind telling me why you are interrupting my session? Anko shrugged. This is my forest and usually nobody comes here so I was surprised when I sensed someone harming my home. And voila look at what I found. Naruto sighed. He had now lost all the drive blow off some steam. Anko leaned to his ear. What do you say we play a game of tag handsome? Naruto pushed Anko away from him. And grabbed the snake he had been ignoring before throwing it to Anko. 
Sorry no can do, he said and disappeared in yellow flash. Anko blinked multiple times. Damn that brat. He ran away from me. She gained a mischievous grin on her face. Well I like them when they run away, she said. Her snake hissed seemingly agreeing with her. A pity she never found him. Chapter 6 By the time the sun took over its shift as day had become, Naruto was already awake. Whether with much or little to do, over the past years he had become used to waking up early. During those younger days, waking up early in the morning was not his favorite thing. He downright hated it. Especially when the sun bothered you while you were still enjoying the warmth the bed gave. Sleep in the morning was always enjoyable. But what is gain for spending too much time in sleep? Nothing. For a shinobi, waking up early has to be a daily thing. Except for one of those days where you have to rest your body from everyday activities. There are so much things and tasks to complete for a shinobi. Sleeping too much only delays the completion of tasks. But that did not mean that one did not have to rest. No, the body and mind needed rest each day. Without rest, the body can never function at its full capabilities. It is always important to sleep the normal hours needed for the body, mind to rest, and recharge. Despite often waking up before others, Naruto always slept the hours that were enough for his body to rest. Everybody was different, hours needed for the body to rest were different. With him, he knew that his body needed only few hours as the QB always refreshed his body of whatever stress it endured. His mind was what always needed. He might not be a genius like the Nara, but his mind worked overtime more than the Nara. He worked of complex things that even the smartest of the shadow users cannot hope to decipher. That was why he was proud of his mind and why he always gave it much needed rest. It computed everything he did. Without the mind, his body would not function. After planting the flowers in his garden, Naruto set up the sprinklers and allowed the water to joyfully dance on his grass. The grass would be pleased with the service. Happy grass, meant a beautiful garden for him. He went upstairs to take a shower. He would need to before going to the study. He was dirty with mud from his plantation. Today he had rested his clones. They had done much with the garden. He could do the final additions without much trouble. Naruto dropped off his dirty clothes leaving him with nothing put on his skin, not even boxers. He stepped into the shower and opened the cold water that dropped to his body like cold ice blocks. He did not mind the cold, though. Cold water was what he needed to refresh his body. He ran his right hand on his hair, removing any unwanted dirt from his beautiful hair. Today he would be seeing all his friends. It had been long since he saw all of them. They would certainly be happy to see him again. He was the one that always made them laugh and sort of like the light on Konoha 12. A pity that was never to be the case again. Most of them would be mostly annoying. He doubted that Kiba would have changed. He was annoying than anyone. One would call Lee annoying, but that was who he was. Many might ridicule him for his attitude, but it is his attitude that makes him strong. It is his attitude that makes him strive to become better than anyone in terms of taijutsu. Naruto admired that. Perhaps one person he would see differently would be Neji. The Hyuga prodigy might have been a stuck-up Hyuga, but after he had beat him up at the Chunin exams, he had seen him try to change. His previous mentality would have gotten him killed sooner. He underestimated everyone who he deemed below him. But that was settled when he showed the Hyuga that everyone created their own fate. Another life he changed. He did not expect the others to have changed that much. Sakura and Ino still looked like they had their fangirlish attitude which was honestly annoying. Both girls were beautiful, but their attitudes had much fixing to do. After the shower, Naruto got into his gear. He left the chest plate armor, sword and cloak as he was not moving out yet. He still had to visit the study to do more work on his book and study a little more about barriers. Training Ground 7 The god I'm Hokage, Senju Tsunade was tapping the ground with her right foot impatiently as she waited for Naruto to appear. Everybody else was present, except for Naruto. But it was just 9.45 and she had said for Naruto be at the training ground at 10. Be patient Haim, he will come, Jiraiya said trying to calm the blonde Hokage. Her actions were making the others uncomfortable. He better, or we'll make sure he spends a month in the hospital wrapped in bandages like a mummy. Jiraiya became quiet knowing that Tsunade would not calm down until Naruto appeared. Well, even Kakashi had appeared before 10, right now he was already at the training ground with his famous bored expression. He really wished Tsunade would learn to be patient. It was not even the time she had said for the blonde to come. The other members of the Konoha 12 who were at the training ground did not know why they had been called. Some did not even know that he had returned except for Sakura and Ino, who had already encountered him. One in particular had a good idea why they were called. 
Sakura being a good girl had only informed them that Tsunade wanted them here at 10. She did not tell them that Naruto had returned. Surprises were good after all. Amongst the group were Yuhi Kurenai, Jaun and Sensei of Team 8, Asuma Sarutobi, Jaun and Sensei of Team 10 and Mike Guy, the Jaun and Sense of Team Guy. Of all the Jaunins Kurenai and Kakashi were the ones who knew that Naruto had returned. Kurenai had also forgotten to tell Hinata that Naruto had returned. Perhaps she had done it intentionally. If Naruto had not made his return known to his friends then it was not her place to tell. Even the Hokage had not told them. 1000 AM. Tsunade was about to have someone get Naruto when the blonde appeared in front of the group. Like he had been doing, he just appeared, no puff of smoke, no swirl of leaves. Naruto stood in all his glory with the wearing his full gear and sword strapped on his back. He turned to face the group. About time you the voices of Naruto's friends cut Tsunade off before she could say anything. Naruto? Naruto took his time to look at the group. Kiba still looked the same, Neji seemed somewhat different and, Kuji and Shikamaru still looked the same. Shino was looking stoic as always. The females had just grown, physically. He did not know much about their mindset though. Is that really Naruto? Asuma asked finding it hard to believe that the former loudmouthed brat was the young man standing in front of them. Yes, that is him, Kurenai said. I saw him the day he returned. Yosh, he looks youthful, Guy said. Kakashi remained quiet as if he was not interested in anything. That was not the case though. He was very much interested. He wanted to see how strong Naruto had become. Is that really you Naruto? Kiba asked. Naruto nodded. Before he could say anything Tsunade spoke. The reunion will be for later, she said firmly. Right now we need to get on to why I called everyone here, she said. Naruto looked at the Hokage, his face no longer adopting the small smiles he had been carrying since he returned. Who will it be, Jiraiya or Kakashi? There was no other person Tsunade would have him fight to test his strength since she knew that the two were the only ones who could test him in all areas. Sakura get ready, Tsunade said. You want me to participate too? Yes, your former sensei and teammate have to see how far you have progressed with your own training. Naruto raised his brow seeing Sakura smile at the opportunity. Could not you have done that another day before this? He asked the blonde Hokage. What was that? Tsunade asked with narrowed eyes. There seemed to be an underlying threat between her words. Apparently, Naruto was oblivious to it or he just did not fear the threat. I believe you could have done it another day. And you have her reports. So I don't see the point in having her fight. The others just looked at Naruto. Some had the same train of thoughts with him, but neither were willing to voice it out. They still liked their bodies as they were. Jiraiya was willing to voice his own thoughts, he does have a point Haim, he earned a glare from Tsunade. Plus if we really want to see how far Naruto has progressed with his training we should have him fight one on one. Jiraiya wanted to fight the blonde himself, but Tsunade said he was overestimating Naruto's abilities if he thought he could handle a Sanin. Even if he could not handle him, fighting someone far stronger than him will force him to use everything he has to win. However, Tsunade failed to see the logic in that, despite having explained it to her abundantly. Who trained her anyway? Naruto asked quietly. The rest of the Konoha 12 just watched. They were seeing the new Naruto. He had definitely changed. His tone was calm and relaxed. No more were the goofy smiles. In fact, ever since he appeared, the only time he seemed to smile was when he looked at them. However, when he turned to Tsunade the small smile disappeared and was replaced by an expression that gave away nothing. Tsunade-sama did, Sakura replied feeling left out of the conversation. She was a little disappointed that Naruto was against the idea of having her participate in the fight. She wanted to show everyone what she had been doing over the past three years. No doubt she turned you into her copy like Guy did with Lee. Shinobi skills speaking of, that is, Naruto stated looking at Sakura. Both also had quick tempers. They could be quite a pair. Did he just say that? Were the thoughts that ran through the minds of those observing. You could have been like me too, Jiraiya thought sadly looking at Naruto. He would have turned Naruto into the next author of Icha Icha Paradise had he not run away from him. What is that supposed to mean Naruto? Tsunade asked. There seemed to be some danger within her words. But again, either Naruto missed it or just ignored, nobody knew as he answered. If Gai-san took an apprentice, you assume that the apprentice will be a taijutsu master, if Kurenai-san did the same, her student will be a genjutsu master. With Kakashi, you can't say because he would not bother, jaws dropped at those last words. Kakashi decided not to comment. 
It appears that his former student has a low opinion of him. Asuma san, I don't know since I know not his area of expertise. With Jiraiya, it is somewhere along the lines of toads and pervert. Is it just me or is there something wrong with his picture? Kiba said. Naruto should not be speaking like that. Apparently, Kiba had only noticed that Naruto had changed. Akamaru barked, whether agreeing or disagreeing with his master, only Kiba could tell. Troublesome, Shikamaru said, ignoring Kiba's words like everyone else. He did make an accurate assessment though. Sakura as Tsunade Sama's apprentice should specialize in areas her master specializes because that is all she can teach her. In this case, Sakura has become good in medical ninjutsu like her master and has taken her master's way of fighting. As Naruto put it, her copy. That was spot on. Indeed Tsunade had taught Sakura medical ninjutsu and how to use her chakra enhanced punch as nothing else. Tsunade sighed. A thought came at her mind and she smirked. Naruto I had planned to have you fight Kakashi, but I have changed my mind. You will fight Jiraiya, she was still smirking as she said those words. She wanted to see Jiraiya pummel him to the ground for his loud mouth. Jiraiya smiled at this. He had been looking for this ever since Tsunade planned to have Naruto fight someone to see his strength. Kakashi decided to interject, Tsunade-sama, don't you think that that is a bit too much for Naruto? Are you questioning my decision Kakashi? Tsunade asked with narrowed eyes. Saving himself, Kakashi replied quickly, no. Good, get ready Naruto, Jiraiya. Naruto removed his cloak and handed it to Tsunade who placed it on her shoulder. I want to see everything you can do, Tsunade said to Naruto just to make him understand that he was to show everything he learned. I will give you what you need to judge my skills, Naruto stated moving towards Jiraiya. The perverted Sanin was waiting patiently for him. Is this really serious, someone said. Is he going to fight a Sanin? I mean Jiraiya-sama is the strongest in the village. Just shut up and watch the battle. Naruto-kun, he not a thought as she watched her beloved crush going into a battle with a Sanin. She had quite frankly missed him so much. Three years three long years and she had not seen his smile that always brought bliss to her fragile heart. How happy was she to see that he had returned. And also he looked rather handsome. The thoughts turned her face bright red as she struggled to contain the steam that was surely trying to escape. Naruto-kun is full of youthful flames. Taking on the strongest in the village. If he wins I shall make him my eternal rival. Lee yelled enthusiastically not having the same train of thoughts as those who thought that match was unfair to Naruto. Lee thought no wrong in taking on the strongest to prove yourself. That's the spirit Lee. Guy said with his nice guy pose. The others decided to ignore the two and focus on the fight that was to happen. Naruto looked at his former sensei with an unreadable expression. It was always important to hide your thoughts to your opponent. If you allow your opponent to read your thoughts they can able to use them against and could easily predict your movements. The pervert was looking at him calmly as if he was not to fight him. Jiraiya was busy trying to figure out what the blonde might have learned other than Kenjutsu. He could not carry a sword around without having the skills to wield it. He knew that with someone like Naruto, he had to expect ninjutsu flying towards him because of his chakra reserves, that is if he had learned to make good use to it. Jiraiya, if you don't take this seriously, it will be a humiliating defeat for you, Naruto said his tone blank not betraying the impassive expression on his face. Jiraiya scoffed, like a brat like you can humiliate the great. While Jiraiya was still doing his pose, Naruto summoned a kunai from a tattoo on his left arm. He coated it with wind chakra and threw it towards Jiraiya at tremendous speed. The kunai interrupted Jiraiya's pose as the Sanin barely evaded the kunai. He was surprised though when he saw part of his hair falling down the ground. The kunai Naruto had thrown went towards the trees and pierced through it before marching forwards to another. This shocked some as they had never seen a kunai do that. Asuma being a wind user had an idea of what Naruto did but he did not voice his thoughts. Jiraiya looked at Naruto. Being an experienced shinobi as he was, he was able to deduce what Naruto had done, wind chakra enhanced kunai, he said his eyes never leaving the blonde. If that had not come dangerously close to spilling his brains out he would have been complaining about being interrupted while doing his pose. If I had not dodged that kunai it would have killed me, he said the playfulness in his tone gone. The words shocked the observers. Would Naruto actually go for the kill? Even if it was just a sparring match to test his skill. Then you are lucky you dodged it. I should not be the one to teach you shinobi rules Jiraiya sensei. You took your eyes of me. That is something that is taught at the academy, never take your eyes off your opponent, Naruto said educating his former sensei. Haim had not said we could begin, Jiraiya said feeling a bit insulted because Naruto was trying to teach him something that he should be teaching the blonde. You know it as well as I do, 
that in a battle there are no proctors. Shinobi do not fight fair. We use everything to our advantage. Those with honor are the few ones who fight fairly, Naruto paused for a moment. Now Jiraiya, will we get this little show started? Tsunade now was seeing something different. The Naruto she had seen over the past two days was calm and reserved but he was not like what she was seeing now. He still had that kind and peaceful aura around him the past two days, but now there was nothing. Not a damn thing. He was just unreadable. She could not predict what he would say next or do next. He calls it a little show and yet he seemed to be taking it seriously, someone thought looking at the blonde-haired Namikaze. You can begin any time, I don't have all day here, Tsunade said impatiently at the two former sensei and student. Jiraiya got into a stance while Naruto did nothing. Aren't you going take your stance, Jiraiya said looking at Naruto who stood like he was not about to fight. This is my stance, was the reply Jiraiya got from Naruto. Simply nodding, Jiraiya waited for Naruto to attack. But Naruto did nothing, he just stared at him. He saw that he was not going to attack him. So he decided to take the first dance. As soon as Jiraiya moved, Naruto did the same surprising the Sanin at how quickly Naruto was able to follow his movements. He had not moved at full speed, but still surprised that Naruto could still react that fast to his movements. It had only been a second since he moved and Naruto was coming towards as he was going after the blonde. They met in between from their previous positions. Jiraiya swung his left hand for a punch at Naruto's temple. The blonde was fast and able to see Jiraiya's attack, thus able to block. He moved his right hand and positioned it at his right hand side. Jiraiya's punch collided with his well put defense and came to a halt. Jiraiya again, swung his right hand towards Naruto's temple. The same as before happened. Naruto blocked the punch with his left hand. Before Jiraiya could do anything else, Naruto pushed Jiraiya's right hand away forcibly. This gave him an opening he needed. He went for a headbutt at the Sanin. Jiraiya was not a Sanin for nothing. As Naruto's head was coming towards him, he leaned back. Balancing himself carefully before Naruto could react from missing his target, he moved his right leg in an attempt to kick Naruto on his face while he, Jiraiya, was still in a leaned back position. He placed much power he could on the kick. Naruto quickly brought both his hands in front of him to make a hasty defense. He wanted to block Jiraiya's kick which would have definitely hurt his precious face had he not blocked it. The power of the punch pushed him backwards forcing him to lose his footing. As he was about to hit the ground, Naruto used his hands as balance, so the rest of his body would not hit the ground. Naruto's middle body was positioned horizontally while both his legs and legs supporting it. He was like a four-legged animal, juts facing upwards. Jiraiya took advantage of the situation and moved towards a round. He jumped a few feet up in the air and attempted to punch Naruto on his chest. Naruto used his hands the way he should be using his legs. He raised both his feet and crossed them to put up a defense. The defense was successful in blocking Jiraiya's punch. The force behind it caused small cracks on the ground where Naruto's hands were positioned. The Sanin jumped away from Naruto, allowing him to recover. Wow, mostly watching could only say the single word. You have improved, Jiraiya said. Naruto said nothing. That was to be expected if someone had taken time to train. Jiraiya was speaking as if he had not expected him to change. You don't train to remain the same, but train to become stronger. He had taken much of his time to train so that he may improve from where he was in terms of skill. He shot towards the Sanin and low down in speed. Jiraiya did the same running towards Naruto. The Sanin was the first to attempt an attack. He sped his right hand for a right hook. Naruto ducked under the punch. While he was ducking, he held out his right hand and formed a spiral ball on his hand. It was just as big as his hand. Very, very small for a Rasengan, shit, Jiraiya cursed. That was fast, he thought. Naruto crashed the Rasengan on Jiraiya's gut. The Sanin disappeared in a puff of smoke. Naruto stood still narrowing his eyes at the nearby trees. A second later Jiraiya jumped out of the tree he had observing his clone watched Naruto from. He looked at Naruto for a moment. The speed in which Naruto created that Rasengan was impressive. Even for a smaller version of the jutsu, it was impressive. Even he could not form the jutsu in the seconds Naruto took to do it. It must have been one second or less. If he could do a smaller version of the Rasengan in that time, how fast could he do the normal version? How did you know it was a clone? He doubted that Naruto would have hit him with a Rasengan without knowing he was a clone. If it had been the real him he would been put out of commission by the hit. There are four things, Naruto begun. First, I'm not stupid enough to think that you would fight me head on at first without gauging the strength by a clone. It's the same tactic Kakashi uses. 
It is also obvious that you underestimate me. You obviously thought that a mere clone could do a little damage, well that was what Jiraiya had thought. He was a Sanin, and his clone could defeat a Chunin. He was surprised though, that Naruto defeated his clone easily without receiving any hit. Second, you cannot fool me by a jutsu it took me an hour to learn, and execute perfectly, despite the words being said impassively, Jiraiya had a feeling that Naruto was not pleased with the fact that he had used a clone to fight him and that he tried to fool him with it. Third, the Hyugas had their dujutsus activated. I caught their eye movements. In addition, Kakashi, Hokage-sama had already sensed you. Fourth, I was watching you. The moment those words left Naruto's mouth, shurikens flew towards Jiraiya. The Sanin looked behind him from the trees and looked at wave of shurikens flying towards him. He cursed. The shurikens hit Jiraiya dead on piercing him. But Jiraiya turned into a log in a puff of smoke. The log revealed that the Sanin had used a replacement jutsu in the last minute. Jiraiya landed on a tree branch after replacing himself with a log. But before he could even sigh in relief another wave of shurikens came flying towards him. He cursed again and blurred away from the tree getting away from the projectile's path. He appeared on the clearing his clone had been fighting Naruto. Just then he sensed something coming at him, fast. He did not have time to turn out as the projectile flew past him. He doubted that Naruto had missed him unless. His train of thoughts was stopped when he heard an explosion of smoke. Naruto appeared in the smoke, Uzumaki dance, he muttered. Jiraiya saw Naruto sending a flying kick towards his head and hastily brought out both his hands to block the kick. The kick broke through his defense and should have sent him flying. But before he could, he received another kick on his back. The Sanin again felt another hard kick on his gut which made him wince. Before he could do anything again, his legs got swept and he lost his footing. As he was about to hit the ground on his front, Naruto appeared under Jiraiya and delivered a hard kick on his chest that broke a rib sending the Sanin into the air. All this happened in a seconds. The group observing only saw black blurs around a helpless Jiraiya. Guy knew that it must have been some sort of taijutsu, even though he had never seen it before. Kakashi did not even have time to lift his forehead protector. Naruto appeared above Jiraiya in air. His right leg moved in speeds that not even the Sharingan could track. His kicks formed air pressures that were enhanced by his manipulation of wind. The air pressures shot towards Jiraiya upon being released. They hit Jiraiya painfully and sent him crashing towards the ground. Naruto flashed through hand seals before raising his right hand, wind hammer. His right hand moved downwards like it was controlling some invincible force. Just then, something heavy hit Jiraiya on the ground. This caused a crater to form where Jiraiya had fallen. The Sanin gave a low growl as he felt like the Hokage Tower was thrown at him. Naruto landed on the ground gracefully before turning away from Jiraiya. He walked towards the group who observing. They noticed the slightly bored and annoyed look on his face. Did Naruto just defeat a Sanin without a scratch? Ino asked in disbelief. No, surprisingly the answer came from Naruto himself as the girl spoke loud enough for him to hear. He should be waking up soon, he said but you held back on the attack that sent him crashing down, Guy pointed out what the others did not see. You noticed, Naruto said. It was not a question. Where are you going Naruto? It will take more than that to defeat me, Jiraiya exclaimed standing up. His body was bruised from head to toe, but mostly from waist to shoulders. His mouth was leaking off some blood. He did not look to be in great deal of pain but he had a few broken ribs caused by Naruto's last jutsu. Naruto narrowed his eyes back at Jiraiya. His eyes locked with Jiraiya's for a moment. He then looked away and continued walking. The group's focus turned to Jiraiya as the perverted Sanin started to let loose a few perverted giggles. His nose started leak of some blood, and his eyes got a dreamy look in them. A second later, a heavy nose bleed and Jiraiya was out cold. When Naruto heard Jiraiya's fall, he spoke, I did not answer your question clearly, he said looking at Ino. The other sweat droped at his actions, lack of rather. He had completely disregarded Jiraiya. Jiraiya was not fighting me seriously. He was at most using 25% of his power. When he stood up for my last attack, it was then that he wanted to become serious. But I had already gotten bored in waiting for him to become serious, he explained earning a nod from Ino and some, though not all understood his words. So Hokage-sama, can I have my cloak back? Tsunade threw the cloak at Naruto who caught it. She then stalked off to an unconscious Jiraiya drawing the other's attention. One would think that she was about to heal him, but, wake up your pervert. She yelled punching the perverted Sanin on his chest. Jiraiya came to quickly and backed away from Tsunade despite being in heavy pain. What the hell happened? 
You were supposed to fight him so I could see what he has learned. And you could not become serious. Heim wait, Jiraiya said holding up both his hands in defense, he used my weakness against me, and I could have still fought after his last attack. Why did you not fight seriously at the beginning? Well, Naruto was not completely serious either, he said defending himself. Huh? He was holding back even with that last attack. He did not even draw out his sword. He explained but that did not save him from Tsunade. She punched him on his face while he was not expecting it. The punch sent him flying away. When he crashed to the ground, he was already unconscious. Naruto, she called to the blonde. Come and see me in my office later on, she said and disappeared in a puff of smoke. What was that last move, guy asked Naruto beating everything from saying anything. Uzumaki dance, I created it, Naruto replied to the green jounin. Seeing that guy wanted more he spoke again. It's a taijutsu technique. To be executed the way I did, it requires speed and wind manipulation. That was most youthful Naruto-kun. You should teach me that technique, Lee exclaimed taking over from his sensei. Lee, I did say that it requires wind manipulation. It took a few moments to fully understand what Naruto meant, and when he did he gave the only response he could, oh. So when did you return Naruto? Shikamaru asked trying not to at least sound bored. Two days ago, Naruto responded calmly looking at the group. He had not noticed it before, Akamaru had now grown quite big since he was last the dog. Huji, Kiba, Neji, Shino, Tenten, Lee, Shikamaru, Hinata, how are you guys? Naruto asked getting back to the skipped greetings. The people Naruto called smiled while others nodded. Hinata smiled slightly and looked away. An eyebrow rose from Naruto seeing the girl look away from him, she still does that? I thought she would have gained some confidence by now, he thought to himself. Hey what about me? Don't you want to know how I am doing? Ino somewhat yelled at the blonde. Ino, I have already seen you in Sakura before, Naruto spoke looking at the girl. Ino just huffed crossing her hands on her chest. Hey guys why don't we all go out today and, it has been long time since we all gathered, Sakura suggested happily. But she became saddened a bit she realized they would not all be gathered since, Sasuke would not come. She had only seen him once or twice in the past six months and all times, he seemed to shrug her off. That's a good idea Sakura. We can meet at the barbecue restaurant at 8, Kuji said happily thinking of the food he would eat with everyone else. This is troublesome. Shikamaru said with a yawn. I will see you tonight then, he said walking away not before sending a last glance at Naruto. The others waved at Naruto goodbye. Hinata looked to have something to say but she quickly hurried away as soon as she locked her eyes with Naruto making the blonde sigh and shake his head. He noticed that Sakura was still waiting, hey Naruto, do you want to get some ramen? She asked with a small smile. If Naruto was surprised he hit it too well, some other time Sakura, he politely turned her down. Sakura then noticed the lack of Chan when Naruto called her. She had missed it yesterday when Naruto called her name. Oh, she said her smiling dropping. Some other time then, she said walking away. Naruto turned to the Jounins who had been conversing amongst themselves to give his friends some time to say hello. He looked at where Jiraiya had fallen after being punched by Tsunade. He did not see the pervert anywhere. He figured he must have went away. Yo, Kakashi called snapping Naruto out of his thoughts. Kakashi, Naruto said looking straight at the Jounin. He still had his orange precious on his hand. I see you are still the same, he said. Kakashi merely shrugged his shoulders nonchalantly in response. It said it all about the man. He did not care if he changed or not. He was who he was. You have gotten stronger, he commented. And it took you three days to say that, Naruto said knowing that the copy Nin had known he had returned. The man had watched him for the past days. Once was yesterday while he was at the ramen stand. Kakashi smiled, and scratched the back of his head, Mama Naruto, I was giving you some time to familiarize yourself with the village. He gave another lame excuse. Naruto did not bother to respond he looked at Asuma who was about to say something, Kurenai, he is going to be a lady killer, don't you think? The Genjutsu mistress felt at a loss of words on the question. A few moments later, she nodded. He was indeed a handsome young man. She looked at him carefully and only thought with a nod, indeed. Guy being the only serious jounin spoke next, Naruto you should come and train with me and Lee sometimes, he said. After seeing Naruto's taijutsu, he wanted to train with Naruto. He also saw that Naruto taijutsu was good despite seeing it for a few minutes. Lee would surely learn something, so will Naruto. Sure, 
Naruto agreed with a small smile. This caused the other three Jounin to look at him as if he was crazy. Kakashi got over it quickly, why don't you join us at the Jounin's lounge tonight, Naruto? Now that was a surprise. Yes, it is no doubt that Tsunade-sama will make a a Jounin. Jiraiya-sama might not have been fighting seriously, but you cannot deny that he is skilled. I have other plans tonight, next time perhaps, Naruto stated. Johnny, he said and disappeared into nothingness. He sure has changed a lot, Kurenai commented after Naruto left, earning a nod from her fellow Jounin. What do you think knocked out Jiraiya-sama? It was Genjutsu, Kurenai said. Naruto must have shown him something perverted. You did see how happy he seemed. Kakashi remembered Naruto's infamous Oroki no Jutsu. I wonder what he showed him, Kakashi thought aloud. Afternoon, Hokage office. You wish to see me Hokage-sama, Naruto reported after having an anbu at his home report to him that he was wanted by the Hokage. I thought I told you to come and see, the god I'm Hokage stated looking straight at Naruto. You did, but did not specify at what time, Naruto responded coolly leaving the Hokage to glare at him before sighing. Can you at least tell me what else you trained in? I did not see you anything that satisfied me. Naruto sighed, well it would not hurt to tell her something but not everything. I learned Fuinjutsu, Kenjutsu, Ninjutsu, Genjutsu and also Taijutsu. He paused for a moment. With Ninjutsu I learned Winjutsu. My Fuinjutsu is good, I am better than Jiraiya with that regard. My Kenjutsu and Taijutsu are both good, I would say Jounin level. Ninjutsu is cage level. Tsunade stared, then blinked, is that all true? Naruto said nothing. He merely looked at her blankly. The god I'm Hokage rubbed her temples, you know with what I saw today, I cannot possibly say that you are Jounin level. However, I will take Jiraiya's word for it. He said you deserve the rank. Guy, Kurenai, Asuma and Kakashi all agreed, she paused smiling. So congratulations Naruto, you have now become a Jounin. I am sure that the council will be knocking at my door when they find out about this, but I will handle them. Naruto nodded. Tsunade threw him his Jounin vest. Before you leave Naruto. We have never gotten a chance to be alone since you returned, Tsunade said getting up from her chair. She walked towards Naruto and engulfed him in a warm hug. Naruto was a little surprised by her action, nonetheless, he wrapped his hands embracing her. I missed you Naruto. When Jiraiya told me that you had run away, I became scared. I did not want to think of something bad happening to you because I did not want to lose you too, she said a soft tone. I don't know what I would do if something happened to you. I have lost much in my life, I don't want to lose you too. Naruto smiled warmly embracing the god I'm, I missed you too. But I did what I did for the better. It was not my intention to worry you. I wanted to become strong for my sake, for the sake my cause, and so that I could not feel powerless when those I value are in danger, he paused for a moment. But do not worry. I will never leave without telling you. Promise me, Naruto, Tsunade said breaking the embrace as she looked at Naruto's eyes. Naruto leaned closer to the Hokage and placed a kiss on her forehead before smiling genially at her, I promise, he said letting her go before disappearing. That night. The night had still been young when Naruto actually got bored, but he could not leave his friends. Just for this once he would endure their topics. The group lacked intellectual conversations. It was not wrong to talk about something else that is amusing and doing things for amusement. There was nothing wrong with that. He just preferred conversations that were of good use than for amusement. The night had begun pleasantly well, Naruto was sitting between Hinata and Neji. Everyone in the Konoha 12 had come, all except for Sasuke. The guys no longer considered him as one of them, that was why they had decided to call themselves the Konoha 11. Ino and Sakura were the only ones who seemed to object to that decision. But then again, their thoughts did not seem to matter to the group. They had been Sasuke's fans since from the beginning, it was not surprising that they would object to the thought. Naruto was surprised to find that the main reason the group had decided to remove Sasuke as one of them was because of what Sasuke had done to him. But it did not matter to him since that Sasuke who did it was dead. The Sasuke that existed now was Itachi's brother. The one that died was his friend and brother. Another reason was that not everyone actually liked that spoiled Uchiha. No, that's coloring it. None of the guys liked the Uchiha, they disliked his ass. Because Hinata had been seated close to him, she had a red face most of the night and had passed out once. Naruto had been surprised that she could stay that close to him and only lose her consciousness once. That had been an improvement from her past record. Naruto was mostly asked about his training trip. Everyone was interested in what he had been doing for the past three years. 
they had all looked at him waiting for answers. He was able to give the answers, they wanted to hear. But he was sure to leave out important details. He had told them some things about how hard he trained. Lee had been happy about that part upon hearing about his training methods. While he did tell them minor details about his training, he never told them where and who he was with. Shikamaru had been surprised at the fact that Naruto did not reveal that little detail. Well not entirely surprised. He was the one who did notice that Naruto never said anything about where he was. His other friends were interested in how strong the blonde had become in his change. The last part was nothing new to him though, he was very much aware that Naruto was not stupid. The first hour at the barbecue restaurant was the only good part of the meeting, reunion. Neji happened to have been the only one who made Jounin in the group. The rest were Chunin. Well that changed when Naruto became a Jounin. But that did not change the fact that he had become Jounin faster than anyone in their group. Sasuke was not counted as he was no longer a part of the group. Neji was a Hyuga prodigy that was expected. It was no surprise to Naruto either. Despite his previous mentality, no one could deny that Neji was skilled. He stood high above the other genins, that was what he had become before Naruto came back. He was high above the others. It was not only about his skills, it was also about the way he conducted himself. He was respectable, calm a bit cold. But he had the mentality of a jounin and was a lot more mature than the rest of the group. But now that Naruto had come and was a lot mature than he had been in his Janan days, he was matured in the same league as Neji. Perhaps Naruto understood the shinobi world better than Neji did. Naruto had been made to watch the horrors of war by Itachi. The Uchiha had placed him in a genjutsu and made him see what he saw in his young age during the Third Shinobi World War. He had said it was good for his education and also would help him understand what the world a bit better. And then Naruto became bored. A few noticed that he was bored. The subject was just random staff that Naruto was not the least interested in. Perhaps he could be called her could be called rude, but he could not pretend to be interested in the subject of conversation. He was past that time where he pretended many things. It was then that the topic was changed, the Janan days. Those days of a loud mouth idiot blonde. That had made many laugh recalling the memories. That was a bit not boring. But still not the kind of conversation Naruto would have liked to have. Well at least it did manage to put a smile on his face. Still, he thought he had overgrown the kind of meetings. Perhaps it was what he should have been doing because of his age. He should be enjoying his life while he has the chance. That if he was someone else. He was Namikaze Naruto, a born protector and hero of Konoha. From the day he was born, his life had been changed. He was beyond normal. Perhaps at times he would shower himself with some form of entertainment. But his joy came from seeing those he cares for smiling, happy. That is what would make him proud and happy. Surely anyone would be happy knowing that they have succeeded in protecting what is close to their hearts. Neji come to my house when you are free, Naruto said walking out of the restaurant. The night had already grown old, so it was time for home. Ten Ten had been the first to leave with Lee. Her reason was that she did not want Lee to drink something he should not. If they had stayed any longer, he would have surely drank something and do something disastrous. The others glanced at Naruto curiously. Neji just nodded stoically before walking away with Hinata. The latter seemed not to want to leave, but he insisted that they leave because it was already late. Her father would be displeased if they went back home too late. Hinata sadly agreed and walked home with her cousin. So Naruto, when did you become friends with Neji? That was a question by Shikamaru. Naruto never seemed to get well with Neji. So he was curious as to why Naruto would want Neji to be at his house. He could have just put his mind to work, but that would be troublesome, hence his question. You have a good mind, put it to use, Naruto replied not answering Shikamaru's question. This left Shikamaru with a sigh, well it was good seeing the real you, the Nara heir said with a small smile. I will see you around Naruto, he said with a hand wave walking away. Bye Naruto, Kuji said following Shikamaru from behind. Naruto nodded at him before disappearing also. Alright everyone, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I will try to post more as soon as possible. I have already posted the full story over on my Patreon if you are interested in that, link to that is in the description. Anyways, until next time, peace.